Oh, wow. Okay, okay. So, Jadaron Prester John has a wife named Lady Anna. <laughs> Rock with me now. <laughs> We're going to go mighty fast. we got a lot to cover. <laughs> this is going to be the most explosive Prester John <laughs> of all time. Let's go, man. Lady Anna, married to Prester John Roger. Here, Roger. I'm on Genie, right? Genie.com. Okay. Judah the first raiding king of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mahdi. <laughs> you know, David of the line of Judah, right? Yeah, he also has a wife, Princess Hannah. A lot of Hannahs, right? Moses' mother's name, Anna, according to the uh, Quran, right? So, Anna, Hannah. Annie, uh, you get the point. We wave surfing. <laughs> so Judah, he got a wife named Hannah. Roger here, Roger Chola, Prester, John, he got a wife named Lady Hannah. Okay. Oh. David the first. Yeah, do we? Do we? Dodi, like dodecahedra. <laughs> Shh, don't say. You can't say dodecahedra. Dodi, David, king of Rabadi, God, Imani. That's Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. As the king of Judah, as the king of Israel, you know, you are Khan of all the tribes, right? So he got a wife. <laughs> he got a wife named Lady Hannah. So you telling me there's a lot of Hannah's going around, man. Either there's a lot of Hannah's going around or David, circa 1200, David the first. Is Judah the first raiding king, circa 1200? <laughs> is Roger Chola, uh, circa 1200, <laughs> 1195? I can't make this stuff up. I can't make it up. You know what I? You know what else I can't make up, man? I was just digging on these and roots because we, you know, starting to get the pick series going for Aqua Type as on. I've been digging on these roots, right? These roots. Now I can't tell yet, you know, when the roots got hijacked, you know, if and when and at what point and all this stuff. We just obviously, right? Obviously, because <laughs> any tribe this big gotta have hijacked to it, right? So. Some's going to be on one side and some going to be on the other side. Same thing with Tartary, the Tartary. You know, you got the good Tartary, then you got these rebellious Tartars under this Genghis Khan flow. Sometimes when historians talk Tartar, they're talking Genghis. Sometimes they're just talking general Nagas, general niggas, right? General, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, Katai. You know, the car Katai of Cathay could also be considered part of Tartary and the greatness, grandness of spectrums, you know what I'm saying? So how does this Andrews flow? Andrews flow seems to cover, you know, uh, a very specific part of the of the spectrum, of the flow, of the way, you know what I mean? And I'm looking for the hijacks, I'm looking for the <laughs> the hijacks and the low jacks, man. <laughs> but now he's laying low, man. You laying low, Jack, man. So oh yeah, you probably saw it already. He got a wife named Lady Hannah, right? <laughs> and I'm like, man, how does this Hannah flow? Flow, you know. Um, now, this John Andrews, the, you're going to see how this ties in. Just, just, <laughs> just, rock, just rock with a con, man. You've been rocking this long. We impressed the 146. Hey, man, this is your 146 installment of your Preston John investigation. You've been rocking 146 parts. Hours or longs of diggings. <laughs> I think you hear, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you hear for the belly flops. <laughs> I think you hear for, you know what I mean, just the wave surfing, man. You've you've become the water drop nation, true AI I'll tell you, man, because you right here with it, Naga. 146 parts of this investigation. Let's get it. Husband of Hannah, right? Hannah Andrews. Yeah, Lady Hannah. Another Hannah. 
right? They're going to start putting them around Massachusetts, a lot of this Boston flow, because it's going to connect, you know, to this Edmund Andrews flow. And, you know, again, I don't know. Just like the Preston flow, when we first investigated, I said, I don't know. Is he a hijack? Is he not? Is he this? Is he that? We, it's, it's a non biased investigation. You can go back to number one. We just looking for Preston John. We don't know. We said, We on your ass, Preston John. Now we say, Hey, hey, con up, con Preston John. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we've learned, man. We've been surfing the wave. So again, you got another Hannah. So you got a Hannah, wife of Judah the first, man. You got a Hannah. Wife of Preston John Jatter Rob, right? You got a Hannah, wife of David the first, Dewey Doty. And again, the Reuben Gad and Manasseh is the same as Judah the first, Reuben Gad and Manasseh. And we're going to get on our high Amazon queens because, you know, we ruled the, these kingdoms side by side with our queens. It wasn't like, you know, we over them or, you know what I'm saying? It, it was a, it, it, you know, <laughs> it was pure water flowing, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the queens took the took the wheel, you know what I mean? Now you got your matriarchies, you know what I'm saying? Cons are at war, you know, things are happening, right? So mama keep the house going. I mean, it's not that she chooses to have a matriarchy, it's just that, you know, we at war, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's like, but you gotta keep the house going. But you know, the cons, man, and the and the connesses <laughs> and the and the beautiful queens, man, like, you know, they were rocking side by side. So, you know, you're going to see a lot of these, you know, ladies and princesses and, 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 you know, all this stuff happening. But this Hannah flow, you know, you know, we got some of these right here. Hannah, wife of David. You got Hannah, wife of Judah. And obviously, yeah, you can say, yeah, it's just coincidence. I've learned it's not too many coincidences, man, when you get this deep in the investigation. I definitely believe that all these are one person. You know, Jadaron is Prester John, is Judah the first, <laughs> is David the first, right? Which makes you have to recon Tahama, the kingdom of Tahama. So you understand it's an Israelite thing going on. Where, right? Where is it happening? This is when we keep checking. It's a story. It's not happening over there. You know what I'm saying? In brand newville. That's that's newville. This is old. <laughs> this is old ancient love song happening over here. When you talk India superior. I didn't put it on the map. They're putting it on the map over and over again. That America is India superior. Columbus wasn't lost. No. He came to the superior India. Looking for the superior car. Who will, who is Preston John? We in 146 trying to figure this out, right? So, right, then you got Hana. He's son of David the first. Now, to show you how these things link up. Right, then you got another Hana. See, Hanan is also Anon, which we got before Anon ben David or Anion, right? But show you how this link up with these Hanans, man. Hana. <laughs> Is the adding on. So the son of David the first, Dewey. He got a son. Hana. King of Tahama. <laughs> this is why we on 146. We ain't even recon Tahama. 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 Ooh. Is it Hama or Ama? Right. Ta. It's like the Tao. Is the Hebrew Tao, right? Ooh. Okay which means covenant, right? Or the sign. So it's like the covenant of, of, of Big Mama. And who's Big Mama? We about to get Proverbs chapter 8 right after this because we got a lot of drop dropping, period. And that's why I'm doing it a cappella. <laughs> I got too much drop to drop to even, you know, get fluty right now. I don't need no drums, man. We're on a war path, man. We already understand this, man. We understand this, man. You right here is because you're supposed to be here, man. <laughs> so the Tao Ama, okay, okay, keep it in mind. Hanan the second, right? So why I say all these are the same person again, same thing, you know. Preston John, husband of Lady Hannah, also has a son, Hanan, man, right? <laughs> now is it a coincidence? <laughs> they both got sons, Hanans, and they both are married to Lady Hannah. 
And here he's called the, again, king of the Hamlet, Jewish or Israelite. So we know we're talking Israel. <laughs> we know we're talking Israel. We ain't talking no converts at this point. We in the dark ages, my knife. We in the dark ages. Okay. So we got a Hanan here and a Hanan there. Now back to man, back to reality, man. Back to these hand roots, man. So of course you got the hand and flow. Alright, just keep that in mind. Uh father of James. Andrews, okay. Okay. Well, excuse me, John Andrews. All right, all right. Now, it doesn't say, see, it kind of sticks me. That's why I got it. I kind of reversed it before. I actually started with Alice Andrews, and this was on accident. This was on accident, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I was looking for Amos or Amos Andrews, but I typed Alice. And I just picked up, you know, the investigation right here. And it's interesting because I got Shaw's in my family, right? And Andrews in my family. You know, on both sides, man. Very interesting, man. But, all right, so daughter of John Weaver, Shaw, Alice Andrews, wife of John Andrews, right? So we started here. I said, who's John Andrews? Mother of Hannah Lincoln. So you see all these Hannahs, man? Come on, man. Say it's a lot of Hannah's over here. <laughs> Elkanah, Elkanah. You know what I mean? Then you got the admin flow. We're going to get up to this admin because this admin is very pivotal, man. Very pivotal. Hannah Lincoln, John Andrews. He's the father of Captain Edmund Andrews. And this is really where it gets sticky, man. It's where it gets sticky over here in America. Because, you know, I don't know. I need you to figure this out with me, right? There's not a lot of <laughs> recon on some of these, you know what I'm saying, figures. But, you know, is this is this a hijack, right? Is this somebody who uh, is designated Captain Hood who's already here, you know, or connected with some royals that... You know, are already popping off pre hijack. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is this the you know one of the points of the hijackness? You know what I'm saying? This is what we try to fit. We on investigation into the roost right now because we're gonna start talking about the pigs, man. Right? So, who's this at, man? Now again, let me, let me tell you why this is. You know, let me tell you why I'm digging on this, man. Now I'm gonna get back here to genies because. Yeah, 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 it gets, it gets deep, it gets deep. Who's these admins, man? Let me take it back. All right. See, I was looking for Amos, and I typed Alice. It's Amos. Do I got Amos? I need to get the Amos, man. Oh, I do got Amos. I got Amos. Okay. All right. So now it's a whole nother Andrew flow, right? But... You notice how they spell it at the end, Rose, and then the R-U-S. Now, we know that these are Nagas, you know, originally. When did they turn something else? What year? When? How recent? Um, what what divisions are going on in the house of Rose? You know what I'm saying? I got to bring this close to home in this sophistication, right? Because when I talk to Andrews, I want you to remember, man, I'm just talking about you. I'm just talking about Andrews. I'm just talking about who they call Sarah's sons or Sarah's sin, right? And the Sarah's sins were called out to be vanquished, right? All these Sarah's sins, enemies of Christ. We're going to invade these Sarah's sins, search them out, capture them, vanquish. Don't this sound like all oh, niggas? And bring them our Christ. Take their kingdoms. What kingdoms? This is what we investigated. What dukedoms, principalities, dominions? How much possessions? You mean all movable and immovable goods were stolen, taken, whatsoever we held and possessed? And you reduced us 
to forever slavery and applied all our things, took all our stuff and gave it to your successors. Successors sounds like descendants. Took the Khan, which means priest in Hebrew. I'm talking about the native, the natural by law, the original, the copper colored tribes <laughs> that were just found here, not brought here, boss. Saracens. So I'm talking Saracen. I'm just talking about you. Saracen, right? And then they say it, uh, describing an Arab tribe, and we had to get the drop on that. We said, you mean Arab pretender? Pretending to be Arabs? Of non-Arab stock originally? Oh, no, no, no. you talking about us. <laughs> You're talking about Arab proper. God, because the Arab is a rabbi, and a rabbi is a lawgiver, and the law is the code. So these code keepers under Joktar, son of Eber. I'm talking Eber, Ruth. I'm talking Eber. I'm talking Kiber, Eber, Kiber, Kibera, Kaveria, Ania, Ka. I'm talking Eber. Popped off the original 13 tribes of a rabbis. I ain't talking Arab improper. I'm talking Arab proper. And the Joktan son of Eber is also Katan. And we keep talking about the Katai, right? The Kara Katai. We keep talking Cathay. And I'm telling you, Cathay is Katai. Is Katai. Is the Joktan, is the Yucatan, which is why we're talking Mexico, or the Mexicas, or the Khans of Moshe, because Meshi is Moshe, Meshi is Moshe. You can't be Mexican without the Moshe. Ka? I'm talking Kata. Kara Kata is Cathay, which means pure land. We're still talking promised land when we talk Mexico. But this, this is but the legendary form of the tradition that Catan was the progenitor of the Southern Arabs, right? So the Andrews would be within this Southern Arab or a rabbis or a rab proper. When they also be like from the Southern, you know, house or Southern tribes, <laughs> Northern and Southern tribes, right? Israel gets divided in northern and southern tribes, right? <laughs> and the tribe of Judah, when we talk Arab proper, you know, connects a lot with the southern, a rabbi. While the Ishmaelite Arabs were originally non Arab stock, which is why, you know, like, why are we asking the question? Why are they migrating? Right, go get the last drop <laughs> because we gonna keep going. Why are they migrating? They're of non-Arab stock. Why are you migrating? Why are you taking over Indiana, Indianapolis? You know <laughs> what's going on, man? With with the Treaty of Fort Wayne and what's up with all these moraines, right? All these glaciers and this little ice age. What's up with these Kentuckians that you are merging into and why were the Kentuckians responsible for the death of the Kumsay in 1812 in, you know, Ontario, so to speak. So what does Ontario, Canada have to do with Tangu, Canada? And what does Tangu have to do with <laughs> the Shi, the Almay, the kingdom?
This is the kingdom they're taking out, not the non-Arab stock kingdom, because they were confederate against you with the Moabites, the Edomites, and all the mites, right? They're pretending to be you. They're in your house. They've adopted your customs. They have adopted a rabbi customs. They've adopted parts of our law and flipped it, right? They intermarry with genuine knockers, man. They intermarry. They take our wives, sisters, daughters. Like, this is what they take when they come invade a naga, kill off the priests, kill off the kill off the nagas and take their wives, right? So that they can intermarry with genuine a rabbis, right? Genuine, proper, Arab. So the word Sarah said, <laughs> who they were invading, vanquishing, putting in perpetual slavery, sounds like Israelites was used in earlier centuries of the Roman, which we know originally is Riman, which means what? Pomegranate in Hebrew. Pomegranate refers to the promised land, just like Cathay and Catan we just got. So it's the Ramani Empire, it's the pomegranate, the pomegranate is the, the Granada, right? It wasn't no hijack Romans. I'm not, I'm not. Black ass King Charles stole that title. He became Roman, Holy Roman Emperor, King Charles V. But he took the Romani title, man. These are the Roma, right? Describing an Arab proper tribe. <laughs> In modern times, the Saracen is commonly applied to the Mediterranean pirates. So now they turn it into this nomadic Arab pretenders, man. We ain't talking Arab proper no more, man. But the way they wrote up on these Saracens sure does remind me of the lost tribe of Israel. Jack, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. This is the lost tribes of Israel identity. We're just talking Andrews. So when we talk about Edmund and Rose and Amos and Rose, is this after the hijack or the hijack? This is what we try to figure out with Amos, right? With Amos. She's the son of Thomas Andros and Elizabeth Andros. Or, no, actually, <laughs> Amos is not like Alice. Amos is a brother, not a sister. Right, so I mixed that up. I thought it was a, a lady's name, but no, nah, it's a fella's name. So he's the husband <laughs> of Elizabeth Andros. His mother is also named Elizabeth Andros, but they are two different uh, people. Apparently, most likely, you know. Wife of Amos, mother of John. Not a lot's given on that one. Uh, here's his daughter of Amos de Cartier and Senor of Andios. All right, so. They looking like two different people. <laughs> uh, you guys, Thomas Andros. Now look, by the time you get to Thomas Andros, who's the father of Amos, you start seeing that Andrews crest, right? Uh huh. You start seeing that tau, that X mark in the spot, that Hebrew, right? Now is he just rocking it, or is it, you know, part of the? A part of the Nagas, right? Copper color races found here. These are the Saracens. These copper color races <laughs> are the Khans. Whether you're reading about it with Genghis Khan and the Mongol Khans or the Americans, these are the priests, these are the Hebrews. This is how you connect the Mongol history with the Native American history, man. 
and you put that with the biblical Hebrew history, and you got ping, ping, pow. Now you can easily connect all the other histories, the Chinas, the Japans, the Hindu, the Russian flow, like whatever. It starts to tie in. As long as those three things hit, everything else will hit too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to you gotta combine the Mongo, which means the great ones. Mongo just means great. Just like more means great. I want more SpaghettiOs. I want more. I want a greater amount. The greatness belongs to Hawa. We know that. So you can't be great out of code with Hawa, period. Hawa determines your greatness, not uh, what you think your lineage is. <laughs> your creator determines your greatness, man. The creator of the copper color races, I'm talking native, because native refers to nature, which refers to that which creates the nature, right? So that means you're in the creation. Uh, you're of the creator in America. That's what we say. Native. We're talking the originals. Copper color races. Now, we ain't making a big deal out this copper thing. They made a big deal out the copper thing by <laughs> taking our titles and giving them to their descendants. Taking our titles and giving them to their successors. While they invaded, searched out, captured, vanquished, subdued all Saracens and pagans whatsoever, enemies of Christ, wherever place, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable, immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery, and to apply and appropriate to themselves. And his successors, the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods. This is your shit. This is your things. This is your stuff, man. This is your staff. <laughs> These are your swords. This is your land. Your gold. Your treasures, man. Your stones, man. Your weapons, man. <laughs> Your water, they took all the water. You can't even buy land with the water now. You got to buy land and then buy the water separate. And man, the, these states act like this. Utah act like they own all the water in Utah. <laughs> you can't buy, you can't get the water with the land. These people took everything, man. For their profit, right? I got to pay them. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars to tap into the right water to get the right well. Are you serious, man? You really have applied and appropriated to yourselves and your successors, our kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and they converted them to their profit. Their use. And with all that, they think they justly and lawfully have done something. Have stolen and possessed. Not acquired. They've stolen and possessed. And they still possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas. And they think they belong to their successors. Or descendants. When they stole the car, they stole the kingdom of the copper color races found here. I'm just talking to Andrews. Because I'm talking Saracen. If I'm talking Saracens, I just happen to be talking about you, my nugget. You. So we got to investigate these and Rus, because Russia is named after these Rus, and ain't that most of Asia? <laughs> Whether that's Asia Minor, then we got Asia Major. If, if, if the Rus is running Asia Minor, that might be one of the Indias. Like the Presta got three Indias, and the Rus got Asia Major too, because we're talking Judah, right? I said we're talking Judah, right? So I'm investigating this Andrews. You know, we got more investigation to go. <laughs> and I, you know, started with this Amos. 
and it kind of led to what uh, this this Thomas Andros, right? He's the son of <laughs> son of John, right? So just like I ran into John Andrews, you know, with the Alice flow, it was kind of crazy. I, man, really crazy, really, because John Andrews led me right to this captain too like it's kind of freaky that's why i opened with this this is why i wanted to talk to you about this <laughs> so y'all can help me <laughs> see clearly because this john andrews right leads right into he's the father of captain edmund andrews 1693 massachusetts okay who's the son of Amos. Which leads back to A. John Andrews, this time the R-O-S. Okay. <laughs> Just going slow. Okay. This is 1550. Son of John Andrews the first. So that leads to Captain Edmund Andros. And here again, you got the first and the second, because you got John Andrews the first, and then you got a John Andrews Sr. <laughs> and this Hannah flow. I don't know if there's a Hannah flow over here. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. All right, we're just, you know, checking it out. Now, let's go back. Andros, Thomas Andros. Amos Andros. Father of Sir Edmund Andros. Come on, boss. I'm at 16. Shout out to yourself, man. Phantoms <laughs> duplications, man. We just try to figure this out. Right, Sir Edmund Andros. Let's go back to the Edmonds over here. I said to Edmond. Edmond. <laughs> Let's get it. Where's Edmond? Edmond. Edmond. Edmond, here we all day. Let's go, man. 1693. So, all right, all right. I mean, in both Andro's searches, we run into an Edmond. One 1693, the other 1637. Hey. <laughs> one's in London one is in Massachusetts or Boston but you know by way of you know London somehow they're gonna go back to the UK with him too so okay now which Edmund Andrews is we talking about here this one in particular says son of Amos so that's why I was following this genealogies here to get to the Sir Edmund course we're trying to figure out what the real picture looks like I can't believe these hijacks let's go back okay okay so we start seeing that. All right, I'm sure you, you know we're getting here, man. So I look at this link, man. We can investigate. It's a lot more Andrews drop on this great site, JesseBen.wordpress. We've been using it for years, man. Uh, Sir Edmund Andros, Imperial Executive of America. All right, now I, you know, this is before. Uh, 1776, <laughs> this is before the uh, Moore's Treaty, you know what I'm saying, the 1787, Pieces of Friendship, you know, it's before a lot of things. 
Um, this is right around the time that I guess they stopped searching over there for Presser John, right? 1645. Yeah, this is what they're looking at in South Africa, the Portuguese monument in memory of those seafarers searching for the Preston all these years, for all these years, so, okay, 1645, 1674, I like this right here, if you plant seeds around the world, they may take root and grow into trees with branches, if you break a branch and not completely remove it, it may grow back even stronger than before. Throughout one's life, you feel a connection to the creator, and it feels like he's trying to guide you. Sometimes it takes many years to believe the lines of communication are open and everything is real. This is not a dream that you can wake up from. Ooh, it's cold work right there. It's cold work right there. An open or an old buffalo soldier told me if you take the bark off a branch, it will slowly die and may infect the rest of the tree. <sighs> That's cold work. Yeah, I mean, then it gets into some of the flow now. I'm going to go back. We're going to get on this. I'm just laying some, <laughs> laying some seeds, man, planting some seeds. You know, I belly flopped there from the archive for the Andrews category. I just see that this admin seems to be at a pivotal place. You know, I want to see what side of the war he's on. I want to see what side of the flow this Andros is on. Let's go back, though. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right back, right back home, right? So who are these Andros, right? These are the same Andros as we get here with the Lost Tribe of Israel flow, right? We're the same Andrews we get in here with the Lost Tribe of Israel flow. And they're going to confirm the Israel flow over here as well. You know, this Naga here <laughs> is the same family as this Naga here, as you can see. And they have some more flows. You know, these are the same. This Naga here. <laughs> This naga here is the same naga as this naga here. Right? We we talking Israel. Okay. Let's make it clear. We're talking copper color races found here. Remember? Take their kingdom, right? Take their kingdom, huh? Let's let's not forget. Take the kingdom, right? All their goods. Take their kingdom, right? Okay. Yeah, take the kingdom, right? Okay. So just working backwards a little bit, you know. <laughs> um, you know, it's discussing this wedding right here with the stewards. This is the stewards or guardians of the house of Andreas of Wessex, which include Andreas of Borthwick and Clan Ross. Now, when I tell you this is all connected, right, the three Indias have to be one kingdom. So the house of Jerusalem here has to rock with the house of Jerusalem there, there, there. You know what I'm saying? They, they all got to, you know, be in code, be in the flow. So we're not just over here in so-called America. This is India superior, man. That means the other Indias also have to get in the flow of India superior. And, you know, it looks like. There's houses set up that are originally from here, you know, that were set up there as far back as, you know, whenever to make sure they're keeping an eye and running the thing and, you know, protecting the kingdom. It's all about protection, man. Setting up shop protection. So whether they're here first, there first, we know all this was one land at one time. We know it goes back to, you know, prior to Atlantis. Atlantis is a hijack in itself with this Poseidon flow and these Egyptian Nesuts or pharaohs coming out these Nesuts or pharaohs of Atlantis, right? All this was hijacked. All that shit was hijacked. The same Atlantean gods became the Greek gods, became the Roman gods, became these same gods in religion today. So we dodge all these gods and come back to the most high over everything. False. Now we back in code. 
KTC, you know how we do. Put our power first. We never lose. Talking roost, man. <laughs> and the roost connect with the truth. You don't remember the roost, right? Because you've been in solitary many days. Hosea chapter 3. So when I talk kingdom and kings, why is it so unfamiliar to you, right? Again, man, like it's the first time. Templar, I take the wheel. For real. Whoa. We doing it a cappella? <laughs> Let's get it. It's my favorite drops. That's how it all started, man. That's how it all began, man. Hosea 3, right? Yeah. Why are we investigating, right? Why, right? You don't just come to press the 146 and belly flop and you, you don't understand the why, right? Why are you doing this drop? Why make these three, four, five hour video drops? <laughs> why make these lessons? So, you know, why are y'all, are you trying to make, are you trying to extend this thing? <laughs> Look, man, we've been harlots. Go yet, love a woman, be loved of her friend, and in adulteries, we've been harlots, even as Hawaii loves the children of Israel. You love this woman, you love a woman, be loved of her friend, and in adulteries. You want to experience that pain? Even as Hawaii loves the children of Israel, though they turn into other gods, we've been harlots. You want to experience that pain? You want to go through that pain? You want to be cheated on, right? You want to be with an adulteress? Do you want that? So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver, a home or barley, half home or barley. I said unto her, thou shalt sit solitary, boss. You, you ain't just in jail. You're in solitary. <laughs> you're in the hole right now. You went from bad to worse, right? Because we kept putting other powers before us. The, the gods of Atlantis, right? The powers of Egypt. We kept putting these powers before us. They remixed, rebranded these powers in Christianity today and many of these modern religions, man. We don't even take the religious approach when we talk about reading these scriptures. We take the code approach. We say, look, you ain't going to get a more detailed, clear, concise way to be hijacked free than what they call the Ten Commandments, right? That That's going to at least let you tribe up because now you can drop all these religions and say, rule number one, put no power before the creator. Can we all do that? If you can't do that with me, use a hijack, man. <laughs> you don't, you, you choose another power before the creator then we don't need to be on the same block. That's cool. We can stop right there. That's how you draw the line, right? Because I rock with my creator. You did? I rock with my... <gasps> wow. I rock with my frame and my shaper. I rock with my mother and my father. Who's your mama? We're going to get it. We're going to get there. Who's your? Who's big mama? Yeah. Oh, oh you must have forgot, huh? <laughs> you must be thoughtless, huh? You forgot about big mama? You forgot about Big Mama. Oh, we're going to talk about it because Big Mama don't like to be forgotten about. <laughs> oh, King Solomon would tell you that, right? But let's go, man. So I bought this harlot for 15 pieces of silver, a, half, a homer barley, a half homer barley. And I said to this harlot who is Israel, thou shalt sit solitary for me many days. Get it like it's the first time drop. Take the wheel. For real. We've been in solitary, boss. This is why we can't compute kingdom. Can't compute king. Can't compute queen. We actually get offended. King. Ain't no king over me. <laughs> queen. Everybody want to be the queen. Everybody want to be the king. And how about getting hijacked into their English words for king and queen? We say calm, man, because it's right there. You know, <laughs> they still, they can't get rid of con. They say American, but they spell it C-A-N. And, you know, damn well, C-A-N don't sound like Ken, American. You know, C-A-N don't sound like Ken. 
American. No, that's con. So they hide it, but it's there. They they can't, you know, um, vanquish the con, right? Because they have to steal it. Genghis Khan stole the con from King David. But we've been in solitary many days. We forgot. Hawaii just don't want us to play the harlot no more. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be any man's wife, nor but I be thine. You, you can't, as much as you want to worship these other guys, you can't even love it like you love, you know what I'm saying, like like the love that's reserved for the creator. Like that's, you just think you worship it. You ain't even doing no real heartfelt worship. Because <laughs> you can't be any man's wife, nor will I be thine. You can't be married to nobody else. You my babies, right? You can't have no other father. You can't have no other mother. Even if you think you do. You can never love like this love, man. For the children of Israel shall Israel Hasharala shall sit solitary. That means nobody can save you out of this other than your creator, which will have you saying, Hawa Hawa. <laughs> Hawa is our savior. <sighs> Allow Hawa. You're going to have to give praise to your creator only for this salvation. King David can't save you. Jesus can't save you. <laughs> no, your pharaohs can't save you. Nope. Oh, you should, what, you, you want to save yourself? Uh, oh, you, there ain't no God. We the God. We got to save ourselves. And go crazy. Go crazy. Go crazy. <laughs> I'm watching. Go crazy. Saving yourself is a mentality, brother. <laughs> no, saving yourself is a reality, man. I want my land back. But it's it's a little more sophisticated now, right? You try to march and get your land back, right? You got drones. You got all kinds of things to deal with, right? So only thing that could save you out of this captivity, out of solitary, Managa, is your return. Which is a good thing, right? Because verse 5 says, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return. Which children of Israel drop? The lost tribes of Israel. I'm still talking to the same copper colored Nagas found here. And whose mama? Well, they know. Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Boy, you must be thoughtless. You want a kingdom, but you don't want wisdom? <laughs> Talk to Solomon about that, man. Solomon might have something to tell you, man. Yeah. So, you've been in solitary, but now we have returned. And to return is to seek the creator. That's rule number one. That's why two can't, you know, <laughs> be shoulder to shoulder without it. You want justice. You want peace. You want unity. You got to unify around a code. I ain't talking the street code from the 80s. That was a substitution for the code of the creator. Put your guns down. You know what I'm saying? Making peace and all this is back to the start of things. So I see it as a real thing. Love to my Nagas out here, you know, saying, tribing up, making peace, man, because that's you returning. You are returning, and you don't even know why. This ain't about uh, a K-Dot concert and <laughs> love to Kendrick. This, this, this ain't about not like us. This is all a part of the formula. And, yeah, those big names will be used by the creator, too. Like, just because they do something doesn't mean it's a psyop. <laughs> It's a psyop to push peace. They can't tell you who to... That that one concert, shout out to Kendrick, man, the one he did out in Inglewood, man. Look to the city, Compton, all of L.A., man. Watts, man, Long Beach, man, you know what I'm saying? South Central, man, everybody, all of L.A., man, because all the Bay Area, man. Look to everybody, all the Nagas, man, because we all doing this, man. We are returning. And that one concert can motivate just two Nagas on the corner, to put their guns down and have a peaceful conversation. So they're not going to play with you driving up. This is Hawaii's doing, man. This is the creator, you know, returning, us returning. 
You know what I'm saying? This is us returning to us, man, because, you know, we've been without this relationship. We've been without this covenant. We've been in solitary. Thou shalt not be any man's wife, nor will I be thine. <laughs> so it feels good, man. This is a feeling we feeling that we are now the creator's children again as we return. And when we see each other, we see the creator. And it makes us put our guns down. It makes us want to tribe up because we seek the code. To seek the creator is to seek Exodus 20, which got us in code. They call it the Ten Commandments, but it's real simple, right? No power before your creator. No vanity on your creator's name, right? Keep your Shabbat six days you work, seven days you rest. Hey, don't kill your brother. Don't steal from your brother. No adultery. Keep your oaths, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, no false witnessing on a naga. A naga. Uh, uh, honor your, your mother, your father. Honor your framer, your shaper, my naga. Uh, no covetous nagas. Don't be jealous of each other's stuff. Let let a brother rock. Let a sister rock. No covetous on their house, on their wives. No nothing like that. You do that, you have a harmony. You have a community, man. That's how you code up. That's what happens when you see Kawa. Now you ready. Now you have a flock. Now you have a unified tribe. Now you have a flock. And the flock needs a shepherd. Exodus 37. Let you know who the one shepherd is. Excuse me, uh, Ezekiel 37, Shalom. Ezekiel 34 and Ezekiel 37 let you know who the one shepherd is. But hey, <laughs> Hosea just told you that when you return, you seek the creator and David your king. Hosea is letting you know who the one shepherd is because now you've got the flock. Now you're back in cold. To seek Hawaii, to seek, to listen, right? To hearken, to desire to be in code. You must desire to put your guns down for you to really have a truce. You have to really desire it. It can't just be no flimsy thing, right? Got to be real. This time is real. This time I feel, I believe, I'm witnessing is real. My Nagas is really tired of the violence, tired of the death. You got your, you know, gun ho nuggets that still want to be gun ho, but they're going to be separated and weeded out by default of your return. Because frequency affects frequency. You seek the creator, you seek David. And this is why we're on Preston John 146. And this is why we are trembling unto Hawa and the goodness of Hawa. In the end of days. Israel's return is all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. So this is what they're up against. This is what they're trying to take down when they take your kingdoms. Do this, you know, this is what they take down when they convert all your stuff to their prophet. This is what we're up against, man. And in terms of Clan Ross, <laughs> in terms of the house, yeah, this is a deep situation when you talk Ann Ross, which is why it's worthy of its own <laughs> investigation all to itself. But really, it's a part of the whole, which is, you know, it, <laughs> it's, 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 it's everything when you talk the Tao, the Hicksos, right? The <laughs> Shepherd King. The shepherd kings, right? In Egypt. But mainly you're just talking about what they say here. The union between Christina de Ross and Viking Olaf Magnuson was significant not only because it created created peace between the two houses. Yeah, we're tribing up back then. Of Dan, right? Danite is the house of Dan. Who are you talking about? House of William the Conqueror, right? Now we're talking Braveheart. Again, we got to talk Richard the Lionhearted because he was tried up with this William. The House of Andreas from the race of St. Andrew and the kindred of the kings of Jerusalem. 
So it's bringing these houses, this clan Seal Andreas with the house of Dan. And it's all happening here, you know what I'm saying, around this, you know, this 120 mark. And again, oh, it says uh, they resisted Roman rule north of Hadrian's Wall in 120 and again in 1200. And this makes me think about the 1,000 year time shift. This could all be the same event happening. But again, it's still bringing you right to the Dark Ages, right, right to the 1200 mark. And that's what Preston, Preston Genghis Khan had the situation right there, 1203, they say, right? So, okay, okay. We're just talking Jerusalem when we talk Andrews. We're just talking Israel when we talk Andrews. We're just talking about you <laughs> when we talk Andrews, because you are the copper color races that were just found here, man. <laughs> just found here. And who's Big Mama? Yeah. Because they say on the family crest, wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Let's go. Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Does not wisdom call? Uh -huh. <laughs> wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Does not wisdom call and understanding put forth her voice? Proverbs chapter 8. Let's get it. Verse 1. In the top of high places, by the way, where the paths meet, where the paths meet, where the paths meet. X marks the spot. Do you see clearly? It's the last letter of the Hebrew, right? The towel, the covenant, the mark, the sign, right? Let's go. Surfing the way. Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. She's standing where the paths meet. She stands where X marks the spot. Beside the gates at the entry of the city. Remember the Hebrew. A left strong power enters the house. Right. Remember the Ibaru. Does they search it for 500 years? <laughs> See, I just uh, had to find a new chart, man, because they just keep making the other ones vanish, man. And this one's a little different because it has the the mysterious 23rd letter, twisted, dark, and wicked, the, the God. Mm. I think there's a lot of mystery around this God, man. But let's go. Let's go with the 22. All right, you got the towel. Which is the mark, the sign, the monument, or the covenant. Alright. Alright. Now mama says she's standing at the entrance of the city. So when that strong power enters your family, the left bet, you start to move the gom, the gemel, the gom, you start to gather. <laughs> right? X marks the spot. She says she's standing with the past me at the entrance. She's literally, man, everything she's saying is going right down the line of the Paleo Picto Hebrew, which is amazing. Hawah with wisdom, with Ama, gives you validation after validation after validation that when you call on Hawah, you are calling on breath and security, which you need to get your food, to get your nourishment. And to cut off that hijack. Mama says she's standing where the entrance be. After the gathering, right? After after what? Let mama, you know, big mama's talking for herself. This is not him talking. This is her talking, right? Her voice. You didn't know about your mama? You weren't concerned with fortune at all in your life? You're not concerned with the fortune of your family? Because last time that I checked, 
Big Mama is the conqueror of fortune, but she gonna tell you because you know I don't want you to take it, you know, from the Andrews. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's gonna tell you she's the conqueror of fortune. She's gonna tell you that power is mine. Ain't you, Big Mama? Sound crazy to you? Am I making this up? Am I adding something to you and your spirituality? <laughs> or did you forget about your breath? Are you thoughtless? How you have a thought without a breath? Mama's beside the gates. Mama is understanding, man. <laughs> You're reading a book. You want understanding? And you don't want Big Mama? You don't want your mother <laughs> in the top of high places, by the way, where the paths meet, hmm? where the paths meet. That means there's a gathering boss and you enter a door or an entrance before you get mama with her arms raised. Not no man. Mama with her arms raised gives you that. <gasps> breath so that you can get your wah security that's why a dragon sounds like wah when he's burning you down with that dragon fire israel's return right you seeking your wah your breath and security and with that you're ready <laughs> for david the kind of cons where the paths meet beside the gates at the entrance of the city so your leader your power your strength enters your body your mind your soul and you start to gather and walk through an entrance and the first thing you get is <gasps> a revelation what's breath without security what's security without no breath wisdom is the conqueror of fortune at the coming in at the doors at the what at the door <laughs> it's literally right in our face bone the whole time, man. For those with eyes to see, right? So it's a dragonfly perspective at the coming in, the entry, the entry of the city, the entry, the coming in at the door. She cries aloud unto you, oh man. I call and my voice is to the sons of men. Oh, you thoughtless, what? Understand prudence. And you fools be of an understanding heart. Mama's going to be big mama from the gate. She's going to be like, look, man, you've been, you thoughtless fools, man. <laughs> How dare you? Man? How dare you forget about me? Verse six, for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Mama speaking for herself. The opening of her lips shall be right things. Mama ain't no hijack, fool. Is you foolish? You fool? You forgot? Oh, you've been in solitary. That's why you thoughtless. That's why Christianity gave you a father, God, father, God. You only think about your father? That's 100% Christianities. 100% Christianities, man. So, you know, I need you to see clear. We all need to see clear. This is where we're at. Big Mama's in the house. It's, it's, it's Big Mama's house, right? And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing perverse or crooked in them. They are all plain to him that understands and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice. Go, don't silence and say that too. For wisdom is better than rubies. Whoa. You mean wisdom is the conqueror of fortune? I mean. 
these these these, these Andrews got the tribe right because they they on their King Solomon tip. Wisdom is the conquer of fortune, man. For wisdom is better than rubies. Yeah, you thought we were just talking about gold. No, man, we're talking about something better than rubies. All things desirable are not to be compared unto her. This is what we are, most high over everything. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of devices. The fear for why is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance in the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is my <laughs> and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. Wisdom <laughs> is the conqueror of fortune. Mom, big mama say, we're talking about her voice, right? She just said power is mine. She just said she is in her standing, right? You're talking about counsel. You're talking about kings and kingdoms. This is why we're reading Proverbs 8. I can't bring up doom diverses and, and Saracens and, <laughs> and the kingdoms of President John and nothing without talking Big Mama. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Justice, right? We talk about code keeping. And by princes, by me, princes rule and nobles, man. You can't talk kingdom without talking about Big Mama and the judges of the earth. The priesthood, the cons, you can't talk con without talking big mama. I love them that love me, man. So don't be thoughtless. Show your A Give the proper honor <laughs> to your mother and your father. That's part of your code, your so called Ten Commandments, which we call the Nine Code. Honor your father and mother. And in the Picto, in Los Lunas, New Mexico, <laughs> there's the Picto Hebrew on the big old boulder in Los Lunas. A big, they call it the Los Lunas Stone, Decalogue Stone. And one of the translators translated that one differently. Instead of honor your father and mother, remember it was honor your father and mother above. Honor the father and mother above, right? So that makes it all simple. We're talking framer, shaper. They made it just about your earthly parents, which doesn't make sense. Not all earthly parents are deserving <laughs> of this type of honor as we know. So, you know, I hope you have one. I hope you have one. I hope you have two. <laughs> but we're talking about framer, shaper, mother and father above. I love them that love me and those that seek me earnestly earnestly shall find me so we just read in hosea right that you're going to return that we're going to return verse five afterwards shall the children of israel return and seek the lord their god they translate right you look into you know the lexicon of this is going to take you to uh the Hayas, right back to the Hawaiians we got right back to existence but specifically to your hawa frame of shape or your breath and your security your breath is your wisdom is your reveal revelation and your father is described as a tent peg that gives you the foundation so you don't blow away right <laughs> Keep the code. Get your security. And those that seek me earnestly shall find me. So when you seek Hawaii, you are definitely also seeking Big Mama. Earnestly. I'm not telling you that. <laughs> Mama saying to seek her earnestly. You know, even in our Proverbs, you know, there's Proverbs about the wise man or being at the wise man's door, right? Well, the wise man <laughs> gets its wisdom from Big Mama. Does not wisdom call and put forth her voice? 
So I'm saying Christianity took a lot away from Big Mama, took her role away. She's at the right hand of the creator. Instead, they could, they put their JC at the right hand of creator, right? She took over, he took over Big Mama's spot. He took over the children of Israel's spot as the firstborn, right? <laughs> David's spot. He took over everyone's spot. So I want you to see the ultra hijack, man, when it comes to Big Mama. She, and Christianity has been relegated to something just, uh, it's just wisdom. <laughs> it's just wisdom. What do you mean? Just wisdom, right? This is how they translate it. Wisdom, right? I'm talking big mama. Big mama. The biggest. <laughs> yeah, man. By me, King's reign, princes decree. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me earnestly shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Wisdom is the conqueror of all fortune. Yeah, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yeah, even fine gold. My produce is better than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, of justice, shall I? So the paths, right, where the paths meet in the midst of the paths of justice that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Con? <laughs> I think we on to something, Andrews. My Nagas, I think we on to something. All right. That I, that I might fill your treasuries. That I may fill your treasuries. <laughs> He's like, I, I know you got Big Papa, but power is mine. <laughs> and I, <laughs> you know, I'm standing right here in the way of righteousness. My lips are speaking righteousness, right? You love me to inherit substance. And I, Big Mama. Fills your treasuries, boss. Big Mama gives you the play, right? <laughs> the understanding, the understanding. So the Lord made me as the beginning of his way. Right now we can get to his, right? And now we can see the frame and shape of that this is a duet, that this is a com <laughs> a mighty combo, right? A, a mighty connection, right? So Hawa didn't make no move, or I'll say father for now just to establish this right so your father didn't make a move without big mama he, he made sure however this making happened that big mama was the beginning of his way the first of his works of old not the second third or fourth nothing else was created or made <laughs> or in existence <laughs> Before Big Mama was rocking side by side with Big Daddy, man. Honor your mother and father above. The first of his works of old, I was set up from everlasting. From the beginning. But now you got no Jesus was there from the beginning. Jesus was the right hand. Jesus. <laughs> no, Big Mama was there from the beginning. She was the first from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. So you're telling me the earth was not created yet? Khan. <laughs> Khan, which means that the creation of the earth happened with her. Yeah. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. So you mean that my creation... Me as a human being <laughs> uh, was created with Big Mama. Yes, because Big Mama was the first <laughs> of his works. So, yeah, Big Mama had a big hand in the creation of the earth. And you, my nine. <laughs> yeah, so when I talk creator, right? <laughs> you don't think Big Mama is over there creating you and the earth? Because she was there when there were no depths. I was brought forth 
when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle upon the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, firm as in firmer man, yeah, as in a dome, firm. Firm, my nigga. <laughs> this ball earth they give us ain't firm. <laughs> what, gravity, man? Stop it, man. When the fountains of the deep showed their might, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not transgress his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. Who else can claim to be by Big Papa, right? <laughs> Big honcho, right? <laughs> As a nursling, what does a nursling do? I was daily all delight. What does it mean to be daily all delight? <laughs> if a woman says, hey, I'm daily all his delight, <laughs> that means they together, right? <laughs> they're, they're together, right? So... Playing always before. If a woman says, man, I play always before him. Yeah, they're together, right? <laughs> Playing in his hospitable earth, right? And my delights are with the sons and daughters and daughters. We know, we know. We, we just translate as translating. Sister Aquas, we, we, we rocking together, right? So now, therefore, you children hearken unto me. So when she's saying hearken unto me, mama ain't saying don't listen to daddy, don't listen to your father. But she's saying my words are his words. I speak in truth. I speak in righteousness. So listen to me. For happy are they that keep my ways. <laughs> she didn't say daddy's ways. She didn't say your father's way. These are big mama's ways. These commandments are hers. This Torah is hers. Hear instruction and be wise. Refuse it not. <laughs> Happy is the man that listens to me and sister, right? Watching daily at my gates. Huh? <laughs> oh, God, I got to listen to the wise man. Watching daily at mama's gates. Are you watching daily at mama's gates? Waiting at the post of mama's door? Because mama's door is at the entrance to get that look, to get that reveal, to get that, uh, that breath, to get that security. Daddy's the security, mama's the breath. Inhale uh, is feminine. Exhale wow, is masculine. Come on, man. Then we could talk Zion. Then we could talk Zion. Food. You want that food? Tribe. It's time to eat. You ain't going to eat without your breath. You ain't going to eat without Big Mom. Because <laughs> you want favor of Hawa. In other words, for whoever finds me obtains favor of your father. Obviously, you got favor of mama but now you know if i'm digging you daddy's digging you man <laughs> if i love you daddy loves you you're gonna have favor because he knows i love you he knows i love you he's gonna have favor like david right and just like the aquas man like ruth right we talk about ruth the moabitess right we got a lot of you know righteous uh israelite queens man you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Queen Tamara now. You know what I'm saying? Lady Hannah, we just got. Oh, man. I mean, you know, shout out to Miriam, man. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, dragon's on the wall, man. <laughs> he that misses me wrongs his own soul. That's why we know the wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Because uh, you don't rock with mama. It can also be your destruction of fortune, right? It goes both ways, double-edged sword. 
And they that hate me love that <laughs> double-edged sword, man. Hey, you better be watching that mama's gates, waiting at her post, man. You find her, you obtain favor of our creator. Yeah, power is mine. Counsel is mine by me, King's Ray. You know, Solomon says something similar. Proverbs chapter 4. Hear you the instruction of a father. Attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Forsake you not my teaching. For I was a son unto my father, tender and an only one in the sight of my mother. And he taught me and said unto me, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Mama says you find life. Keep the code. Get wisdom. What? Get wisdom. Who? Yeah. <laughs> wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Forget not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Right? Get understanding. Mama says she is understanding, right? And don't forget nor decline the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Who? Her. Who's her? <laughs> Big mama, man. She will preserve you. Mama just said, you find me, you find, you know, you'll get favor of a while, right? She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. She said, I love them that love me. The beginning of wisdom, man, go get, <laughs> go get mama, man. <laughs> translators be trying this is one of my funniest one of the funniest translations right here man the beginning of wisdom man this is go get wisdom <laughs> you know what i'm saying to get wisdom though you got to walk through that dough you you got you need your strong power to lead your house your family you need a floor plan man in your tent right it's the same tent that you need the pegs to secure so all this you know, spirituality, all your strength needs to have security. This is the tent. The tent contains the family. The tent is the house. When you gather together, when you gather, when X marks the spot, right? That's when you are connected through a portal, right? Through a vortex, through a door, right? And that's when you can see clearly. That's when you're getting your dragon on. That's when you got your breath. <sighs> wow. That's when you got that fire for security. You hooked in. You linked in. You are secure. So tribe, let's eat. Let's stop playing. And that's why my Nagas is putting their guns down. That's why the Nagas is tribing up. That's why we know it's time to eat. To get wisdom. Because we know that that is the conqueror of our fortune. We don't want to be thoughtless no more. Let's go. Yeah, with all your gathering, get understanding, extol her. We did this many times, right? We said, what does extol mean, right? Extol meaning. <laughs> and it says, you know, Oxford Language Dictionary, you know, to praise enthusiastically, man. He extolled the virtues of the Russian people. Oh, we're going to talk roots. And, we're talking roots, too. That's crazy. But to praise, man. So we say halal. Halal means praise, right? In Hebrew, halal, praise, hawa. Praise our ha breath and our wa, ha, wa, ha, wa. The fifth and sixth letters. If the ha is hijacked to you, then your breath is hijacked. Because drop ain't making nothing up. I'm reading Picto Paleo, and I'm reading it with you. Before they turn into their modern Greek, Latin, and English. <laughs> big Mama says she at the entry of the gates, at the door. You walk through the door, you get Big Mama. You get the revelation. You get the breath. Man, you got a problem with ha? You got a problem with breath. 
You got a problem with what? You got a problem with security, not me. It's your security. I know you don't got a problem with no za, because that means you don't want to eat or be nourished. And you don't want to cut off that hijack and put him outside the wall. <laughs> Game of Thrones, right? You got to know what's surrounding you, contained within your tent, right? <laughs> Where X still was marking the spot, the entrance, the gathering. All right, cons, all right, cons. I mean, you know, it just feels good to know that we are extolling, we are praising enthusiastically as Solomon, you know, is directing, you know what I'm saying, to extol this, to praise enthusiastically her, she will exalt you. I'm reading the same Bible you read. It's just Christianity didn't give us the understanding. They just gave us some Father God who is their Zeus or Jesus or Jesus. They wrapped up these Roman guys, which are these Greek guys, which are these Atlantean guys, Egyptian guys, right? Which are these Marvel Avengers, right? We're going to talk Marvel. Y'all want to talk Marvel? We're about to talk some Marvel because y'all deserve to talk Marvel, man. So when we praise Hawa, we are extolling her, praising her and him. Father, mother, mother, father. And she will exalt you. Yeah, we're talking Framer, Shaper, Papa Vu. She will bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She will give to thy head a chaplet of grace, a crown of glory will she bestow on thee. You know why, man? <laughs> because wisdom <laughs> is the conqueror of fortune. All right, now, take all that, take all that, and let's pick it up from here. Let's pick it up from here, man. I'm belly flopping. I'm about to belly flop in the Mongo flow. Three, two, one, let's go. Let's press the word for Emperor Hawazong of the Western Shia. Now, who's the Shia? We'll talk about it. We'll get there, man. Emperor Huangzong, Western Shi, Li Kun Yao. So, as you dig on these Mongol flow, it's going to connect a lot with the China flow, right? Because it's all the same history, all the same thing. All the same thing. Reigning 1193 to 1206. I'm just zeroing, zeroing in on this 1200s period. You know, having a good time I'm looking at the Western Shi in the 1200s. Son of Emperor Renzong, okay, tried to follow the policies dedicated by his father. However, the high-ranking officials in the Western Shia government became more corrupt as time passed by, starting the irreversible decline of the Western Shia. Can't no flow with me, man. <clears throat> I'm just... A lot of this I'm just digging on, like, because it's right there. Since we pinpointed a basic time period and we've been and we pinpointed multiple timelines and histories. And again, the Mongol flow connects with this Hebrew flow a lot, connects right directly with India Superior. It runs right into Asia Major, Great Tartaria, America, man. So the Native American history gets rewritten. And uh, we're going to do a dismount on. Um, a piece of a documentary that's literally saying that they have to rewrite it, even with whatever they found in the Guatemala jungle, you know, the all heads and all this other stuff they find in like They have to keep rewriting what they're calling native, man. And every time it's going to point more and more to the Nagas, man. All right, so we're talking the cons, right? The real cons, because this Emperor Renzing and this... uh Hawanzong, which of course you see the HUA. <laughs> I can't make this up. So we could we could talk Hawa, you know, we could talk Hawa like this. Right? Hawa, hey wa, or ha ha wa or ha wa every breath, right? Inhale, exhale is Hawa. Wow, right? It's everywhere. Hawaii. We talked about this last time. All these place names, the OA, the UA. All these wives, all through all all across the world, man. So, especially in the Nahawa Hawata, the Nawata, 
uh, native languages, right? The Kihuahuas and all this Mexico flow. The Chihuahua, they say, right? <laughs> oh, man, yeah, we are extolling. We are extolling, man. All right, all right, where we at? Where we at? So you're going to see it a lot with the Mongol flow, just like the Native American flow. That's why you know, right? It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Now, these Western Shia, I believe, are connected with these Almecs because they are also called the Shi. And everyone keeps asking what happened to the Almecs. And this is why I'm zeroing in on who was the Khan at this time? Who was this Hawa, right? At the same time as this transfer of power is happening with Genghis and Prester, the Shi is going through it too. The Almecs are going through it at the same time. So we can now put this Native American uh, mysterious Almec history right smack in the face in the intersection of Genghis Khan during the Prester John War, which lets you know what side the Prester was on and what side these Shia, she are on. Because X marks the spot. X marks the spot. Remember, you know, Lady Andros of Clan Seal, Andrea of the Ancient and Noble House of Andrews, Andreas, Ptolemy's Egypt. Really? Well, where's Ptolemy's India? Where's Kapanku? Uh, well, we know that we know that this is a map of America. And the way that China has been believed it to be, which an old pilot showed King Henry the Seventh in the year fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, where's Ptolemy's India? Right in Cathay, Florida, boss. Well, we know that this is a map of America, boss. Showed the <laughs> and the way to China. So the China America flow goes hand in hand. They even call the Khan the Khan of China and this is Cathay, just like we got Catan, like Joktan, right? Like Yucatan, like Catan, Cate, Cathay, which means promised land, pure land. And there be dragons. There be dragons. Dra dragons and Nagas. Dragons and Nagas. But where's Ptolemy's India? Right? Where's Ptolemy's Egypt? <laughs> I mean, if Ptolemy's India is in America, where's Ptolemy's Egypt, boss? Greek Iberian. Where's Eber, boss? Where's Eber, man? Last time that I checked, Eber is Eber. You know? Eber is Eber. We still talking Jokta. We still talking Kata. We still talking Cathay. C's and K's, right? Cathay, Qatar, Ptolemy, Arab proper, Arab propers. Okay. Whose family named the Andrews Island, Greek, Agios, Adres, Greek town. So this is what we, you know, the relative of. Alex Andros, Ptolemy X. <laughs> Again, where X marks the spy, Hicksos, right? All this stuff. So, you know, all this stuff is going to connect the Rus of Russia, Rus and Rus, land of Rus, Alexandra, Virginia, Louisiana. You know what I mean? Shout out to Brother Nature and them. And of course, as I, you know, talked about my dad, Michael Andrews. Uh, you know, he has his roots in Louisiana and, you know, we got family in Georgia as well, right? So you got a lot of this roots happening right there, right? Okay. Now, which ones are the real ones? Which ones are the hijack? Now we got to put our dragonfly perspective together, man, so we can see where the switch happens, so we can see what's what. But there's California, Andrews Island, all this, man, so none of this is coincidence, None of this is coincidence. 
X marks the spot, right? Western Shishia government became more corrupt as time passed, starting the irreversible decline of the Western Shia. Sounds like the Hebrews, right? <laughs> huh? More corrupt? The rise of the Mongol under Genghis Khan began to pose threats. Sounds like Nebuchadnezzar, huh? Posing threats on the royals of Judah coming to take them to Babylon, right? <laughs> Yeah, boss, I, that seems why when we talk Judah, Priest King, Prester John. The Pandion. You know, you're talking Salima. You're talking Exilar. You're talking Babylon, 1300s, 1200s. So this Genghis Khan flow correlates with Babylon, man, which correlates with Nebuchadnezzar, which God is asking a few Preston Johns ago, well, more than a few, is Nebuchadnezzar, Genghis Khan, they're both titles. Nebo, Nebo, defend my boundary, defend your boundary, that's the title. Nebo, defend your boundary. There's other variations, right? So we talk Babylon, we're still talking Genghis. Now these Mongols, you know, are specifically, they're just connecting them with Genghis, but, you know, they're all Mongols and they're all Tartars. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a matter of who's taking this title at this time. So. They're posing threats as Mongols began raiding the border villages. So how we're differentiating is with this Western Shia, right? We got to be specific. If you give the title Mongol to Genghis or Tartar to Genghis, then we got to be specific. We got to say Kara Katai, right? Kara Katai, like the Chera, the Cherokee, the Kara is the Kara, like the Kokoro. We're about to be back on the Francisco Kokoro investigation. Hey, this drop only gets hotter, man. <laughs> This is just the intro. Let's go. So 1205, right? They say 1203 is when Genghis Khan, um, you know, invaded or some say killed Gang, uh, Preston John or King David. <coughs> Different versions of the story. But Wan Zong changed the name of the Western Shia to Zong Xing, now Yang Shuang. 1205, the Mongols began their first invasion of the Western Shia pillaging and burning many outline sounds like invading searching out and capturing sounds like dumb diverses doom diverses right now remember your three major chronological time shifts don't be afraid to shift time 300 years a thousand years or 1800 years roughly <laughs> to fit things in because Gal and Kripatavis sure did that they took a king from the 1200s and shifted him back 300 years back, they took a king from the 1500s and shifted him to the 1200s. I mean, many kings, many times. So this is how they did history. They would take our history, shift it back at least three major chronological time shifts left to Anatoly Fomenko. Parallel timelines in history. Whew, maybe we got to grab that again and get it like it's the first time. Templar, take the wheel. Shout out to Templar, Evan Reed, get in his classroom, man. Because it's so edifying, man, and it's so much just um, clarity. You know, the bro brings out so much clarity. Left the Templar even read the water for all these years of amazing investigation and recon. Tribe up. Yeah, man. So they're pillaging, burning many outlying villages and cities. 1206, his cousin Lee An Lee Anquan. Uh, <laughs> sound like a nigga. Anquan came, right? who became Emperor Zing Chan, Zing Zhang, started a coup and took power from Huang Zhang, man. Huang Zhang died in the same year. So here we go. I mean, even the House of David had their coups, right? So I'm just looking at these, you know, just looking at this emperor stuff with a dragonfly perspective. Let me go back one. Okay, okay, cool, cool. 
Now, when you think about the sheer, <laughs> which is where I kind of got off. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, okay, so the sheer, right? Now, I'm going to get this in a second, but when I say sheer, I also want you to think Armex, sheer. There's a couple of things you need to know about these Armex. <laughs> the Armex date back to the archaic period, wherever that is. That's, that's pre-everything, damn near. The Armex civilization parallels the dynastic periods of Egypt. So when they over there talking about Ptolemy's Egypt, right? Ptolemy's Egypt. When is this Egypt taking place, right? Because <laughs> the Almecs seem to be paralleling, paralleling dynastic periods of Egypt. That means it's happening at the same time, man. It's happening. That means it's all happening. The Almecs were not Paleo Siberians or evolving Neanderthals. So, first of all, Almecs. Date way back, hella old, hella old. <laughs> Two, the Almec civilization parallels the dynastic periods of Egypt. Three, the Almecs were not had nothing to do with Neanderthal. Let's just say, let, let's just start there. <laughs> Nor are we talking about the natives that they're calling today, right? Because a lot of these folks, they got Neanderthal in the DNA. But we got royalty, got loyalty up in our DNA. <laughs> we got that royalty love to cake dot, man. You know what I mean? So, hey, all DNA ain't the same. Now, this is just science. <laughs> they don't like talking about it, but it is what it is. Evidence points to the Almecs being of African ancestry. Now, why would they say that? Because they look like niggas, these sheep. But the Shi are also the Tangu. The Tangu are the Shi. Sino Tibetan people who founded and inhabited the Western Shi Shi dynasty. <laughs> These great Shi, right? So the Tangu popped off the Shi. What else about the Tangu? Oh, what's their appearance like? <laughs> According to William of Rubric, who traveled to various parts of the Mongol Empire in the 13th century, the Tangus were valiant and had big, swarthy men with them. <laughs> the Tangu people I saw were tall but swarthy. What's all this swarthy business? Does that have anything to do with the copper color races found here by the European? I don't know, man. I mean, swarthy, swarthy. Why are they playing? Being of a dark hue. Swarthy or black. <laughs> Tangu. The more. Yeah, which ones? Which ones? Dark as a Spaniard, dark as Italians. <laughs> yeah, got them. Complexion, man, dark hue. Dark hue. Okay. Swarthy, dark. Swarthy and dark. So, tall, swarthy. I saw tall but swarthy nuggets. When I talk tag and goo, my naga. I'm talking swarthy. Do I gotta? Do I gotta go? Do I gotta pull up an all make head? Matter of fact, pause the video. Go pull up all make heads and come back. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of doing your homework for you. <laughs> I'm messing around, dropping. Y'all know though. But any any new wave surfing, pause the video. Go pull up an all make head. Come back and unpause the video. Let's go. Man. Let's go. We're gonna get. More into this, but when I when 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 we talking Shashia, Western Shashia, man, we talking tall, swarthy Nagas, great Shia, yeah. They got some cool translations too somewhere for that Shia as well, but yeah, their 
extensive stance among the other empires of the Lao, Song, and Jin was attributed to their effective military organizations. We're talking the Almec, guys. We're talking the Hebrews, guys. Man, they had cavalry, chariots, archery, shields, ar artilleries, cannons. Man, what? Cannons carried on the back of camels, guys. <laughs> God, they had amphibious troops. Come on, man. Come on, boss. Come on, boss. Come on, boss. They had water dragons, man, for combat on land and water. What's an amphibious troop? I gotta see this, man. <laughs> Is that just the navy? We talking? We talking the navy? All right, Western Shia, all right, as named by their own state, reconstructed, all right, which word by word denotes white, high kingdom great right we ain't talking white as in white people <laughs> we're talking white as in pure righteous high lofty righteous great high high like judah i'm just asking you is it high like judah uh, etymology this is the year of the dragon. I hope you see clear. We're talking America. We're talking Utah. When I talk Utah, I'm talking Utah. Hi. <laughs> Utah. So, we know <laughs> that this high situation, you know, refers to this lofty, great, high kingdom. Right, this white, pure, righteous kingdom, man. We're just talking righteousness, piousness, right? Everything we're talking, press the job, connects to the same righteous Nagas. Now, since the Japanese and Chinese scholars uh, commonly interpret the first two words as upper reaches of the white river. <clears throat> so when they talk about this white high or this righteous, right? White means pure. <laughs> high great Shia state. This high great Shia, right? Remember the Shia are the Tangu. The Tangu are these swarthy Nagas. In this high state, right? <laughs> state of being, right? So, um, and you know, since the Japanese and Chinese scholars interpret it, interpret this, uh, you know, as these upper reaches of the White River, and this White River is what they call. The Yellow River, so possibly referring to the Yellow River before it turned uh, yellow, right? <laughs> before it turned more yellow. Now, you know, of course, man, they, they, they say Japanese and China scholars. And I'm going to keep reminding you, man, that <laughs> the Chinese sail upon this ocean and that Japan is right here next to Florida, tucked in in America because this is a map of America, cons. Yeah, we got mermaids. Yeah, we got we got dragons too. <laughs> we got nagas and we got gold. <clears throat> and every time you see China, just remember that Marco Polo's China is right here. Ptolemy's India is right here. Right? I can't make this stuff up, man. The con they're looking for is right here in America. And you know he ain't looking like this, connected to Florida and the Mississippi and all this stuff we're talking about, right? But let's talk, let's talk Mississippi. Yeah, let's talk Mississippi. <laughs> let's talk Yellow River, man. Yeah, because before it was yellow, it was white. <laughs> all right, second longest river in China, okay? Sixth longest river system on Earth with an estimated length of 5,464 kilometers, right? Roughly about 3,400 miles. All right, so what's the connection with this yellow first? You know, six longest rivers. So let's look at the six longest rivers on Earth. I said on Earth, right? Yeah, I mean, you might have guessed it, man. When we talk yellow river, just like uh, I said before, some scholars connect a lot of this ancient China flow to Egypt, right? But you will have to connect the China first to Kapongu, right? America, right? 
then you can connect, okay, so China's America and America's ancient Egypt. So now all of it is clearly happening here. Follow me now. <laughs> is the Nile River the Mississippi River? Uh, how does it connect with the Amazon? I mean, they're both number one and number two in terms of the world's longest, but, you know, not by far because you got the Nile, Amazon, both around 6,000 kilometers. You also have the Yangtze, Yangtze, Changjiang in China. But, you know, is this also connected with the original ancient? And of course, you got the Mississippi. You now, you know, then you got Yellow River, number six. So M Mississippi is number uh, four, and six thousand two hundred seventy-five. So it's pretty much like sixty-three hundred kilometers, and the Nile is sixty-six hundred. So all these could be twins, especially the Nile and the Mississippi running north-south, pretty much marrying each other or mirroring each other should i say <laughs> so hmm. what else can we get correlations between this yellow the ancient yellow the hawang right you gonna see i mean just count the hawas we, we, we gonna <laughs> we gonna quickly man let's count all these hawas because i'm just saying when you recon this mongo history man it connects when you connect the Mongol history again, when you connect it with the indigenous history of America, when you connect it with the indigenous, you know what I'm saying, history of, um, you know, this biblical history, you know what I'm saying? It's like the biblical history, the Hebrews, you know, connect directly with these Americas, this indigenous flow, we know that. And it also connects to this Mongol flow. The Mongol means great ones, great, right? So all this great, 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 great business is the Hebrew business. You don't get no more greater than a wab. Same, same thing with the Moors. Moor means great. Don't get no more greater than a wab, right? So we are the ultimate Moor. We're the ultimate Mongol. We're the ultimate great. And this is why you're going to see a wab attached to the Native American flow, the Hawa Hawas. We just got that before. Get the last drop, right? The uh, the new Hawa, the no Hawa. Uh, languages, uh, Ki Hawa Hawas, and all these titles, Hawaii's, right? And now with the Mongols, you're going to see the same thing. The H U A is the same as the H A W A phonetically. And what's the connection? The yellow <laughs> and the Mississippi. Or are we just talking the muddy? The muddy. Let's go back. So the etymologies. I want to see the etymologies of the yellow. So I want to know. We want to know. Why are you calling this yellow? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So check this out. Talking about parallels. Talking about parallels. So when the Yellow River was still somewhat clear, right? That's when it's the White River. It was simply called the river. Just like the Nile River is simply the Nahal. In Hebrew, the Nile is Nahal. N-A-H-A-L. Nahal just means great river. <laughs> so where's the great river? You know what I mean? You see how easy it is for them to rename something and, and put the title somewhere else. Oh, I see. Let's find a great river that looks like the Mississippi over here. They find the Nile over there or they create it, right? The Nile is man-made over here, over there. The Nile is not man-made over here. The Mississippi is natural, a bylaw, love to the con. So, man, where's the real Nahal? Where's the real great river? And why is the Yellow River also known as the Muddy? Alternative names, Murky River, Muddy. They say, oh, well, it was white, and then the sediments, you know what I'm saying, the rock sediments and all this, you know, turn it muddy. Okay, okay. I can't make this stuff up. 
<laughs> when you check out this Mississippi, what else is it? You know how to say, you know what I mean? Is it Mississippi ever called Muddy? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. The Big Muddy River. Now we're talking a tributary that flows into the Mississippi River in southern Illinois. <clears throat> a drop ain't that the same place that they're migrating, Ishmael's migrating, setting up their uh, pyramid of harmonics, hijacking Illinois and Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, all that, right? Uh, Treaty of Fort Wayne, 30 million acres given up in the same area. So now do you see clearly that they're coming, setting up their Mecca and all that stuff right where Egypt is flowing? <laughs> right where the Nile is flowing? Right where Cairo, Cairo, Illinois is flowing? What's it got to do with Cairo? <laughs> but now I got Cairo the noise, right? I mean, they set up shop. Remember, these Moors only move with permission of the Pharaoh. We got that on their maps, they say, you know, with permission of the Pharaoh, we go here. With permission of the Pharaoh, we go there. Well, they set up shop right by Cairo, right by the Nile, when they started migrating, just like we saw on that map in the 1700s, 1776. Or 1785, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, the big muddy, the great muddy, muddy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man, muddy. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and even in their ancient, you know, China flow on these maps, you see a lot of the was, the UAs, the the woos, the ways, the was. You will see the Hebrew, even the, you know, the Shi Ong, Ong, Ong is Wong, Ong is King. I want to talk about these Hans, man. You know, you know what I mean? Just like Star Wars copied a lot of this, right? The Han Solo, all this Han business. You got the Yanan, like the Yahanan, like the John, what not? Man, I mean. Once your eyes is open, once you see it clearly, man, you see it all over the place. And again, the Katan is the Cathay. The Katan is the Cathay. The Katan is also the Jokta, right? Because we just talked about the air proper. Uh-oh. Say it with me. Got him, boss. <laughs> Body bad. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. When we talk air proper. We're talking the Eber, son of Eber, Iberia, the original, Iberia, Covera. This Eber is the same as this Covera. Ibera or Ibera. Remember, they're putting these Vs out of the Yiddish on these things. The Kibera, also spelled with a K or a C, sometimes a Q. Kara would be Q-A-R-A -A or K-A-R-A -A or C-A-R-A. -A. Dodge the one letter rule or it's better than Ben let us know. Get that rock cry out because the rock is crying out. <laughs> so the Kivera is also the Kibera or the Ibera, the Hibera, the Hibera, the Hibera is the Eber, Eber kingdom, man. What's it got to do with Tan Duke, right? Keep, keep this in mind. We going quick. We we going swift and press the 146. Whew, we got some great drop. Let's go. Eber, father of Joktan, which bears the name Katan. Just like Yucatan, right? Mexico, right? Meshi is Moses. Moses Moshe. Meshi Moshe. Meshi, Mexico, Mexican, Khan. I'm talking Katan because they are talking Katan. Can't make this up, boss. Let's go. Yeah, we just talking muddy. We just talking big muddies. Man, it's getting too real. Too real. Shashir, 
<laughs> we just talking she parallels left and right. You know what else parallels when we talk Egypt? The she, right? You know what all make hey look like? You know about these swarthy tan goos? The all makes date back to the archaic period. The all make <laughs> here's some facts. Number one, the all makes date back to the archaic period. So again, we going back, back, right? You got to go pre everything when you talk all make. The all make civilization parallels the dynastic periods of Egypt. We could put it together because the all make are indigenous to America, and specifically. These are tribes of Israel. The all is the all. The A-L is the O-L. Uh, <laughs> the E-L, A-L, O-L. My nadia, you're talking strong power. The mech is the mock, like the makir. The makir is the mark. The makir is the sign. We're talking tau. Mark is makir. <laughs> the all mech, the all mock, right? Mock also plays heavy in the pig, the pig flow, because a lot of the titles are mock this, mock that, right? The all mech, the all mecca. Parallel the dynastic periods of Egypt. Parallel means at the same damn time. <laughs> so is this giving us a hard hit date of when the real Egypt is popping off? Not way back in the BCs. Just like King David's flow is not way back in the BCs. Did Gallagher and Patavis add over a thousand years to your timeline and sometimes do three major chronological time shifts? And push your time in history back 1800 years so that they could take something from 1200 AD and push it to 600 BC or something crazy. Yeah, they did that to us. We got to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And that's a big step is knowing that the Almex are parallel in Egypt and that it's a good possibility. That this all mag flow is going head up with Genghis Khan, and we see it with the Shia, she Shia dynasties going head up with Genghis Khan right after the takedown of King David, Priest King, Preston John in America. We talking Tangu. Yeah. What you also need to know about the all, the L, the all mag. They were not Paleo Siberians. In other words, you can't even. You know, connecting with these so-called natives, so-called natives today, right? And they have no Neanderthal in them. Just like they say in the DNA today, these sub-Saharan African, African folks, <laughs> these black people don't have this bloodline of these beasts up in us, man. <laughs> we ain't mixed with no Neanderthal, but everybody else is. The so-called, you know, Asian today and this day, all these other people's got Neanderthal in them, but but us, yeah, <laughs> natural by law, don't have no Neanderthal. <laughs> Say it with me, boss. Natural by law, don't don't got no Neanderthal. <laughs> Evidence points to all Max being of African ancestry, boss, but. That's because they look like niggas to you. But remember, we in Northwest Maxim, right? This is Africa. Afra, Afra means what? Afra means what? Afra. We talking negro? What does it mean? Coming from a fear, A F E R. Meaning what? We're talking afar. Meaning what? The dust, the earth. So when we talk Afra, we talking earth, man. You can't say the earth is just over there, can you? So this is Afra, right? This is dust. This is earth. This is natural. 
That's why the Moors got all their maps. Northwest Africa is America. <laughs> North, South, you know what I'm saying? You got it over there. Yeah, I mean, North, South. Well, not North, South. <laughs> you got Northwest. You got Northeast of Maximum, Southwest. South, you know what I mean? So all this is Earth, man. All Africa's everywhere, right? You just see it in their etymology real, real clear. Back to the sheep. Xi dynasties, you got to know it's the first dynasty in Chinese history. <laughs> the Xi is the first dynasty in Chinese history, so we understand the Almex date back to the archaic period. <laughs> Go back, it's the first. It's paralleling Egypt, right? Okay. Shia, you got the 16 kingdom flow. You got the Shia connected uh, with the Su dynasty, right? You got this Western Shia we've been digging on. You know what I mean? Meaning high was a Tangu led imperial dynasty. You said, well, who's the Tangu, right? Yeah, the Tangu's with the Mississippi, right? <laughs> the muddy. Who's the tag? Oh, yeah, man. This is crazy, man. That they had, you know, their effective military organizations that integrated cavalry, chariots, archery, shields, man. Sounds biblical to me, man. Artillery. They had cannons carried on the back of camels. And they had amphibious troops. And we said, what is an amphibious troop? Goodness gracious. Are we talking to the Navy? We talk amphibious. It sounds like a a water creature, right? Almost sounds like a like a dragon, right? <laughs> like a water dragon for combat on land and water. Wow. These Tangu are swarthy like the Almax. These Tangu again. I saw Tangu people. I saw the Tangu people I saw were tall but swarthy. Swarthy. <laughs> Etymology. Dark color. Talk. Swarthy. <laughs> 1828, remember, you are the dragon, because you see clearly, right? And I think you're violent for anybody trying to break in your house. Male or female, this man or woman is a dragon. A swarthy dragon. Yep, dark hue, same thing. Okay, okay, just double checking complexion we talking, right? Or black, like the Moors, come black. One definition, black. <laughs> okay, can I just say black for now? So you know what I'm talking about when we talk dark color. Copper color race is found here, right? Can we just say black since we're talking swarthy? Can we just say black when we talk American? And copper color. Can we talk black when we talk tango? The tangos were valiant, right? Fierce or violent. <laughs> Had big swarthy men among them. Big mighty swarthy knockers. Wow. So that's what we know when we talk Shashia. We talk Shia, the Shia again, or a Tangu led dynasty, a swarthy black led dynasty. That's why Kara means black or swarthy, copper color, right? Right. Count the Hawaz. <laughs> Hawaz Shia. It gets deep. Because now the Hawa, right, 
the Hawa Shi or the Hawa Almec, right? Tangu, Shishia. A historical concept. So here we go with this mythological shit, right? So as soon as we <laughs> talk about us, we become a myth, right? We become a concept to that. We just become a concept to these side chat. Just a myth. We're just a concept. We're representing the Chinese nation. We know where China is. <laughs> and came from the self-awareness of a common cultural ancestry by the various confederations of pre kin ethnic ancestors of the Hans. Y'all ever dig on the Hans? <laughs> Y'all ever dig on the... Look, man. The Yellow River Valley. <clears throat> Well, by the Hawa Shia people. So these Shia, remember, are the Tangu, which are black people, right? <laughs> and the Yellow River is the Muddy River, like the big muddy Mississippi, right? And is it possible that you got these so-called black people by the Mississippi in America? <laughs> and the Han Dynasty is what? Now, this is when it gets real interesting, right? Because these Hans are the same thing as the Hawa people. And they even say right here, the Han Chinese trace their ancestry to the Hawa Shia, my naga. So these Hans are the Hawas, right? And they even call themselves the Hawa people. Right, you got Hawa Ren. <laughs> oh, they got a Star Wars character like named Ren too. Kylan Ren or something like that. Um uh, Man, the Warring States period led to an emergence of the Zhao era Chinese referring to themselves as Hawa Shia, literally the beautiful grandeur. And unfortunately, they look, they look nothing like the current Chinese today. Why is it that no one looks like the current anything today, right? Other than us. None of these Latin American countries look like the OG people of that country. We know that in terms of, you know, who they, um, you know, propagate <coughs> are these people. You know what I'm saying? No one claiming these titles in any of these Latin American countries <laughs> look like the OGs. It's crazy. I was having a conversation with um, a friend of mine, man, and he's from uh, Mexico. You know, he's, he's you know, looks, you know, more like the Caucasian, you know, Mexican, you know. He, but he slipped up. He told me, he said, uh, he told me, um, he said, yeah, man, the, the black people or the, you know, the darker people of Mexico. <laughs> he said, yeah, man. Uh, oh, no, we we're talking about racism. He was like, man. Mexico's very racist. He just brought it up, man. Mexico's very racist. I said, oh, yeah, man, please tell, man. Do tell. He said, oh, well, you know, <laughs> unless you look pretty much more white, you know what I'm saying, you're treated bad, you know, and, and then they, he said, they call the people that are dark skinned, basically, they call them, <laughs> he said, they call them Indios. Like it was a um, derogatory thing. Like, oh yeah, they're they're Indios. I said Indios, like Indian. <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like for some reason they ain't connect that Indios is like Indian, right? But pretty much you're calling these dark people in Mexico Indios. <laughs> I said what? So you're calling these dark people? Presley John would be called an Indios, right? Or uh, the king of the Indians. You're calling these people in Mexico, right? Indios, and they are connected with the India Superior. But they don't know why they're calling them Indio. Because they're of India, right? They don't know. They Like, he, he really never thought about it. <laughs> so, so, if they're Indios... Then what are we? Right? I mean, if you know those dark people are Indios there, then what would be the dark people in Florida? 
And when they start calling themselves Indians, and you say, no, they're from Africa, but in Mexico, they know they're Indios, right? <laughs> but in Florida, they got to be from Africa. In California, they got to be from Africa. In, you know, Milwaukee, Tennessee, they got to be from Africa. But in Mexico, you know they Indios of India. See what I'm saying? If they're Indios there, we Indios here. Ping pa, body bag. We talking the hug. And what do they call themselves? Yeah. Hawaii people. People of Han, Chinese ancestry, <laughs> who possess foreign citizenship. So now they got some other definition of a foreign foreigner or foreign citizenship of a different country or commonly referred to as Hawaii people. Well, we know that these people are already Hawaii people. <laughs> Unless this is who you're calling, you know, the hijacks who have foreign citizenship, who's stealing titles. But these are Hawa people. The Hawa Shia. Are the Hawa Shia of foreign citizenships? But suddenly the Hawa people have foreign citizenship. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, this is not what they look like. Uh, back in the Hawashia time, not in the Shishia, not in the Tangu flow. You know that. Taiwan. Taiwan is Ta-wa. <laughs> and the Ta is the Tao. The Tao is the mark, the sign, the covenant. Wow. So the Hawa, Shia, or the Hans, right? So when we dig on these Hans, these Hans are the Khans. These Hans are the Hawas. Right? <laughs> my nine, we just talking she. That's it. That's all we talking. <laughs> we ain't going no further, man. We just talking she. We talking Tango. We talking big swarthy knives. And, you know, you got the links, man. Dig further on the Western Shia. Just know that these are the Khans that went head up. With Genghis in them. It says the Western Shia was annihilated by the Mongol Empire in 1227, man. <laughs> and what's it got to do with the Tangu? Have to do with the Tang, right? So we got to recon the Tang. We got to still recon. The Hans, the Jinns, right? All these things are your Hebrew culture that they flipped, changed the identities, you know what I mean? <laughs> changed the images. You know, these Orcons, it reminds, me of these, uh, reminds me of this Archon flow, love to natural by law, man. We got this Archon flow popping up, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Count the Hawas. Right? So you got the Emperor Hawan Zong, Western Shia. He's interesting because it's the same hard time period during the Preston John Genghis Khan War, you know, 1202, 1203. And we'll get back to the uh, Battle of the Burning Sands, like we said we would, which is happening all the stuff around the same time. It's just the battle of the Great War War you never heard of between Genghis Khan and Preston John. So, you know, I'm just doing some looks, man, getting some hard hits. <clears throat> the, I mean, it sounds so biblical, right? So he was the son of Emperor Renzong and tried to follow the policies dedicated to his father or the code of his father. However, the high ranking officials in Western Shia government became more corrupt as time passed started the irreversible decline. Sounds like when Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> wrote up on Judah and the whole Babylon flow, right? So Book of Daniel flow, right? So now it's an irreversible decline of the Western. She, the Swarthis, right? The rising of the Mongols under Genghis Khan began to pose threats <laughs> as Mongols began raiding border villages. 1205, Huan Zan changed his name, changed the name of the Western Shia to Zhang Xing. All right, so 
here comes the name changes, man. But Genghis Khan rolling up on the Shia, the Swarthies, who is himself a Swarthy, right? We're going <laughs> we stamping all this <laughs> in 146. All right, so he rolls up on the Swarthies. Now here comes this irreversible decline. But first, we had to be out of cold because, remember, he, uh, you know, Hawazong tried to follow the policies or the code of his father, right? But they kept declining. And Nebuchadnezzar comes in, you know, who could be Genghis Khan, you know what I'm saying? And he feels like he has a right to the throne. And if he is Nebuchadnezzar, remember, we got it, that Nebuchadnezzar in some texts <laughs> have been, you know, correlated with the son of King Solomon, the one that... He had with Queen Sheba. And if Genghis Khan is the son of Nebuchadnezzar, or excuse me, of King Solomon, then of course he feels he has a right to the royal throne, the house, right? He has a right. And, you know, Hawa gave him that right to, you know, take down Israel at this, at this time, according to the book of Daniel. He had the right to do it. He, he got the pass to do it. You know, parallels, man. You know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> especially when we start digging on the Marvel flow and this whole seed of survival, time travel flow. This whole uh, <laughs> Kang, remember Kang and Marvel has this time travel flow on lock. So, and we always, you know, hear about these celebrities today and all this time travel situation. And, you know what I mean? These clones and all this stuff in the past and these doppelgangers of these. We're like, look, man. Time travel ain't nothing new, boss. Marvel's just showing you what's already there in ancient Atlantean and all this stuff. In the Marvel flow, Presser John said he was put in the seat of survival, something called the seat of survival. He was put into the past. Genghis Khan or Kang in the Marvel put him in the past. Then he pops up in 1966 uh, in the 60s during the civil rights situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, now he's in the, now he's, you know what I'm saying, in the time of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? He just pops up in the 60s for some reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, hey, to me, Genghis Khan could be not only Nebuchadnezzar, but could be King Charles V. <laughs> And all this also kind of matches up with this um, these raids that were happening, I think he said, for 20 years, 20 years straight. Genghis Khan was uh, attacking the Tangu for 20 years straight, man. And that matches up with the Shikamaka Cherokee that went to war for the first 20 years straight. And then, of course, after that, it continued to the Tecumse War and beyond, but that 20-year war thing is another parallel. I mean, another body bag for the illusion. In the 13th century, Genghis Khan unified the northern grasslands of Mongolia and led his troops in six rounds of attacks against the western Shia over a period of 22 years. During the last spate, of Mongol attacks, Genghis Khan died in Western Shi territory. Whoa. So they finally got him. But of course, you know, by that time, the, the damage was done, man. His Kublai and him picked it up, man. They just kept going. So the official Mongol history attributes his death to illness, whereas legends claim that he died from a wound inflicted in these battles. <laughs> So 1227, the capital of Western Shia was overrun by the Mongols. The capital was overrun, right? So uh, who devastated his buildings. So what happened to all your stuff in America? <laughs> it's not just a white man, my nigga. Genghis was tearing down these buildings. And your written records are gone. Devastated the written records. They didn't want you to know. Who you are. All was burnt to the ground except its monastery. The last emperor was killed and tens of thousands of civilians massacred. However, many Tangu families joined the Mongol 
Empire. So people started switching sides, man, just like they did with the converter die situation. You know what I mean? And this um, colonization, invasion, and all this stuff we're getting here. So <clears throat> back to this 20 year situation, right? 22 years. Twenty-two years. I'm just paralleling since everything is parallel. You know what I'm saying? So when this Revolutionary War popped off, does this have anything to do with the Genghis Khan invasion? Does it have anything to do with the Christopher Columbus, 1492, 1452, Doom Diversus, Apple Boo, invasion, invade? Subjugate, right? <laughs> the Saracens. Take their kingdoms and stuff, right? <sighs> Is it all just one thing? It's happening over a 22 year period here. 20 years, I mean, my nigga. <laughs> Count the Shikamaga, right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight, nine. My nigga, all right? So the Shikamaga had to go on the front lines before everybody. To fight off this invasion. And the Shikamago are the ones that separated and broke off because they didn't want to do no deals with these hijacks. So they separated. Because they didn't want to do no peace <laughs> with these invaders. They didn't want to make treaties of peace and friendship, man. They didn't want to make no treaties of peace. They on the front lines for the first 20 years. And even after <clears throat> this 20 year flow, these, these same Shikamago, quasi wars, they're still fighting. Barbary wars are just the swans. Because the Barbar is the swan and the swan knight under Sylvanus to Texas, 775, Kalei Luz, Read Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe. And it picks right up because it, it's no war, but somehow they get Florida. See, I don't trust these no war situations, especially when it leads to major war. To cool say war, the last stand, which continues into more Naga war. Is this something subsequent to the Genghis invasion or is this the same damn thing since we know that they're not even going to give us a real picture of gang is we had to go look for the real thing, right? And he's a, a slim black man. So they want us to think he's some chubby Chinese, you know, so-called Chinese looking man today, you know what I'm saying? And then it's happening way over there. Like they changed everything about history. His story is bullshit. <laughs> it's just the same thing. Did it happen more recent than the 1200s? <laughs> the Scholar and Batavis do three major chronological time shifts on these nights. Did he shift your time 333 years? Did they take stuff from the 1500s and put it in the 1200s? Or from the 1700s, 1800s and put it in the 1500s and 1200s? And uh, let's just throw it back in the B.C. Because these same Cherokee are still fighting these same Seminole from the very top are still fighting. So the war didn't stop. 1900s, my naga, you was born. <laughs> you was born 1900s, man. Most of y'all, right? <laughs> Come on, man. This just happened. The same Cherokees. Same. The same ones. And this is when Ishmael started migrating. Setting up their, you know, 
harmonic pyramids and you know what I mean their meccas and all their stuff, right? We got that. <laughs> I can't make this up. 1785. Ishmael's migrate. Where? Indiana. Really? After the Treaty of Fort Wayne, where they got 30 million acres for free, they come for the free, start migrating, setting up their mountain of harmonics. This formula for the Holy Mountain, this holy mountain is supposedly contained in the odd dimensions of the cube of Abraham and I and Ishmael. Come on, boss. Can't make this up. <laughs> Indiana, right? That's where this and it, Illinois and all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, Illinois and all that. <clears throat> Oh. White River, whoa, 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 I <laughs> how many, how many body bags is it, <laughs> was it, come on boss, wasn't the Yellow River the same one that we called the Muddy, right, same one they called the Muddy, <laughs> the Mora, the Moray, wasn't it originally called the White? The White River? Come on, man. Yellow River. The River. Then they got the muddy flow. Hold up, man. I know I saw a White River. I know I saw a White River. Well, let's go back to the... uh, the she. Nah, man. Yeah, y'all better stop playing with it now. Y'all better stop playing Because they, we got to the Yellow River from here. You know, I got to reverse navigate, man. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 <laughs> Say it with me, Kai. <laughs> body bag. Body bag for the illusion. Another body bag. So the White River became the muddy Yellow River. The Mississippi is called the Big Muddy. And the White River. <laughs> Just like the Mississippi, you telling me. It's right here in America, too. And just like in the Shashia, it's extremely important boundary. Look at it. And look how all this migration goes through it. This is this is a huge <laughs> pin pinpoint ping pow, the White River. <clears throat> the upper reaches of the White River, right? Another body bag for the illusion, man. I didn't even expect. I didn't even expect this. <laughs> this got me off. <laughs> Caught me off guard, man. And Mecca runs right through it, huh? This White River is very important. <laughs> the corresponding Chinese name, White High Great Shia State, was also used. Chinese and Japanese scholars call. Commonly interpret the first two words as the upper reaches of the White River. Then they got to the Yellow River, and then they got to the Muddies, man. And they said that it was a tributary. So this White River, or Yellow River, or Muddy River, is a tributary of the Mississippi River. Whoa. Oh, just like this White River would be a tributary <laughs> of the big Mississippi. Whew. Or is it all one thing? I mean, wow. Yeah, this is too cool. 
<laughs> this is too smooth, man. Hey, man. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay, okay. We just talking to she. <laughs> Back to the all man. Wow. I hope y'all are surfing away with me because I'm surfing away with you. Lego. So skeletons have been unearthed in pre-Columbian layers in the valley of the Pecos River that flows through Texas, Alberto, Texas, Con, and New Mexico. Empties into the Rio Grande in the Gulf of Mexico. Professor Hooten a physical anthropologist concluded the Peco skull resembles most closely the cranium of Negro groups coming from Africa. Stop. Would you just stop it, boss? Can y'all pause, man? <laughs> you want to play pause game, man? Pause on this, man. All right? <laughs> Come on, boss. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We get it, man. They think it. Africa's in one place. They don't understand the dust, the earth, right? The nagas of the earth, right? But we're just talking about these ni niggas, right? Where Negro communities, or excuse me, commonly have been perceptible infusion. <laughs> so we have this perceptible infusion. It's not even like real, right? But it's perceptible that we all got hemetic blood and we all come from ham. You know the old story they told grandma? We, we have cursed black skin from the land, you know, tr from the line of ham. Right? The hematic blood is in the blood of the Negro. All these are half truths, right? Some Negroes have ham blood <laughs> and some Negroes have sham. Ooh, got them. They have to tell you the truth. <laughs> you just got to be able to dodge the hijack and see inside the parentheses. Because how is ham shim? How is ham shim, right? How is ham shim, right? <laughs> so they say ham, quote unquote, uh, parentheses, sh uh, shim, were of the dark sea. If shim was white like they want you to think today, it wouldn't even be in parentheses, Jack. That means that some of these Negroes are shim. They're trying to tell you, right? The dark sea, the swarthy cars, right? The tango, right? We're talking she. What else, man? What else half truths y'all gonna give us, man? Uh huh. Forbidden to interbreed with the Canaanites. Nice. The word ham translates as black, does it? Or we're we just talking the burnt soil, like Kim. Ham is Kim. Kim. Calm. Calm, right? Again, you could put the K before the H or the C before the H. Now you got Chad, right? Or. One letter rule, Chan, back to the con. So it's very tricky. Ham is also, you know, can be Han. H A N, man. So which Ham, right? Which Han, right? Which which Canaan? Are we just talking Ana? Again, right? So we know we're talking Black. We know we're talking Swarthy. And we know we're talking Shem. So what else, man? <laughs> Finds like these, in addition to the Negroid style heads. Negro heads is what they're telling you, man. It's all over the place. Forces us to consider the parallels. How many parallels we got between ancient America and Africa? Body bag. <laughs> Another body bag. But they're not just talking Africa. We know we're talking ancient America. We know we're talking Shem in ancient America, which are black. <laughs> Con, I mean, we could decipher between the words, between the hijack, which are the Negro style heads or these Nagas of ancient America. But they keep trying to connect it to Africa. They try to draw parallels, but in reality, the parallel is that you in Africa. <laughs> this is West Africa, a mix, right? <laughs> Northwest, yada, yada. So, however, historians dismiss these similarities as mere coincidence. Oh, damn. It's just a coincidence they look like niggas. It's a coincidence they look like Negro. It's a coincidence these Negroes are of ancient America. It's a coincidence these Nagas are Shemites. It's just a coincidence, boss. 
How many more coincidences y'all got, man? Archaeologists, on the other hand, concluded that the Almecs who sculpted these monoliths have been shown to be absolute masters of realistic portraiture and did not arrive at the distinctive Negroid features by accident. Body, man. This ain't no accident. This ain't no coincidence. This ain't no accident. It is also noted that there could not possibly be a coincidence of stylization. There is no coincidence of a distinct people with facial features and characteristics which separates them from the features and characteristics of all other races on the plane. This is no coincidence. This is no accident. This is no coincidence. <laughs> this is a parallel, right? <laughs> man, they just letting you know, man. There can be no room for geographical coincidence that the very period when the Negroid appeared in Mexico, that the first pyramid, mummies, hieroglyphs, began to appear in Mesoamerica as well. It is a is it a coincidence that the T.I. Hua Khan, which is H-U-A, Khan, head of pre-Columbian Mexico, greatly resembles early Mandigo clay heads and Nigerian images, all in the family, right? Many of the historians today thus have confirmed to the speculation or conformed to the speculation of the Almec monolith heads. They cannot explain the representation of the Negro. They cannot explain the representation of you Nagas. They can't explain it. They can't do it. So again, you can't tell us who we are. How can you tell us who we're not? You can't explain it. It's unexplainable to you. It's just an accident, right? It's just a coincidence, right? You know what else is a coincidence, man? <laughs> you popping up all over the place, man. You know what I mean? Uh, fair use in your caboose. You know, I just want to get this quick piece for educational purposes and research. Please, please, Section 107, copyright. Let's go. Shout out to Life's Biggest Questions, man. I just want to get this piece right here. Lego. In the depths of the American jungles, an ancient tale unfolds. Beneath Guatemala's dense forests, a monumental discovery is reshaping our view of the Maya world. A vast hidden city emerges, Whoa. revealing a civilization far grander than ever imagined. This echoes another groundbreaking find in the land of the Olmec, the Rubber People. Their lost culture, predating even the Aztecs and Incas, speaks of remarkable skill and ambition. Now, these two enigmatic civilizations, though centuries apart, are poised to rewrite the story of ancient America as we delve into the Olmec and Maya worlds, exploring their awe-inspiring achievements and lasting impact. From towering pyramids to complex writing systems, their legacy continues to astound. This isn't just a story of lost cities and forgotten empires. Join us on this adventure through time. Feel the wonder of standing where ancient feet once trod of uncovering secrets long buried by jungle and earth. This journey into the heart of the Olmec and Maya worlds isn't just about understanding the past. It's about seeing our own world and ourselves in a new light. Everyone goes to the big Mayan sites or we go to Teotihuacan and Mexico City because they're impressive. Whereas the Olmec sites, there's not much left. I've been to these sites several times now, all of them. We've been to pretty much every Olmec, known Olmec site there is. But the Olmecs really, they're characterized by the megalithic stone heads. Very unusual. <laughs> Negroid features are unexplainable in Mexico, but they call you Indios. Shemites. These are the Nagas that went to war with Genghis Khan, my Naga. These are the Shikamagua, these are the Tangu, the Shashia, these are you. 
This is your story, man. In your face, bone. These are the Hebrew. Visual features that appear to be non kind of native Mexican, Native American. <laughs> non native Mexican, Native, Native American. Man, these people fork tongue tripping all over. Listen, they appear to be non native, not, not Mexican. <laughs> they just don't look. They don't look wide enough for you. Let me get it back for a stack. Let me get it back for a stack. Of course, the Olmec sites, there's not much left. Look at this particular one. Don't this remind you of the Tangu one? Don't this remind you of the face of this one here? With the wide nose, eyes, lips, and all that, right? The swarthy Tangu people of China. Tangu people of the Xi. An important ethnic group, right? It gets ethnic when, when they talk about these Negroes. <laughs> Northwest China during the 7th through 11th centuries, likely related to the Tibetans. Tangu spoke the language of the King Jing. Kingjik uh, group of Sino-Tibetan linguistic family. However, Tangu culture was quite similar to the others. On the northern states, people like the Uyghurs, Jurchens, Manchu, <laughs> indicated that the Tangu had lived in the area for some time, like the Almec. In fact, some Tangu clans were nomadic, like the Almec. Some were sedentary. Then it goes into the Tang dynasty flow. Wouldn't it be sudden if we had a connection of the Tangu and the Mangu <laughs> on the same map at the same damn time? At the same damn time? Tangu, regnum means kingdom. Mangu, Mangi, regnum means kingdom. <sighs> Let's go. Don't you know that the G's... And the C's are interchangeable in the Hebrew. They could put a G on there, but what they get it from, they got it from the Gaal. Because the G's turn to C's in the Latin and the English alphabet. Ain't that crazy, boss? <laughs> that the G's became the C's because they didn't need another G. They had the secret letter Gaal. It's crazy, man. Uh, man, shout out to, look, I know this is a big puppet show, all these wars and all this stuff, but there are a lot of innocent lives that do, you know, get lost. They don't care about sacrifices, right? And I just want to pray for those families and everybody involved and uh, whether they in Iran, whether they in Israel, whether they, in, you know, wherever they are, man, um, you know, all these wars, man, you know, everywhere across the earth plane, any war, I just pray for all the family and the innocent lives, man, for real. And the prime minister of uh, Israel had this type of uh, pin. He was wearing this pin on his on his suit. And it looked exactly like this. <laughs> and I said, damn. Well, it does mean twisted, dark, and wicked. Is this why they kind of removed it from the Hebrew chart? Because this would be a 23rd letter. Hmm. Well, the G's became the C. Right, because we have the K's, so you don't need the C's and the K's when they make the same K K sound. The G sound became the C, my nigga. I can't make this up. So, on these maps, the Mon G can easily be Mon Ki or Ku, right? So, <laughs> this is another hard hit, my nigga. The Tangu in America is the same as this Mon Ku. In America, who are the Tangu? Manku, and all this connects to I think Genghis Khan's people too, man. Just like the Gherkin. Okay, okay, okay. Remember, the Vatican is the Batu Khan. The Bat, the Bat is the house in Hebrew. So the original house, the original bot, the original family is you. We're talking the she. Then it turned into the Batu Khan and, you know, different flows, the Vatican. 
You know what I mean? They put the V's on it, right? The V's and B's, right? Again. But yeah, that that, that Tangu statue, you know, thing it looks a lot. I mean, it looks a lot. Very similar to this one. You got the Tangu, <laughs> the she, and you got these she. Let's get it. I've been to these sites several times now, all of them. We've been to pretty much every Olmec, known Olmec site there is. But the Olmecs, really, they're characterized by the megalithic stone heads. Very unusual features that appear to be non kind of Negro. native Mexican, Native American. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. ancient Olmec civil. That means they got nothing to do with these people today. I mean, this naga that they find in line here. He got nothing to do with these hijacks. Today has no bloodline connection to what they call native today. Not even a little bit, boss. Very unusual features that appear to be non kind of native Mexican, Native American. <laughs> the ancient Olmec civilization, often considered the mother culture of Mesoamerica was a mystery hidden beneath the jungles of southern Mexico for centuries. America. The ancient... This guy... <laughs> has nothing to do with... Olmec civilization, often considered the... These guys. Not this image of them, right? <laughs> but they want to claim... You know... This guy. They want to claim this guy. But they're not this guy. You feel me? The ancient Olmec civilization, often considered the mother culture of Mesoamerica, was a mystery hidden beneath the jungles of southern Mexico for centuries. The discovery of this mysterious civilization began in the 19th century. This guy has nothing to do with them, but everything to do with these Shemitic Hebrews. Century, when European explorers and archaeologists started to uncover the remnants of a once great society that predated the Maya and the Aztecs by hundreds of years. Mm. The first significant discovery attributed to the Olmecs occurred in 1862 when a colossal stone head was found near the town of Tres Zapotes in the Mexican state of Veracruz. Jose Melgar Serrano, a Mexican archaeologist, was the first to document this find. At the time, the discovery of the colossal head was puzzling and inexplicable. Melgar was struck by the head's unusual features, which he described as having Ethiopian traits. All right, man, let's go. I just want to get that point out there. Ethiopia. Ethiopia. <laughs> wait, wait. Ethiopia. <laughs> Ethiopia. Abyssinia, right, which is the native name for Ethiopia. Abyssinia Our Abyssinia connects with Presser John. Imperado de los Abyssinia. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> I see clearly. Presser John. So they're saying he has Presser John features because he's the emperor of Ethiopia or India Superior, right? He's the emperor of I'll be seeing Abyssinia. Presser John. Which is the native name for Ethiopia, which even to them in the Greek just meant fiery looking. <laughs> fiery looking. Well, come. Because to be fiery looking means you have the evil eye. Right, <laughs> they would call it an evil eye to them because the slave master doesn't want you looking them in the eye. The slave master doesn't want you 
you know, standing tall, right? The slave master doesn't want you with your back straight. The slave master doesn't want you seeing clearly. But this is the year of the dragon and the fiery looking is the one with the deadly look or glance. And you only get that fire from Big Mama, Proverbs chapter 8, right? When you walk through the door, you get that look, right? So the fiery looking means you got the breath. <laughs> you got that breath, right? You got that security. You are the dragon. Copper color con, swarthy, <laughs> fiery looking nuts. You are the dragon. Because this man or woman, male or female, with this fierce, fiery look is a dragon. Because you have the one with the deadly glance. You are the one with the paralyzing sight or look. And in, <laughs> in the press of John Marvel flow, they would say, you know, he has the evil eye. But it's technology that allows a Naga to time travel. Paralyzing sight <laughs> means you ain't got no light. You know, if they extinguish that light, you ain't got no side. <laughs> so to have a paralyzing light, um, <laughs> it means that, or a paralyzing sight, it's like for the hijack is fear. And for them to take out your light, your sight means you ain't got no light. <laughs> you ain't got no sight right i have seen that that means they have extinguished your dragon to extinguish your dragon is to extinguish your kundalini rising right your coon your spirit your breath my knock your look right you ain't got that look no more to take away your light means they're taking away your look my knock your breath and your security and your food this fierce and violent person means you got the fiery look, man. Means you got the light because you see clearly and knowledge is power. Mama says in Proverbs 8, hey, power is mine. Do you see clearly? Do you have the light? Do you have the sight? This is what they were afraid of with Preston John. Is that he has the look, he has the light, he has the dragon. In no arena was the legacy of slavery more blatant than in education. In most southern states, it was a crime to teach a slave to read. Quote, we have as far as possible. This is a quote from, I believe, Henry Berry in the Virginia House of Delegates, 18, I think, 32. Let's see. Yeah, 1832. So we have as far as This is what the hijack is saying about you, Nagas, you, Shia, right? The Almec, the Tangu, the Blacks, the Swarthies, right? We have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light can enter. Because you have the deadly glance. It's deadly to them. Who says it's deadly? Who says the light, the look is deadly? The one with the deadly glance. It's the one with the glance, but in parentheses, they say deadly. It's the one with the sight. <laughs> to see, but in parentheses, it says paralyzing. That means that's how the weapon is. And back to the Marvel flow, the evil eye causes, it says concussive blast or force blast. It can create force fields. It can destroy force fields. It reminded me of this Hyboria situation with the Thothamon spell barrier. You know, was it depressed to use it to destroy Thoth spell barrier? <laughs> you know, uh, the gang is used to, you know, reestablish these particular boundaries and barriers, these force fields, right? I mean, like, think about uh, the firmament, you know, the par the partition of Columbus, you know, they he says uh, he, the, he broke down the partition, was able to cross the Atlantic Sea finally and all this. So before that, they couldn't get over here. We had some type of force field, some type of energy weapon, <laughs> So that they couldn't see us. They couldn't get over here. But 
you know, somehow they got this technology and this evil eye became the stellar rod because they attached it to this staff. And is it the same staff as the sapphire staff we read about in the book of uh, Yasher, J- Jashar, Jasher? Talking about Moses' staff as this blue sapphire staff or the sapphire staff that was plucked out the garden of Reuel or Jethro, just like uh, King Arthur and his sword was plucked out by one person could wield this sword, right? It had to be Arthur to take the sword out the rock. It had to be Moses to take the scepter or the sapphire stick out of the garden of Reuel. All the mighty men, the Kenites, the Midianites tried to do it. No one could do it but Moshe. This is a weapon, man, when you talk stellar rod. And in the book of Jasher, this same staff was a staff that was passed all from Abraham all the way through the patriarchs, all the way to get to the hands of Moses, which is the same staff that got to David, man, that got to Preston John, which is what they're calling the stellar rod or the evil eye technology so this is this is technology it's not just the fact that you see clearly it's also parallel with technology and it's deadly to them to have your sight is deadly to a slave master for the slave to read is deadly right to have the light is deadly yeah so in 1832 what do they do they have, as far as possible, <laughs> closed every avenue by which light can enter, my naga. Ain't they doing that when they spray the skies, blocking the sun? So this is happening on multiple fronts. Ain't that what happened when Skylar Batavis changes times and laws and pushes your time and history back at 1,800 years? Aren't they taking the light from your eyes so you don't see? Ain't this happening in iconoclasm when they're switching up these images and they're giving you a new image of a native, a new image of the Chinese, Japanese, a new image of the American. They're taking our light. So they have, as far as possible, close every avenue, not just one, two, three, every avenue, my night, by which light can enter. That's deep. A Virginia state legislator declared in 1832. Okay, remember. Okay. 1832. These are the years that Ishmael's migrated. <laughs> He's saying this as Mecca is set up. Muhammad in Morocco is set up. They hijacked the White River. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the same Mongol, uh, you know, Tangu, White River, but that's that's because you got to know Tangu is you. Florida boss. And then they took over Florida, right? Yep. 1832. <laughs> no major war, but suddenly we take Florida. Same Genghis Khan war, my naga, taking Tangu, right? Now they take Florida. Uh oh. Do we see clearly? And then you got 1832. And what's happening, man? The same naga, nigga, Cherokee, she, Tangu, swarthy wolves. So this is what's happening <clears throat> in the midst of all these Cherokee wars. And in the midst of these Ishmaelite migrations, Psalms 83, they're confederate against you and they confederate, confederate against me. Hosea 3, we are returning to seek the creator and Kandawi. They want to take the light out of Anaga's eyes. Psalms 83. It's the same declaration, right? Over and over again. Papu Bull, 1452. 
Psalms 83. And then you got this 1832 declaration by Henry Berry saying we have as far as possible to <laughs> extinguish their light. Sounds like they have uh, cut us off from being a nation because we don't see clearly. Sounds like they have consulted together, Monaga, with one consent. Yeah, man, uh, Ishmael migrating. <laughs> it's the definition of them making a covenant. So that you are no more in remembrance. 1785, they did that to take out <laughs> Shequa Magua, Shequa Magua, Shequa Magua, Cherokee. Same war, migration, <laughs> Illinois, White River, Yellow River, Mississippi River, Shishia. No more remembrance. Together with one consent that Israel may be no more remembered. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, man. Yeah. So that light can't enter. <laughs> so they don't have that look. So that they don't have that deadly glance. So that they don't have that dragon. We have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light can enter. If we can extinguish the capacity to see light, what does it mean? Our work would be completed. Don't that sound like Doom Die Versus 15, 1452? If we can invade, search out, capture, vanquish, subdue all Saracens, which are you, Like the army. <laughs> I'm just talking to Israel. They want us to do all Saracens. Yeah. We're talking Arab proper. Again. We ain't talking pretend. Because the Ishmaelite tribes were of non Arab stock, man. So they migrated to cut you off from being a nation. Because the Ishmaelites stopped. Were of non Arab stock. They are Mustarabs. They're not the real Katans. They are pretending. They are Arab pretenders not Arab proper. They are not genuine. They are musty. I'm talking Ishmael. They're not real Arab, which means a rabbi, which means the lawgivers, which is why they have to invade. Migration means invade. Search out see whatever to cut you off from being a nation so the name of israel is no longer in remembrance i'm talking israel i'm not because you talking israel i'm talking andrews because we talking russia russia Genghis khan invasion and all that right russia russia asia I'm talking roots because we talking roots. I'm talking Jerusalem because they talking Jerusalem. And they wanted to cut us off from being a nation. So the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance. So they cut out your light 
And if we could extinguish the capacity to see light, our world would be, or our work would be complete. Doom diverses, right? Subjugate, take their things so our descendants and our successors could have them, right? They would then be on the level with the beasts of the field, and we should be saved. They don't even know if they'll be saved then, man, because in truth, even when they got the even when they got the Negro to be a beast, that means you ain't got no no consciousness. You don't have no light, man. You don't have no dragon. You don't got no look. You don't got no breath. You don't see clearly no more. You don't have that look. It's no longer deadly. It's no longer fierce. It's no longer violent. Where's your dragon? You don't have that look. <laughs> they have to take away your look, right? They got to take away your breath. They have to take away your knowledge, your images. You got to do all these lies just to make you like them, right? So now you celebrate Christmas like them, right? Halloween like them, right? Now they got you on their level. Now they can hijack you on that 440 hertz, right? They took away your ancient love song, and they should be safe now. Because that's what it's all about, it's fear, it's fear. Because your look is deadly. Your look is paralyzed. You are fierce. You are violent. <laughs> if you are messed with, you can be very violent, right? So now they got us in the hood being violent towards each other. Now we in the hood acting like beasts of the field. And they're hoping they'll be safe now that they got us on this low level. But they don't feel so safe still. They should have left us in our regal capacity, right? They, they should have left us as regal nagas, as kings and queens, but they wanted the name of Israel to be no more in remembrance, which relegates you to being a beast like them. Now they call you goyim, right? Cattle, right? Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That means you're now a beast because you don't have no nation. They took counsel against the treasure ones. Because you're no longer treasure. Now they want you to be a beast. No light. Beast of the field. Do you see clearly? <laughs> we see clearly. God. Wow, right? <laughs> I mean, very, very wow. Let's pick it up here, man. Let's talk a little Tangu. Tandu. Oh, how wow. Hey, hey, hey. Marco. <laughs> Polo. Page 26. Let's get it, man. Our traveler says that Tandu has been the seat of Hong Kong sovereignty. He has already said that it had been the scene of his final defeat. So again, Hong Kong is Wong Khan. Hong is the Wong is the king and the Khan is the priest. So, you know, Polo's talking about Tan Duke as the seat of the priest king sovereignty. Prester John. Sovereignty. He's already said that it had been the scene of his final defeat. So when they talk Tan Duke. It's about to get real clear, man. <laughs> We're just talking about here. America. Connected with the Strait of Ania and Quivera. Quivera is Ibera, Iber, Iberia. So anytime we talk China, <laughs> they keep talking Chinese. We can pinpoint it now. We can say, I, right, we know that Kapangu. We know that the Chinese sell upon this ocean. We know that this is a map of America showing a, uh, King Henry VII, right? This is Cathay spelled with a C, a Q, or a K. This is Ptolemy's India. This is China <laughs> connected with Florida. So you're going to 
really get a clear picture of this cat day. Let's go quickly, man. <laughs> Let's get it, man. So the Tanduk is the Americas, the Chinese is the Americas. And the final defeat of Preston John, you know what I'm saying? Just like we got out the swords of the East, happened in Tangu. And some would spell it the T-A-N-G-U-T or T-E-N-D-U-C. But look how they interchange these things. He tells us that it was still the residents of his descendants in the reduced state. Reduced state again, just like the Shishida, you know what I'm saying? They're in this decline. They're in this declining state, just like the so-called natives here, you know what I'm saying? Once we are getting invaded, we know we're in a decline state. There's no way they took us in our, you know, healthiest and, and, and most cold-keeping state, you know what I mean? So... To the last piece of information, he could speak as a witness, and he is cooperated by other evidence. But the second statement we have seen to be almost certainly erroneous about the first, we cannot speak positively. Okay. Club Proth pointing out the true position of Tandu. All right, we're talking about pointing out the true position of Tandu in the vicinity of the great northern bend of the Hoa Ho. And count the HUAs and HU, HWAs. Hua plays heavy in the Chinese flow, the Mongol flow, all that. In the native flow, the HUA, the HUE, HUI, you know, all this stuff. The UA, the OAs, we got this before. So Hua is everywhere. In the Hebrew root flow, we already know. And we're talking breath and security. Quoting Chinese authorities to show that Deante or Deante Kun was the name of a district or group of towns to the north of that bend, a name which he supposes to be the original of Polo's Tandu. Hmm, they're looking for the original. The general position entirely agrees with Marco's indications. It lies on his way eastward from Tangu. Now we're talking T A N G U T, right? <laughs> okay, Florida. Tagu and disappearing, man. We just talking North America, man. So whether we're talking T A N G U T, we know we're talking about you and me. <laughs> we're talking um uh T E N D U C <laughs> we know we're talking about you and me. All this has to do with America, man. We got you surrounded, man. man the truth got us surrounded, man. So, con con. Con con. So, this general position in Greece. Uh, so, they, they're just trying to figure out the origin of the name. We getting a drop out of this because, you know, we putting the babies back there. You know, Humpty Dumpty back together again. We're getting the babies out the bathwater. The, the general position entirely agrees with Marco's indications. It lies on its way east from, from Tangu towards Kaganor and Shangtu, which or while in a latter passage he speaks of the Kara Mora. Kara Mora. <laughs> I'm just surfing away, man. This moron. We already know the car is the car, right? We we get that by now. The C A R A is the K A R A, is the Q A R A, meaning black, melanated, copper color, not black. You know, this is what it means. So, um, and when we see the car up cut tie, we know it's still talking about cafe. Now, the moron. This reminds me of the Marana, like the Mar. Anon or Mar Anion. And what's the Mar Anon? And what's the Mar Anion? <laughs> That's when you have to look up the Amazon. So we've been talking about these longest rivers, right? We've just been digging on it, right? So Amazon, so you know, second longest river system, right? Originally called the Mar Anon. Or the Mora. Or the Mora. <laughs> so, we's getting all this drop and connecting it right here in America. And it feels so good. Don't you agree? Now we're talking car. 
car more or add more or you know uh, the Amazon or the Marina car Morana. <laughs> Let's go. Having too much fun. That's a victory lap. To this car, Moran. <laughs> or the Morana. Or the Hawan. And its lower course as coming from the lands of Preston John. Body bad, right? Because we connected it already with America. We already connected Preston John with America. So we didn't, you know, that dissected this, man. And itty bitty bits and bits and pieces man done the recon done the work put the hours in you know uh magnifying you know what i'm saying these particular portions digging on it and then zooming back out and zooming back in right so man it's just easy work right the hawas are everywhere the caras are everywhere we've been talking about the shikara shikora like the tupac shikor <laughs> you don't think big mama alfina shikor no the indigenous name of Carolinas is Shakara. You don't think she knows and she's born in North Carolina, man? But she knows about Tupac and Meru and the Inca flow <laughs> and the Peru flow. But she don't know what's happening in the Carolinas where she's born in. She don't know about the Shakar. <laughs> you don't think they got nothing to do with the title Shakar? The Shakara? We're going to get back on the Shakara, man, because it plays heavy. They're connecting Shakara with the land of Presser John and the Carolinas, man. We're connecting the Carolinas with the car and the car Katai, right? <laughs> so now they're saying it's coming from the lands of Presser John, right? Okay. Okay. Right. Because this puts us dang smack right there the exact same orientation as the British Museum would put <laughs> in the 1530s right? where this would be the Strait of Antioch right, right in the middle connecting Asia Major, Asia Minor it's only minor and major based on the players man <laughs> based on the vortex and this is why Prester John is right here in Antioch right <laughs> in Quivera right here you know holding up the Antioch Regnum holding up the Quivera Regnum the kingdoms in America man yeah coming from the lands of Preston John <laughs> you cross the Antioch or the Mara Ana <laughs> or the you know Tanduk flow right so this is going to connect you with the Preston on both sides of the strait which is why Marco Polo is making it clear, giving you orientation pies and orientation enchiladas, man. Coming from the lands of Preston John means what? That's how you get to the roots. Ain't all this Russia? Ain't all this Russia? And who are the roots? All right, we see clear. <laughs> who are the roots? This is what Russia's named after, right? But they're still Israel, huh? So it's all one land connected, and these are the Saracens. We talk, talked about the Arabs and the Arabi, you know, Arabi propers, right? The Saracens, Doom Diversers. This is what they wanted to take down, man. The kingdom here, the kingdom there, the kingdom everywhere, whatsoever. To place your kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, and all that, and possess them and re reduce you to perpetual slavery. And apply all your stuff to their successors. Apply it to their successors. <laughs> the same way they came. Convert or die. To you Americans, man. And they took the title Khan. Which means priest. In Hebrew. And they applied all your copper colored things. Because you were just found here. Not brought here. Descendants. Descendants sounds a lot like successors. And they stole your kingdoms, God. <laughs> they stole our kingdoms, man. 
This is what they finding coming from the lands of Preston John. Marco Polo and Pathier find se severe fault with Club Pro's identification of the name Tango with Tiante of the Chinese, of the Chinese, of the Chinese that sell upon this ocean. Right by Florida. This is a map of America. Yeah. Okay. So these Chinese belong to a city which had been destroyed 300 years before, while he himself will have the name to be a corruption of Tak Tung. The latter is still the name of a city in Fu of northern Shanxi, but in Mongol time, its circle of administration extended beyond the Chinese wall. And embraced territory on the left of Hawaho, being in fact the first Lu or circle entered on leaving Tangu. <laughs> and therefore, Pathier urges the kingdom of Tandu of our text. I find it hard to believe that Marco could get no clearer to Tahun than in the form of Tandu or Tandu. The origin of the last may have been some Mongol name not recovered, but it is at least conceivable that a name based on the old Tiang Kun might have been retained among the Tatars from whom and not from the Chinese but who took his nomenclature. The Ante had been according to Pathier's own quotations the military post of Tahun Klapro cites a Chinese author of the Mongol era who describes the Hua Ho as passing through the territory of ancient Chinese city of Tiante and Pathir's own quotation from the modern imperial geography seems to imply that a place in that territory was recently known as Fung Kao Dan Kung. <laughs> I'm trying folks. Let's go. Popping off. <laughs> it's just the intro. <laughs> Literally it's just the intro. <laughs> In the absence of precise indications, it is reasonable to suppose that the plain of Tandu, with its numerous towns and villages, was the extensive and well-cultivated plain which stretches from the Hoang Ho past the city of Kuku Kata. Whoa, does that sound like Kuku Ka? <laughs> oh, Kata, Kata, does that sound like uh, Jaktan Kata? Because Jogtan, the son of Eber, is also known as Katan. I'm just talking Katan, right? Because they talking Katan. And the Katan is the Katan. And the Katan is the Katan. And that's why it's on the map of India Superior, CA. T A Y O K T O. The R is Regnum, right? Kingdom. This is Cathay. They have it again on the map that was shown to King Henry the Seventh, right? Spell it out. C A T H A Y. <laughs> so, C A T H A Y. That's where you get Catherine and Kathy, right? Shout out to my uh, my mama dropped Kathy, right? So. Hey, Cathay, they know you in China, boss. This is America. <laughs> this is Cathay, and this is Qatar, and this is <laughs> Joktan Qatar. And again, Joktan Qatar is the leader of these Arab propers, man. Because there's a proper and there's a pretender like Ishmael and them who are of non-Arab stock, originally non-Arab, until they have to intermarry with genuine Arabs. So that's when they intermarry with our women so that they can get genuine land rights. And they can say, yeah, well, my grandma, my great-grandma uh, owned this land, but, you know, she got it, you know what I'm saying, you, you got it by unlawful means, you know what I'm saying, you, you stole that woman forced her into the situation just so you can intermarry and be genuine because other than that you are pretending to be Arabs I'm talking to Ishmael because Ishmael is migrating and 
damn, I can't make the time frame up. It's the same time as the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with Morocco and the corporation teaming up against the Kumse and the tribes. Teaming up to get the White River flow. Because the White River flow plays heavy, right? Because the White River flow, flow was the Yellow River. And before it got all yellowy, and they started calling it Murky and Muddy River, right? We got that connected with the Mississippi, right? It's just the White River, boss. It's just the White River. And that's the Shishia flow. That's the, you know, Mongol flow. But the Shia is the Tangu, the Swarthy, the T. The Shia is the Ahmed Khan. And this is the White River. And they had to hijack the stream. Would they do dam up the place? To rock with their Muhammad, to rock with their Morocco, to rock with their more ish science. I'm not talking Mongo ish, I'm not talking great ish, and I'm not talking more ish, I'm talking more. I want more, right? We have more when we are united with Hawa. But Ishmael's migrating. 1785. Seventeen eighty five is a very difficult year for us. First twenty years, it's all Shikramago, man. It's all Shikramago, man. Huh? <laughs> it's all the ones that separated from these greater bodies of Cherokees. Come on, drop. Get them drop. <laughs> We separated from these hijacks, man. We didn't want to make treaties of peace and friendship with these hijacks, man. So the Cherokee broke off, man, with Dragon Canoe and said, man, we out of here, boss. We going to be where X marks the spot. We going to rock with X mark the spot. We going to rock with Big Mama. Because Big Mama's standing where the paths meet she stands where X marks the spot where the paths meet we rocking with the Shikamagwa we talking Alabama we talking all Abba Ama El Abba Ama <laughs> yeah yeah they making treaties and migrating man while we at war boss this ain't cool man huh they get that Fort Wayne Treaty, man. They start getting that free land. They start getting that free land. This ain't cool. This ain't cool, right? <laughs> of Naga land, Illinois and Indiana. This ain't cool, right? <laughs> Illinois and Indiana, right? <laughs> and they put their harmonics on us, man. And now we're in the Ice Age. But we just talking Genghis Khan. What does a damn Ice Age have to do with Genghis Khan? What does a damn Ice Age that's happening at the same damn time that they're migrating? 1700s. What does it have to do with the massacres of Genghis Khan? And the emerging epidemics, uh, plagues, and disease upon European contact. That was right after they found us here, right? Okay. That was right after they made their treaties of peace and friendship and came to subdue all Saracen. That was after they came to invade, vanquish, you know what I mean? Capture. Subdue all Saracens. <laughs> or Arab propers. Because <laughs> this is a Saracens' hand. Arab tribe, right? <laughs> but 
but they're going to give you a half truth and I'm going to let you know this Arab proper and Arab pretending so the Arab is the rabbi which is a lawgiver cold keeper and Ishmael is still migrating still in land causing a damn I say let's get it Hey man, y'all rocking, man. Y'all still here rocking with a con, man. Go ahead and, uh, man, go ahead and throw a con three volcanoes. You know, throw throw a con three volcano emojis in the comments, man. For for a con's con day, man. You know, <laughs> I ain't really big on, on birthdays and con, you know. I call them con days, man. I, I kick back and reflect, man, and just be grateful. But this was my my present to myself man this is my sixth time recording <laughs> i've tried every software i kept going i kept doing it like it's the first time man it don't feel like it's the sixth time to do it <laughs> over 24 hours damn near recording time and i come back stronger every time man and I'm, I'm learning more as i read this over and over again so they only making me stronger but i'm here man and i'm celebrating this with y'all in real time right now so you know just Throw a con, a few volcanoes, man. Just let me know you popping off. And let me know I should, you know, keep the water flowing and keep popping off, man. I want to see some volcanoes, man. I want to see some some water flowing, man. Just, you know, throw a con some Ahab for my con day, man. And happy con day to all my cons, man. <laughs> we up, man. So, we talking cut time. We talking jock time, man. We surfing away. They're trying to figure out the origin of this word Tanduk we know we talking America now called by the Chinese Kawa Hua so this Katan is now called Hua Hua <laughs> Kai but which is known to them in the Middle Ages as Sing Kau and to which we find the Ken Emperor of Northern China sending an envoy in 1210 to demand tribute from Genghis this is why they mad because Genghis was paying tribute to the Preston. The city is still an important Martin Center in Lamedic Buddhism, being a, re a residence of Kutu Kutu, or personages combining the characters of Cardinal and voluntarily reincarnate saint. He's voluntarily reincarnate, as well as the site of five great convents and 15 smaller ones. Gerbala notes that Kuku Katan Cathay had been a place of great trade and population during the Mongol or the Great One. Mongol means great. The Great One Dynasty. So the following evidence shows I think that we must look for the city of Tanduk to Tao Kiin Toto Kiin called Toktu to, Tokto. Sound like Tokyo. By the Mongols, Mr. Rock Hill passed through this place uh, and five leagues south of it reached on the Yellow River, which is the White River. So think about the White River, right? Ko Kaho in Chinese or Dugas, Duge in Mongol. Gerbalan speaks of Toto. Man, it's the Wizard of Oz, man. <laughs> the Yellow Big Road on the Yellow River, man. Gerbalan speaks of Toto in his sixth voyage in Tartary. Mr. Rock Hill adds that he cannot but think that yo, you overlooked the existence of Tokto when he identifies Kawahawa Kiang with Tandu. Tao Kiang is two days march west of Kawahawa Kiang. On the lowest hill behind this place are the ruins of a large camp. Orc Kiang, Orc, Orc Al, <laughs> in all likelihood the site of the old town. And a lot of these old towns, especially since we're talking about the White River, a lot of these old towns were flooded, right? Remember, Naga City's underwater. Understanding the White River is the Yellow River. What's it got to do with the Nile or the Nahal or the Great or the Mississippi flow? And how many towns were, Naga Cities were, you know, damn, dammed up and sunk and flooded all throughout the Mississippi flow, especially Tennessee and all that, right? So, 
We need to get back into these damn dabs, man. Let, let's not let our foot off the neck bone of Hijack City. Mm-hmm. Then it cuts off here, man. But um Yeah, man, y'all got it, y'all got it. Let's keep going. You see what we getting at. Tandu, Tangu. Putting that into Yandex is always a good time, man. Of course, they got the Marco Polo flow. <laughs> uh, how Presta John marched to meet Genghis. So all of it connects, really, this meeting point of Genghis Khan and King David Presta John, man. And this is all about America, which is dope. Because it lets you know that these 1200 Dark Ages was all about America. That this... Uh, Papu Boo Doom Diverses subjugate these Saracens and get these kingdoms is all about America, right? So it's happening right on the hills of each other. This 1200s, 1300s leads right into the 1400s, 1452, 1492. Charles V still rocking in the black ass King Charles in the 1500s, you know what I'm saying? All and on up. And then you got the Shikamaga Wars in the 1700s, right? The Cherokee Boy, all this Indian Wars. And then, what, you born in the 1900s, nigga? You know what I'm saying? So, what's <laughs> what's not connected about this to you? This is your story. We, we don't have a lot of gaps once we fill in, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, all the water, man, all the flow. You know, they they dammed up the place. We, we keeping the water flowing. And that's connecting all these gaps. And, you know what I'm saying? All this flow for, for us. So, what else we got, man? Uh, Rob Schultz Museum concerning the prophets of Tandu and the descendants of Preston John. It's all about the descendants of King David. And this is what they don't want you to know you are. They want you to think you did some Africa off a of slave ship. They don't want you to know you are descendants of the Khan. Nah, nah, nah. That's what they don't want you to know. Sabbath truth. Sabbath. <laughs> SabbathTruth.com. The name President John is connected with the Great Revolution. Hey, you know, that's something right here. Did you know? When we talk President John, we in part 146 because we're talking revolution. And revolution means change, a complete change, an absolute change. So waking up, returning like Hosea 3, keeping the code, and searching for King David, Kandawi is a catalyst in great change. It's a major influencer in you understanding your kingdom again. The one that they stole, right? Your kingdom, dukedom, principalities were stolen. You waking up to these facts, right? You becoming aware creates a great revolution. You say, what? Preston John King David was not in the BCs. It was just happening like a couple hundred years before Columbus got here how would you know what's the difference between 200 years and 1200 years right it seems so disconnected but it really ain't because there's a big difference if you say all this is happening in the BC's and nothing happened for the last 2000 years or so thousand years so you know, when you know it just happened, man, it's like, yo, this ain't even been that long, man. It's been a string of events. We can connect the string of events. Descendants of Preston John, let's see what they got here. Hey, Todd Battle dropped this legend and its sources in our drop library. Look out for the new drop library. A lot of drop happening behind the scenes, building it back up, my naga. But yeah, Tangu is actually the name of a people. Not just a place. Not just a place. But this confusion on Marco's part comes to permeate many of the early modern sources that later, later, or yeah, later attempted to unravel Preston John's origin. So they try to figure out the origin of the Khan. The origin of the Khan. They try to figure it out. The origin of the Imperato of Abyssinios, Abyssinia, the word that is native, the native word for Ethiopia, the mixed multitude, 
of Nagaville. Prince of John Khan of the Three Indians, King Dawi. You think it's play play? So we understand Tangu are the Swarthy Almec Nagas. <laughs> it's not just a place, it's a people, you know what I mean? Right, right. Cathay and the way thither. Yeah. This entirely agrees with the indications of Polo who describes Tandu between the province of Tangu. <laughs> Ping Pao. Who in another passage speaks of the Karamoran again, but this time they spell it with a K. So again, it could be C's, it could be K's, it could be Q's when they talk Kar. Wang Ho and its lower course is coming from the lands of Preston China again. So, and again, we're just talking Cathay. So, you, now you understand. You can't talk Cathay without talking Preston John or the Grand Khan, which is why you see this is the Great Khan of China, right? But the China is the Khan. And the Cathay, C A T H A Y, is the Katan. Is the Katan. But it's definitely America. <laughs> it's definitely connected with Florida and there, right? Mexico and there. It's a lot of great drop. I can't make this stuff up. Presser is everywhere, right? But you have to know what you're looking for when you start putting in keywords like Tan Duke, <laughs> Tan Goo, and Presser John. Man, they're going to bring you to a specific spot, right? This this uh, meeting, you know what I'm saying, between him and Genghis Khan, this pivotal point, and, you know, the. The surge of, you know what I'm saying, like the power, um, really like who's holding the power, you know what I'm saying, who's who's going to hold the power of all of Tartary, who's going to hold the power of all of America, the three Indians, you know what I'm saying, like this is the pivot point, and just like the Bible, <laughs> just like the stories of our, you know, our prophets are telling us, you know, we had to fall, like it was our time to fall. Right, Nebuchadnezzar had to come and lead out these nobles, right? Because, you know, it was time for for Babylon, man. Because it was so much idolatry. You know, we were falling off, man. They broke the partition, right? <laughs> we're gonna talk force fields. Did Prestidon have the power to create force fields? Destroy force fields. We're going to talk evil eye when the Marvel talks about this energy weapon called the evil eye that can create concussive blasts, create force fields. This thing can time, you know, uh, time travel and all that, right? And then it turned into a staff because he put it on his staff and it became the stellar rod. And this is what Kang is rocking with in the Marvel flow. I mean, man, we really got to dig on. We really gotta dig on these tangs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've been seeing tangs all over the place now. You know, I've never seen so much tangs around me, man. It's validation. All this connects with the con, man. The on con, again the wall, it's still the on. So it's W A and G. They have it as a A and G. There we go. Kingdom of Tanduk. A-U-N-G on <laughs> now you know for sure when you see in that we talking King Kang <laughs> so yeah Gang is kind of like <laughs> he wanted the con so bad man um, you know the Marvel with the evil eye like Kang now has the time travel flow you know but he got it initially from the con he got everything from the con he got everything from the press to and they can't make Genghis Khan, or they can't make Presser John no bad guy, Marvel. Because, you know what I mean? that 
that's against the sauce, man. You can't <laughs> go against David like that. Even in Christianity, they got to call JC son of David. Like, you can't go against David, right? But you can be slick and, and, and you know what I mean, try to, you know, hijack and, and you know what I mean? So that's what that's what's happening, you know what I mean? With the Avenger flow especially, they don't make the Prester movie per se because where are you going to put them? All right, you, you can't make Prester a bad guy, and you can't make the Avengers necessarily bad because they're supposed to be the good guys. But in the Marvel, Prester's the one going against the Avengers. He's going against Thunderstrike and them Iron Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they don't have a place without making the Avengers look bad. You know what I mean? Or Prester look bad. You know, <laughs> Avengers got to look good, so they made Kang or Kang is kind of bad guy, and he got the timelines and all that. But they're not going to do the Prester flow. Sabrazian.org of Tanduk that Preston had the seat of his government when he ruled over the Tartars. Again, this is why they mad. Because Genghis wanted that seat. He wanted to sit in the big boy seat. He wanted to rule over Tartaria. Tartaria is a swarthy situation. I'm going to show you that picture again. Black Genghis Khan. <laughs> it's a swarthy situation. And his heirs still abide there again. His descendants still abide there in Tandu. Is it true? Hmm. Are the descendants of Genghis, or <laughs> we know the descendants of Genghis, you know what I'm saying? I think the descendants of Genghis are still pushing the line in a lot of these type of boule situations, you know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of these uh, high society nuggets, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of them connect, you know, with this uh, nobility, royal, you know, line. But at the same point, you know, you got air propers and air pretenders, and you got pretending royals, you know what I'm saying? The descendants of Preston John are in these neighborhoods, <laughs> right? We in these hoods. We don't know who we are, right? We we think, you know, we from Africa, public school, this and you know, all this stuff. So, you know, we forgot about our ancient love song. We've been in solitary so long without a king. <laughs> we forgot. And when they mention Tandu and Kingdom and America, right? <laughs> are the descendants of Preston John still here? Do you see clear? Yeah. So they got a lot of dot popping up. Rise and fall of Tartaria. Again, this Tartary situation. Who's going to be the Khan, right? Who, who is the born Khan, right? Who's the first born, right? Who got the covenant with Hawa, Psalm 89? The, the covenant is with Dawi, first born bond. Genghis ain't in that, but Genghis want to be in that. He want to marry Preston John's daughters and be intermarry and become a genuine Arab, right? A genuine uh, rabbi, a genuine Khan, right? The origin story, original story of Preston John seems to have been based on a distorted report. How do you know? Sounds like some context. Sounds like some hater read, man. <laughs> of the defeat of the Seljuk Sultan Sanjar, 1141 by the Karakata. Here we go again. This time they spelled the car with a Q instead of a C or instead of a K. And this time you got the Katai, which is the Cathay, right? Spell it out. K-H-I-T-A-I, right? Cathay. So with a C or a K, instead of the K-H-I, you have the C-A-T-H-A-Y. So turn that to an I, turn that to a K, it's still the Katai. And this is why they say that these Andrews are first found in Cathay, or they call it Cadness. <laughs> Being slick. We know we're just talking Cathay, because we know when we talk these Andrews, we know we're talking Israel, one, right? And we talk to these Andrews, <laughs> we know we're talking about Jerusalem.
we're talking Judah, we're talking Israel, we're talking the kings of Jerusalem. So multiple witness letting God know that we're talking about the promised land, we talk America, we're talking lost tribes of Israel, we're talking America, right? <laughs> lost tribes of Andros. And the Andros, right, connects the Kiev or the land of Rus to everything. Because it all is everything. You got uh, the Kiev on Rus, right? The land of Rus. Princess of Rus, Ross, lived in Kiev, Russia. Until the Mongol hordes invaded my Naki. <laughs> so the same thing happened with the, the Shashia, Western Shia, the Almec, the Tangu being invaded by these Genghis Khan Mongols, right? Because he doesn't represent all the great ones. He has his own new line of Mongols, right? The new Mongols, right? So this new order of Mongols is invading not just the Shi, but the Rus. That's letting you know it's all the same truth man it's all happening they're all on the same squad on squad on and this ruse right is is all of russia and russia's huge right <laughs> russia's huge and british museum map letting you know like all of this will be russia right <laughs> all this is land of ruse connected with president john right in your face Right in the face, bone. Let me see a map of Russia, man. I want to put this in perspective of how big, how large this territory is, man. It's the biggest, it's the largest. When you talk the three Indians. Man, <laughs> let's start. Let's start right here, man. <laughs> all right, you see everything mapped out. We see all these names, and look at this whole territory, and it's just Russia, right? <laughs> all this is just Russia, and this would be the Strait of Antioch, where I connected back with the Americas, my the Pacific Ocean, right? So. All this is Russia. <laughs> Come on, boss. If Nagas is ruling all this, right? If the An Rus of Israel is ruling all this of Russia, if this is all Nagaville, like, you know, Putin is putting out, man, all these uh, ancient paintings of all these Nagas and priests and stuff like that, all these Nagas, Managa like, <laughs> all this is Nagaville? If all this is Nagaville, then all this is Nagaville. Including this China over there and all that too. <laughs> Sweden and Finland. What did Benjamin Franklin say? All of it is swarthy. This is what he's talking about. These are swarthy Nagas. These are the Shi. These are the Tangu. These are the Rus. This is Israel, my Naga. This is you. This is the lost tribe of Anros. This is the land of Rus. Anros of Phoenicia, Russia, and race of Sweden. Anders of Sweden, Denmark, Hungary, Italy, France, Greece. What? That looks like everything, boss. So Genghis Khan is rolling up invading Israel the three Indians you don't we didn't get the big picture when we got um, whatever our our preacher was trying to give us <laughs> about Israel right we didn't understand that to be King David to be the king of Judah to be the king of Israel is to be the king of the world is to be the firstborn bond right somehow that slipped over our head bone. I'm here to get our head bone back. <laughs> Mama say, he rock with me, with the past me. <laughs> hey, I'm a king maker. 
Mama said the riches are mine, right? Fine gold. I'm the first, Mama said. I'm the first of his works. By me, King's reign. <laughs> I am understanding power is mine. Do you understand? Let's go to Psalms. I just need you to understand. <laughs> Overstand. That they are confederate because you have it all. They consult together. They make a covenant. All these hijacks because you got it all. Allah gave you the world, you treasured ones. So they said, let's cut them off of being a nation. We got to work together. They got to not know how big Israel is. They got to think it's over there in the Middle East, like, you know. <laughs> and, you know, hey, I've told my people, all our family, man, that are affected by all these proxy wars and puppet show. It's a puppet show, but we know we got innocent um, people that they sacrifice, man. And, you know, I just pray for the families of all those affected, for real, for real. You know, Israel's much bigger than you think. <laughs> for real, you know what I mean? And um, they're confederate because they're confederate against the firstborn. Like, they hate Hoa. They hate Hoa. They that hate you have lifted up you. The head, they hold crafty converse against your people. They hate Hawa and they hate the people of Hawa. Huh? Psalms 89, pull it up, man. Pull up your translation. Because, <laughs> you know, in this JPS uh, Tanakh 1970, <laughs> we know that. The covenant, the real covenant, is with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant, not JC, not Muhammad. Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37, one shepherd, David, Hosea 3, search for a wine, David, Jeremiah 30. <laughs> you returning and searching for the creator in David, Jeremiah 30, verse 9. We got it for So, multiple witnesses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, David. <laughs> Letting you know. There's even a, um, in the Qumran scrolls, uh, something called the prophecy of Joshua, where Joshua is prophesying about David's return. Another witness. Whom I will raise up unto you. Jeremiah 30 said, David will be raised up again. Another witness. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the firstborn, my not. I will appoint him firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. I need you to let it set in. You don't get no higher than Dawi. The title, the Naga, <laughs> the firstborn. It's not JC. You, there's no higher king. Therefore, you understand there's no higher land. Like, it's all Dawi. Whether you're talking Rusha here or the land of Rusha there, the Asian major here and Asian minor here, you're still talking the same tribe of Israel. You're still talking the same roots. This is what they hid from us. <laughs> this is why we lost, right? But now we found. Now we found. Let's keep going. Wow. Intergalactic, infogalactic. Shout out to infogalactic. You know, I'm just still digging on this Tangu connection there. Bringing it into the Boz Mills. You gotta read on that. Apparently, they had, you know, a big role in the Turkic Kagane. You know, they, they were factors in the 6th century. Now, the Bosmos appear to be the Argons. <laughs> we love the natural by law. The Archons, because the G's and C's are interchangeable. <laughs> Mentioned by Marco Polo. Are we still talking Marco Polo? In a country called Tanduk, probably Tangu. <laughs> so, again, whether we talk about Tangu over there or Tanduk over here, it's still America. 
and we still see clear. These are interchangeable, Manaya. These are interchangeable. Whether we talking Tangu or Tandu, we're talking something that is 100% about America and they can't take it away. They can't hide it. They can't, you know what I'm saying? You know, pull the wool, you know what I mean? Or the, the, the veil over our eyes anymore, man. They, they don't want to talk about it. What we talking about? We talking Tandu. Since y'all don't teach us this in black history, man. <laughs> These are the Swarthies, Tangus of people. It's not just a kingdom. These are people, swarthy nuggets. What are you saying, man? The copper color race is found here. Connected to copper race. Copper color race is found right there. It's still America. This is America. This is America. And Columbus was lost. Nah, he came to India. Superior. Come, come, let's go. Swords of the East. Let's dig on some Swords of the East, man. But first, who were the Tango, right? So, we got a piece of this already. We know we're talking about a people. We know we're talking about a kingdom. Same thing with the Kokora. Say it's a tribe and it's a kingdom. <laughs> they keep bringing us to the Tang Dynasty. The Shashir. Passing into 1227, right? This is the Genghis Khan takeover. The Shishia was powerful enough to levy a heavy tribute on the Song Dynasty. So, just like in the letter of Prince John, he says, All these kings, these dukes are paying tribute to me. 72 kings serve me in my court. What are you talking about? He's more than a king, man. This is the Khan. This is the, you know what I'm saying? Priest Khan. This is the Preston, man. So, nonetheless, the Tangus were, were helpful that in the 630s the Tang Empire so helpful that in the 630s the Tang Emperor Li Shimin called the Zangun Empire bestowed his family name Li on the Tangu's leader's family why would he do that if the Tang weren't tribed up already with the Tangu why would he give him his family name who just gives away their family name to a hijack right so over the centuries, however, the Han dynasties, which we just got the Hans, are the Hawa, <laughs> are the Hawa Shia, or the Hawa people, forced to holiday further east, out the reach of the Mongols and the Gur, the Gur, the Gur Chans, all right? And again, man, you know, it's such a hard hit, man, because, come on, you saying we got a map that got the Tangu and the Manku? Cool. You telling me the G's and C's are interchangeable? Come huh? So the Mongu becomes the Mangi Ragnar with the Tango. Next to Florida, Mexico, and China and Cathay, right? India Superior. So these are kingdoms. The G's and C's are interchangeable in the E Buru. Hey, this is my Conde, man, and my Conde gift to the tribe, man, because I'm going to share my conde with y'all, man. It's <sighs> maximum pop-offness, man. I want this I want this to be the blueprint. I want, when they see 146, and they realize, man, man Con, Con recorded this six, seven times, man. <laughs> like, you know, I, I want them to know that it's okay to keep the water flowing. Don't get frustrated. Uh, to, to keep the water flowing means, like, even when there's a blockage, you know what I'm saying, the water's always going to find a way, you know what I'm saying, the water's always going to find a way, man, and, you know what I mean, like, for my kind day, I just want to kick back and have the most popping, pop off in this Presser John of all time, you know what I mean, to get all this information, vibration culminated, you know what I mean, and just to a great, a great flow, a great lesson, a great, a great uh, conversation, with my cons, man, and the fact that you can share this 146 like this, it's taking years to accumulate this amount of drop and understanding. We have to be so patient that we can kick it like this and just have fun with it and have a victory lap. Just shows a lot about us, man. 
the G's and the C's <laughs> are interchangeable. So when they put the manku on it with the C, it started with the G, the sound, the G. And that's why they took it back to the root right here with the G and put the mangi. And it's crazy, boss. Who were the Tangu, right? Because the Tangu culture was quite similar to others on the Northern States. People like the Ugars, the Jurchin, Mangu, indicating that the Tangu had lived in the area for some time. In fact, some Tangu clans were nomadic, while others were sedentary. They chilling there. So 147, man, I think we got to do a deep dive. You know what I'm saying? Rocking with these, uh, so the tan duke, tan goo, press the John flow connects everywhere, man. You know, <laughs> the foolish story of press the John, man, they be hate, man, they be hate. <laughs> Either he's a myth or it's just some foolish thing or, you know, it's everything, right? <laughs> because Genghis is meeting Preston. This is where it's all happening. This is where it's all happening. This is where the anion is connecting with the flow of the con. The land of prestige. And it's everywhere. Marco Polo is talking about prestige John being Genghis Khan, man. Everyone's talking about the descendants of prestige John. Are you? I mean, that's why it just made so much sense. That these are the copper color races found here. The descendants play heavy, the remnant plays heavy, right? <laughs> they know that this Mashiach flow is coming right out of America, man. Sabbath true, the name uh Prince John is connected to great revolution. Like right? so you popping off on this is being prophesied, it's being connected to you waking up. Seeking the Creator, right? And Kandawi. Was it saying Jeremiah 30? Right? After you go through your time of trouble, Jacob, out of it you shall be saved, Jacob. Mm, shall come to pass in that day, says Hawa, that Hawa will break his yoke from off your neck, that Hawa will free you, burst your bands, that the strangers will no more make you their slaves. That we will serve the Creator and David, our King. That's why we can connect it <laughs> with the Psalms 89 flow. We can connect it with the firstborn bond flow. We, we can understand what's happening now. We can connect it to the Hosea 3s, right? <laughs> that we're going to, you know, be. You know, brought out of this captivity again that David will be raised up again whom I will raise up unto you so don't be dismayed stop being afraid it says a why right I will save you who JC no Hawa. the creator saves us the creator is our savior and our seed so we're talking descendants of Pastor John, Priest King, Jacob, you could be quiet and at ease because nobody's going to make you afraid because I am with you, says Hawa, to save you and make a full end of the nations where I have scattered you, but I will not make an end of you, but I will correct you in measure. <laughs> I will say, I will say. So we're getting cold like Hosea 3. This is the formula. I ain't got to reinvent it. It's right here. But these Christians, theology schools, they ain't going to teach us the formula. They're going to say, J Jesus is going to be raised. <laughs> but they're going to still call him son of David, right? <laughs> no. I will raise up unto them David their king, like Ezekiel 37. Once the flock is in cold, right, then we get our shepherd. There's only one shepherd, Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 34. Oh, 
Hosea know that when we return after being a harlot, right, after being in solitary many days without a king, when we return, we seek the creator first. That's rule number one. M-H-O-E, keep the code. Because right? if you don't have that, you don't have David, you ain't got your things, you ain't got your your staff, your gold, your kingdom, you ain't got you ain't got nothing. You got no breath, you got no security. You need big mama, right? <laughs> what did mama say? By me kings reign, princes decree. I am understanding and power is mine. You ain't getting around this. You need big mama. Big mama standing where the paths meet. That sounds like X is marking the spot but the Andrews know wisdom is the conqueror of fortune big mama's house right the Andrews know where the paths meet <laughs> is where the paths meet I'm just talking about the kings of Jerusalem we're just talking about Kiev and Rus land in Russia, land in Russia, and Russia, Malaga, Russia's everywhere. We're going to dig on the map of Russia, man. matter of fact. Matter of fact, man. Because this ain't no play play. Russia, right? Map. How big is this thing? <laughs> I can't make this thing up. God damn, I mean, everything's labeled, but look at Russia. <laughs> it's the whole damn thing. And this is where the Strait of Antion would be connected to the Americas over here. <laughs> the same as the Strait of Antion connected here. Like that here. The same as it has in the British Museum with President John. Over the Antion, 1530. Right there. But all this is Russia, man. All this is Rus. These are the three Indians. It's the same king connected to it all. Of Anion, of America, of Tandu, of the Rus, of Russia, Russia. This is why you're getting the land of Rus, princes of Rus. And they live in Kiev, Russia, until the Mongol hordes or Genghis Khan invaded. So they were invaded just like the Western Shashir, just like the Tangu, just like the Amun, just like the Native Americans. <laughs> they were invaded right here at the same damn time. Here, there, everywhere it was invaded. The invaders stopped in Russia in 1242. The surprise, to the surprise of the Western religion and Islam, both of whom were under pressure from the Mongols. Ah. I hear that they tribe done. I hear that Ishmael's migrating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the same damn time, right? So get your perspective together with Russia. That's why Vladimir Putin's putting, you know, he's giving a little drop here and there, letting you know what it's looking like, showing you what these priests on these paintings are looking like. We know who the rules are, man, right? Where? X marks the spot where the paths meet, like the Alabama flag, where the paths meet. 146 is reaching maximum, has reached maximum pop off. This man, is it Alabama or Al Aba Ama? <laughs> where the paths meet. What did uh, Montezuma have to say about this, man? I heard a picture's worth a thousand words, huh? Uh, let's see, man. Let's, let's, let me get this Montezuma flow. Where the paths meet. I said, I said, where the paths meet. Man, they roll up on Montezuma, man. They found a whole kingdom. The painter had to paint in these. Tartaria, right, buildings in America. Montezuma, man, already had full masonry buildings. Look at the color on top, that, that teal, the kind of like the greenish teal. Look at the X's marking the spot on the dragon, man. 
the dragon scales where the paths meet Montezuma no look at that building in the back and we keep talking tango we about to get more into it but don't that remind you of the parliament building in upper Ottawa man the same greenish teal the same Tartaria style flow where the paths meet where the paths meet where X is marking a spot all over the place right <laughs> don't that remind you of this flow and this is in upper Ottawa the same place that would be what they call Tangu but we're reading that it all's happening with this meeting of the Genghis Khan and the Preston John and the greatest war war they never told us about where the paths meet Andros Andros the Nagas man where X marks the spot and I'm just still talking about Jerusalem Clancy all Andres I'm just still talking about your kingdom right where wisdom is the conqueror of fortune where the paths meet. <laughs> I'm still talking Israel, ain't you? But with Russia, we talk in the Rus. And the Rus are the title that Russia, Russia is going under. And these are the Saracens, again, <laughs> that they trying to bring under to invade these Sarah says, well, the Rus were just invaded, they said, by these Mongols. At the same time, they wanted to subdue the Sarah says, and enemies of Christ. And I'll keep asking, that means that you can't come to America if we're Christians. <laughs> Since they keep trying to make President John a Christian, right? That means you can't come to America. But the British Museum got the Preston on the map. So... Either one, y'all can't have it both ways, man. You gotta choose your story. Either these are savages, enemies of Christ, savages that you could easily just take their land because they're savages and they don't deserve land, right? They don't deserve to live. You can kill them all. <clears throat> or these are uh, the Hebrew kingdom, Jerusalem, led by King David. You can't say I'm going to subdue the enemies of Christ and then come over here <laughs> and act like this must not be your enemy. Because if he was a Christian, like y'all keep trying to make, Preston John, the Christian Empire, Christian Empire, all this Christian King stuff, that means you couldn't come over here. Because you can't enslave no Christian King, you can't enslave no Christians. You had to enslave the enemies of Christ, letting us know that this is your number one ah because you had to enslave the enemies of Christ and take our kingdoms right letting us know that this is your number one op and that Asian minor Asian major situation is starting to play out even clear when we see <laughs> that we're in Asia ball still we're in 1530 and you still see Cat Day on the map and Florida balls. No North America. They took the kingdoms of the Rus. They took the kingdoms of the Rus that were invaded by these new Mongols, not the real great ones. Mongol just means the great ones, but not the real great ones, right? Not the real Moors. Moors just means great, right? It's the same people. The real Moors and the real Mongols are the same people. They would be considered the Arab proper. <laughs> but these Moor-ish <laughs> and these Mongol-ish that they kick in, these Ishmaelites migrating are of originally non-Arab stock until they have to intermarry again into our genuine Arab queens. Other than that, they are pretending 
And even when they do that, they are pretending they are not the proper a rabbis. Do you see clear? So this Mongol invasion gang is gone, taking our women, same thing here, is to get genuine, is to get proper, because they know they pretend it. They know they're of non-law-keeping, code-keeping stock. We're talking Katai, we're talking Kara Katai, Katai, Cathay. So you know. <laughs> we know we are returning now this is what they're afraid of and first we seek the creator then we seek David our Khan and come trembling unto Hawaii and his goodness when right now boss the end of their days end of the hijack day let's go President John is connected with great revolution <laughs> because you see clearly now you got that eye right you got that sight that they call evil that they call you know uh, fiery looking and, and all that other stuff right now you see clearly because they did everything they could to take the light out of your eyes so you can't see we have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light might enter the slave's mind. In the real text, it says light, and we close every avenue by which light can enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish their capacity to see light, our work would be completed. They would then be on a level with the beasts of the field. And even when we're on that level, they're afraid. And we should be safe. <laughs> Do you see clearly, right? Do you see the light, man? That the whole world is run by you. That you are the cause of the greatest Tartaria. That you are the cause with the fiery look. The fiery glance. Cons that see once you see knowledge is power man like once you see you got that ama you got that power you got that light and that sight is paralyzing they freeze when you look at them don't you walk in a room sometime the hijack <clears throat> the hijack just kind of take a pause you know that look you give them is deadly and the marvel they say is called the evil eye the evil eye, the deadly glance, the paralyzing sight, right? The evil eye, the deadly glance, the paralyzing sight, right? Because they know <clears throat> that man or woman, this American, <laughs> shall not, is the copper color race is found here. Man or woman, the copper color con is the dra <laughs> dragon. <laughs> Is the fierce Nagas that's fighting with that evil eye, deadly glance, with that knowledge. We're violent to them with that knowledge. See how they keep putting this violence and fierceness on your sight, which is the dragon to see clearly. They can't just say the one with the glance. They got to say it's deadly to us. They can't just say the one with the sight. They got to say it's paralyzing to us. Man, they can't just say, man, uh, this man or woman is a dragon. They got to say they're violent towards us, fierce towards us. They fight back. They're the Shikramagwa. They don't give up no matter what we do. No matter what we do. And this is my Kande. This is my Kande present. To all you cons, we all sharing this con day together. And this is my con day, man. To get this out to y'all after days and days of recording and being a you know hijack and having these recordings be deleted. All I did was get smarter. <laughs> Cause I had to reread this stuff a million times. By the time I'm dropping it now, come on, bro. come on, Paul. <laughs> Imagine doing five five hour videos 
of the same thing and they're all gone. This is like my seventh time recording now. <laughs> we don't give up, man. <laughs> we separate from that hijack. We see clearly, man. We are the dragon. We are the dragon. Come. Let's go. Think it's play, play. Yeah, we connected with Great Revolution. Yeah, let's go. What, what else they got in Yandex, man? Descendants of Prince John. Prince John, Legend of Sources. But the Aqua Time man. It's the name of a people, Tangu, not just a place. So even though we see Tangu on these maps in America, it's really the people, right? It's the she, it's the Arme, right? It's the people. It's the tribe. Let's go. Let's go. Cathay and the way there, there, man. The entirety agrees with the indications of Polo, who described Tandu between the province of Tangu and Shang Tu, and who in another passage speaks of the Kara Moran. Again, the Kara is the Kara with a C or a Q, right? Hoang Ho, in its lower course, as coming from the lands of Prester John. So suddenly, when you know what to look for, when you put in this tan dude, suddenly <laughs> it's just body bags all over the place for Presto Child, right? It's letting you know where you situate. It's giving you orientation pies. It's giving you orientation enchiladas. It's letting you know these descendants are still here. It's connecting the Tangu with the Tang, with the Tang Dynasty. Tangu. Right? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, five invasions, man. I mean, they just been invaded. Genghis Khan went to war at least six times in 20 years with these Tangu. Just like this American Revolutionary War, they went to war for 20 years straight with the Shikamaru. Phantoms and duplications. We're about to get some parallel timelines in history since we know that these are parallels. And the timeline has been hijacked. Tangu. That Preston John had the seat of his government, man, when he ruled over the Tartars. So, Preston John was ruling Tartaria, man. Don't let these hijacks tell you that they got something to do with Tartaria. These redhead white people walking around. <laughs> stop it, cut. Y'all just stop it, man. Y'all, man, just hold it back for a stack, man. Just kick back, man. Just, just fall back. Cause you ain't got nothing to do with this, man. Preston John had a seat of all the earth. Remember Psalms 89. He's the God of the world, right? He's the firstborn bond. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have exalted one chosen, not two, not three, not four, out the people. What? I have appointed him firstborn. <laughs> not JC in the New Testament. It's the Tanakh flow. Tanakh only sessions around here. The highest of the kings on earth, eh? <laughs> My covenant is with David, his seed. They keep talking descendants. David's seed will I make endure forever. That's why we're talking descendants. That's why they hijacked it for their descendants. They're just flipping our script, man. But our script is forever, man. The kings of the earth reign forever. But you don't have no kingdom <laughs> without Big Mama. This is what Mama trying to tell you. I'm mean, where the past is me. I'm at the entries of the gates. The gates is right after you get that. Well, right before you get that. Wow. The gates is right, you know. When you walk through the city in the Paleo Picto Hebrew, that strong power enters your family. You gather, you move through an entrance, you get that look. Mama's right there at the entrance, at the gate, to give you that look, to give you that security. Cause now you got your mother and your father, and now you got your food at the entrance of the gates. Where the paths meet, 
<laughs> at the gates, beside the gates, at the entry of the city, at the entrance. Now you get your look. <gasps> now you get your security. Wow, now you got your kingdom. Now you got, you got nourishment. You can cut out that hijack. You can build your wall, divide, separate from the hijack. David is first born by. This is established. The covenant is established forever. Counsel is mine and by me. Verse 15. Proverbs chapter 8. Kings reign. Nobles, even the judges of the earth. Stop playing with Big Mama. Stop playing with wisdom. Because if you don't know, now you know. Wisdom is the conqueror of all fortune. Because she's standing at the gates where the paths meet. Where X marks the spot. My copper color comes. <laughs> We still talking Israel, Ka, and we still talking Rus, Rusha, Ka, because these Rus were invaded by the same gang as Khan that the Shashia, Tangu, that the you know Israelites were invaded by man, by press, same invader, you know of all the Preston John descendants, include the Rus that got invaded by the same invader. Of all the rest of the press of John descendants, gang is caught in there, who literally popped off a mother sucking ice age, right? Such as the massacres by Genghis Khan. These are the reasons that are being proposed for a damn ice age. And of course, the European contact. Little Ice Age or Big Ice Age is happening at the same damn time. <laughs> right? 1300s, all this Middle Age, Dark Age business, the same damn time that Ishmael's migrating. <sighs> Limit of glaciation <laughs> in line. Glaciation, moraines, rocks and soil deposited by retreating glaciers. Where? In America, while Ishmael's migrant. I need you to understand. The White River is the Yellow River in the Mongol history. And this is what they're hijacking. The flow of, man. Setting up the Morocco and more science temples, man. <laughs> Setting up all the hijack, man. Taking... All this land from the Fort Wayne Treaty. The Fort Wayne Treaty that gave up how much land again? Repetition breaks the spell. They obtained 29,719, 530 acres of native Naga, Nagaville American land, man, for the settlers of Illinois and Indy and all that Mississippi flow. <laughs> All that now River Cairo flow. Because uh, with permissions of the Pharaoh, can these hijacks migrate? 1785. <laughs> Come on, man. Repetition breaks the spell. Man. During the midst of the Shikamaga War, while oh, we se separating. Cause we didn't want to make no treaties of peace and be part of this Morocco treaty. So Morocco set up shot right on top of the head of our priest gun dragon canoe at Tecumse. Same damn time. Cause we didn't want to make no peace with these hijacks. And the rest of these so-called Cherokee did, which are the more <laughs> And the Kara is the Kara. But the C A R A C H E R O Cherokee is Kara Ka. And the real car broke off, man, and said, nah, we the real car. Y'all over there hijacking us, man. We the real car. Let's go. Let's go. Press the 146 in your Facebook. <laughs> hey man.
having too much fun. It's a victory lap, man. Preston had a seat of the government, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> He's the highest of the kings on earth, on the earth plane. What are you saying? He's the highest of the kings on the earth plane. He's the first born bond. What are you saying? Why are you playing? <laughs> and his heirs still abide there. Back to the descendants, right? Rise and fall of Tartarian, man. They still talking press. So, you know, I'm just seeing where they talking press. And here they go with the car of Katai. The original story of Presser John seems to have been based on this distorted report. Yeah, right, man. Of the defeat of the Seljuk Sultan Sandra 1141 by the car of Katai. So, yeah, man, they 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 pontificate. They try to figure it out, but the car is the carrot, just like the Cherokee is the same car, meaning black and turkey. The Katai is still the cat. They look how they spell it. K H I T A I is still the same thing, whether they spell it with a C or a K. Kapangu. Yeah, 1500s, man, map of America. Instead of the K, they got the C, C A T H A Y, or put an I. You got the cat tie or cat day, man. Cause the Chinese sell upon this ocean. <laughs> so the car could tie is right in your face. Whether we talking Tangu, Tangu, or cat day, sometimes they call them the Cathayans. It's still right in your face. That we're just talking America. Just talking America. Wow. <sighs> Let's go. Wow. They're looking for the gold. They want the gold. Kapangu, Isle of Japan. All this drop, <laughs> yeah, man. How many worlds beyond the poles, man? We about to, <laughs> we about to get some flat drop for the dismount, man. I, I worked too hard not to give us a little flat drop, man. We got a lot of press drop, a little, a lot of Marvel drop coming in. Uh, Katai is Cathay. Let's go, man. Let's go. We gonna quit. We out of here. Info Galactic. <laughs> Shout out to InfoGalactic.com. Talking about the Basmil, B A S M Y L. Apparently, they're a big factor when it comes to Turkic flow. And the Turkic flow, remember, the Kara means black in Turkey. But we're going to get some more drop on that. And just getting right here, man. Just connecting the Tanduk situation. The Basmils appear to be the Archons. <laughs> Argon, shout out to that by law. Are these the archons? <laughs> Remember the G's and the C's in the Hebrew are interchangeable, right? The G's and the C's. So what do they got? The GOM, which is a G sound, turns into the <laughs> Latin C and English C, my night. <laughs> Cause they already got a RK, they don't need that C. That that, that C is a illusion. <laughs> right? The Gimmel, then they turn the C's and K's. Now instead of Jimmy Gimmel, they call him Jimmy Kimmel, right? Cause he's gathering an audience. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the G's and C's are interchangeable. So the Argons are the Archons. We're gonna get some more drop. Connecting the G's. And the seas. Let's go. The Bosmills appear to be the Argons mentioned by Marco Polo in a country called Tandu, which is probably Tangu. During the thirteenth century. Uh, is that during a uh, little ice age? Is Genghis for is gang is responsible for the I say? That's deep. That's deep. 
to connect that Muhammad flow, but again, you know, it's Ishmael's migrate. Swords of the East. So let's talk swords of the East. And again, when it comes to these Tangu, who were the Tangu in Asian history, we know this is we know we in Asia. And again, man, this this naga here, man, with this with this phenotypes look a lot like the Omic flow sculptures as well. And back to the G's and the C's. Oh, it's all connected. Yeah. We're talking the Shia people. We got that. So here it says, however, Tangu culture was quite similar to others on the northern steeps. People like the Ugirs, Gurkhan, Manku, indicating that the Tangus had lived in the area for some time. I said, damn, I mean, can we get the Tangu and the Manku on the same map at the same time? I boss. <laughs> Are we that cool to get the Manku and the Tangu on the same map at the same time? And yeah, we got it right here with India Superior next to Florida. <laughs> and the G's and the C's are interchangeable. <laughs> so Manku becomes or is originally Mangu or Mangi Ragnum Kingdom. Connected with the Tango in India Superior and the Cathay Monaga. Body bag <laughs> for the illusion. Yeah. Who are the Mangi? Who are the Manku? Who are the Tango? Who are you? Are you black? Is your black? Is that is that it? <laughs> what is your kingdom called black? Afro over there. Afro over there. And we will be coming back digging on this Tang dynasty, man. Because it clearly is something that we need to recon and press to. One, four, seven. Lego. We in cruise control. I'd like to welcome y'all to air either. Uh, we've just reached cruising altitude. Go ahead and uh, relax, man. Kick your seat back. <laughs> Enjoy your food. Uh, we we fly in Tango. Don't mind us. Boys of the East, right? So you put in Tango. And again, a hop to all my Nagas. Hit that membership on our channel. All these years, I never had a membership part of the channel, man, and all this stuff. But I said, let me. I got all these hard copies of these books. I'm going to start reading them just cover to cover. Um, just doing straight reads very little interruptions i can't promise zero because i do be popping off but i'm gonna try to just read it man because we got enough context by now <laughs> con to to ride that wave and please join the membership on our channel yeah i mean there's different tiers and we'll be having some live drop man we'll we got some soul bone we're gonna start playing man live on the zooms like we're we, we gonna have some good time driving now we're gonna make it fun so uh, please join our membership and the A-Hop to all the cons and the Patreon. Y'all are amazing and I appreciate y'all's support. And we're going to be doing a lot of readings there as well. As, as well as some more, um, you know, uh, sensor drop on YouTube will be over there. A lot of health drops. Since we're going to have a lot of health drop to talk about soon. I can feel it. So, you know, make sure you're in the Patreon so we can do it uncensored, man. Hit the waterfall your support. Click the link. Make sure you're in the memberships and the Patreon. And don't miss none of this drop because if you surf the way this long, I mean, you got to be here for the Na Nadia Coman <laughs> Nadia Comanichi Perfect Ten dismount. If you don't know about Nad Nadia Comanichi, man, I think she's one of the few gymnasts that scored perfect tens, man, like in her in her dismount. So I always compare our dismounts to Nadia Comanichi, man. But that's just the old school of me, man. Tangu held the balance of power in the horde. Verily, he asked. Do you draw rain toward Tangu, my Khan? <laughs> How many warriors, man? So they're really concerned about this Tangu situation with Preston Child and Genghis Khan and Timmy Sheen. Hey, Swords of the East, Harold Lamb. I got the hard copy. I will be reading it for the members only content, man. All right. Uh, Tangu, he cried. The, ta the tiger smiled right on and entered the gate. If you can't. <laughs> So, I mean, what's, what's this gate have to do with anything, man? Um, man, it's a lot of drop on Tango, but, you know, 
I'm doing a tag group, hard hit, and they got a lot of it. All these previews used to be available, though, man. And shout out to Jamuka. Jamuka plays heavy. I just want to say that. Sometimes Jamuka is fighting Gangas. Sometimes Jamuka is fighting Prester. Sometimes Gangas and the Prester team up to fight Jamuka. <laughs> All in the Mongol history, man. Jamuka ain't on no play play. I want to tell you like that. Gangas no, Prester no. Jamuka serious, man. So, is this Jamaica? Is it Jamaica? <laughs> If you are faithful to Tamujin, you should ride to Tangu at once. Again, we're just talking America. Now we know, right? Tangu professing to be a convert to Christianity, all this. All they wanted to do in America was convert us to Christianity, even back then. Even back then. And the king's inability to leave the castle, he had allowed Jamuka first uh, to guard his frontier than to wear the bear's head that was the token of the leader of the tank. Cool. What's so special about the bear's head? That's interesting. Uh, Ming and was thoughtful. The success of Genghis, he observed, are due to two different things. His campaign has been on level land where horsemen can maneuver readily and he is the finest leader of many age. Man, stop, man, because, you know, <laughs> we rock with the press. But Mingan, um, in this book was kind of like caught in the crosshairs, you know what I mean? Like, Mingan was trying to figure out what side to choose. Gang is kind of oppressed each other. So he kind of rocked in the middle, you know what I'm saying? He was trying to figure it out. So, uh, <laughs> he had to keep being reminded, oh, Press is the foe. Press is the bad guy. Don't trust Preston, you know, da 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 da. But this book is written from the perspective of the Gang is Khan family, you know what I mean? So, but it's cool because it, it gives us a lot of drop. Uh, man, let's get it from here. The castle of Prester John, Tangu, right? He saw it first on one hand, then another, oftentimes in the air before his horse. We gotta get some more content. He saw a rich land and wide rivers and trees, like Kakora, the land of abundance, connected with Prester John. Kakora, the car. And what's this castle of Prester John got to do with that Montezuma flow, right? Because I know they didn't build this, my naga. And you know they didn't build this, my naga. God. Castle of Prester John. So a lot of drop, man. I'll go get the drop and look out for it, man. Talking car is we talking car could tie into the full power <coughs> of the car, which are the Cherokee <laughs> car could tie <coughs> uh, can join them through the mountain passes, though the mountain passes to the castle. What castle? The daughter Padu is to be the bride. Gang is gang is what everybody has his bride because through the women he can get the land, through the women he can intermarry. And this is what they was doing because they were not proper. Because they were pretending Arabs and not proper, they had to intermarry with genuine a rabbis. Yeah. Because it's added, Ishmael married a woman of the tribe of the Gurhum, or the Gurkum, which we get in these texts. The Gurkum. And became a member through the woman. They had to marry our sisters, our daughters, our wives, our mothers. They had to get in somehow to become genuine Arabs, to become Arab propers. But the original A rabbis, they put the hint, hint <laughs> on the Andrew's crest, right? Describing an Arab tribe from the Sinai Desert, but we know we're talking propers and not pretenders. And they had to intermarry, intermarry with chicken, Arab, Rabbi, cold, keep it, not us. Let's go. We just get started. Yeah, he had to try to make another uh, heir proper his bride, his Genghis, man. Some more castle flow, man. Oh, man. It's a 
lot of tribe. Y'all get this drop, man. There's a lot of drop with this Wang Khan, Tangu, the city of Pressure Child, who you call Wang Khan. Will you go to that castle that is guarded by beasts? Laughing Jamuka shook his head. Hell no, I ain't going over there. <laughs> you, is you crazy? Not I. <laughs> a word of warning, man. Pressure John is your foe because he desires to, oh, they cut us off, man. Get in the members. Only man, join the become a member on our channel because we gonna read this book cover to cover. No more previews, no hijack, man. Various priests into Cathay again. Cathay's right here, but by the impress of John and his kingdom of Tangu were no more than a legend. Sounds like that Mosak the founder drop. Intriguing primal ancestor. Uh, let's get it. Let's get it. So when we do on Preston John, they like to connect this story in this. It's crazy, man. Wikipedia, man. They got all this drop on Preston in two sentences connected to the Americas. But Italian historian Peter Martyr de Anguiera identified the land of Preston John with Kokora talking America because we're talking Carolina because Kokora is the indigenous name of the Carolinas so why would this one historian identify the land of Pressure John with South Carolina <laughs> and not Ethiopia and all this we know we got the Abyssinia flow but Abyssinia I'll be seen. Remember, is the native name for Ethiopia. I'll be seeing you, Abyssinios. Native name for Ethiopia, right? I'll be seeing you, Abyssinios. Native name for Ethiopia. I'm talking about my Nagas that see clearly. I ain't talking about no pretending Nagas. <laughs> I'm talking about the real genuine flow. That know that when they talk Ethiopia. We're talking fiery looking Nagas. That means you got the glance. That means you got the sight. That means you see clearly. That means they couldn't extinguish your light. That means your light is here to stay. So when they talk Abyssinia, we know we're talking native. We know we're talking native name. And when they talk Ethiop, Ethiop. We know we're talking fiery knockers, dragon knockers, fiery looking knockers, man. Burnt face, right? <laughs> Negro. Or the ones with the deadly glance, or the evil eye. But we still just talking, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Abyssinia. So something about that light ignites the fire in your eye. And that light is connected to the native name, which is Abyssinia, which is why they call him Preston John, <laughs> Priest King, Imperador de los Abyssinios. Because that predates the name. That's the native name for Ethiopia, which is the burnt face, fiery looking Nagas wherever you go. But King David. Is the king of the earth. Ain't on no play play. Nestorian, right? Nestorian. 
So they give you two sentences on America, you know. But all this on the Ethiopia flow <laughs> with Preston John. India was a vague concept. Yeah. Which is why this is India superior. India was just a vague concept. Don't worry about that. <laughs> because writers often spoke of the three Indias. Not one, not two, but three. Time. All this on the Mongol flow, the Tagru, the king of the Kara, the Cherokee, right? The Chikora, which is a kingdom, Manali. The Sajin title, Ong, which is king. We gotta recon the Tang, we gotta recon the Jin. And Cathay. Orderic places John's land to the west of Cathay. Orderic, how many, how many witnesses do you need? <laughs> before you take this way too serious <laughs> way too serious right come on huh Calm means peace so he's near Cathay C-A-T-H-A-Y China but this is a map of America Man, how can it be that the Chinese sell upon this oceanic sea? I'm talking cat thing. Queen of Sheba came with her spices, right? Look, gold and spices, we still talking cat thing. Let's go. These include Franciscan explorers, Gianni, look, William of Rubric. He's the one that called the Tangu swarthy, right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't make, I'm, be, I'm literally belly flop. And then he got the King David flow again. As it turns out, this time he's getting his gun. But we just got that David it is your title. David the first, Judah the first, Prester John. William of Rupert. What do you say about them Tangu? That they swart the Nagas. Yellow River or White River, man. Jin Dynasty Tang, I mean, the more we talk about this, the more we see clearly. The more we got that fiery look. Tangu, right? The Shishia, Western Shia, which is the Ame. Also known as Tangu. William of Rubric, let's get it bigger, who traveled to various parts of the Mongol Empire in the 13th century. The Tangus were valiant and had big swarthy men among them. Oh, just among them? That doesn't mean they're swarthy. Oh, okay. The Tangu people I saw were tall but swarthy. <laughs> These is niggas. William of Rubric is letting us know. So William of Rubric and Giovanni are both Franciscan explorers. This is why the Shakur flow, they gave him the name Francisco. But it's his baptismal name, not his real name. So what's his real name? That guy is comparing this guy with Esteban, right? And say, come on, bro. <laughs> you got shipwrecked the same time, 1521, 1522, found you. And they gave you a new name, like Esteban. <laughs> now they worshiping you as the sun. They take you with seventy others. We gonna get back on this good court. I'm just 
just saying. I'm just saying. They got all this on all this other stuff. They compared it and impressed it with all these things. Christian this, patriot this, but then they go in the story and that. Take you to the church of the east. We say, come on, boss. Stop making him a Christian. That's why you got to say Nestorian Patriarch because this ain't no orthodoxy flow. Come on, boss. A Nestor, a Nestorian is a Nestor. <laughs> and a Nestor is the name for an old king renowned for wise counsel. Shout out to Bob Marley, whose name is also Nestor. Connected to an old king. Renowned for wisdom, mama say. By me, king's reign. Huh? Connected with his nostalgia, which is, you know what I mean? <laughs> Being in bliss, right? Being blessed. Not no Christianity. An old king renowned for mama. Because wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. Huh. So now we understand the Nestorian flow every time they try to put it on us. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm gone. So picking it up here, historytoday.com. 1145. When Preston John first appears, need for such an ally was. All too important, the capture of Odessa by the Seljuk General Zingi, 1144, marked the turning point in the history of the Crusades. The conquest of the First Crusade was gravely endangered by a rival of Islamic power. The news of the fall of Odessa was brought to Pope Eugenius uh, III from the Levant by Hugh Bishop of Jabala in Syria. The meeting between Bishop and, and Pope at Vertebo in the autumn of 1145 was attended by the German chronicler Otto of Friesling, who took down what was said to the bishop. The gloomy news of the fall of Odessa was balanced by the prospect of help for the crusaders from an unsuspected direction. The bishop said, I had to make up this story that somewhere out there there's this super Christian who's going to help us in Christian number nah we talking this story we talking Nestor the bishop had heard that not long ago one John king and priest <laughs> priest king president John who dwells in the extreme orient I'm not good. they flipped your map upside down you think I'm lying they flipped your map upside down <laughs> So you think you're in the west when you're in the east. The furthest east is the furthest orient, which is makes you the orient, the oriental. They don't like to be called the oriental. You are the extreme orient, California, New York City. Like this is the extreme east of them, beyond Persia and Armenia, and is with his people a Christian, but an historian. Nestor, old king renowned for wise counsel, had defeated the Persians and captured their capital. So he's whooping up on all these sultans and Persians and Islamic yada yadas. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's, he's being recruited, but really that's why they fear him. He got the fiery look. Genghis is paying tribute. So he defeated the Persians, captured their capital. After this victory, John set out with his army to come to the aid of the Crusaders, but was unable to get his troops across the Tigris. That's their story, but really, he ain't rocking with no damn hijacked city. Zeus worshiping, Jupiter worshiping, hijacked Christians, man. Stop the play play. Stop the play play. There's a certain basis of a contemporary fact behind this odd story, 1141, the Seljuk Sultan Sinjar, in one of the decisive battles in the history of Central Asia, was defeated at Katwan near Samarkand by a Mongol people, the Karakata. Back to the cafe. Back to the cafe. And what does Karakata mean? Who had recently migrated to Central Asia. 
previous home in North China, the Kara or Black Katai. Body bags. Can you count the body bags? I drive. I ain't making this up. <laughs> so when they say car, they're talking black. When they say Cherokee, Cherry is car. They're talking black. Oh, the car. The car, car. Cherokee is Cherokee. The key is still the key. And the ta is still the tau. And the Tau is the last letter of your ancient Hebrew, Ka. Tau, where two cross sticks, where X marks the spot. <laughs> the mark, the sign, the signal, the monument, or the covenant. Managa, two cross sticks, Ezekiel 37, two tribes coming back together. Northern Israel. Southern Israel. The whole tribe, the Bloods and the Crips, the GD and the Big D. That's where X marks the spot, man. That's where you see clearly. That's where wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. That's where Israel can be Israel once more. That's when we can be great again. Is the Chera Kara Chera Kara Ki Ta a branch of the Katans? <laughs> and these same Katans are the same Joktans, which is Katans. Katans is the same cat thing. You do karate, right? The kara. You do karata. <laughs> you do katas in karate. You do the kata. You're doing the kata flow. <laughs> kata. Let's get it from here. So they're getting letters from President John and the fabled uh, President John, the fabulous President John. Okay. So we took you from the Mongol flow back to this Christian European uh, crusade flow. And it's the same flow from the Mongol to the crusade flow, which is the same flow in the America, Tanduk, Tangu, Shishia, Omic flow. Like I said, you combine the Mongol history with the Hebrew history, Khan, with the, with the Native American history. You get body bags all over the place. You you got a massacre happening on Hijack City, man. The location of Preston John's Kingdom was in India. Superior. Read the link, man. Read it slowly. <laughs> Cause we talking holy. Let's go. Let's get this paragraph to four crusade crusade instead of bringing help to Palestine, sack the Christian city of Constantinople and seriously weaken the remaining vigor of the Byzantine Empire. Let's talk Byzantine, man. The Children's Crusade of 1212 ended in tragedy. The army of the Fifth Crusade, which landed in Egypt 1218, sorely needed some duas ex machina, was it mean, to bring it to greater success than that met with with by its predecessors hope for such help was suggested in the letter which Jacques de Vitry, Bishop of Ptolemaeus, wrote to Pope Honoré III in 1221. He reported that David, king of India and descendant of Prester John, had attacked the infidel with three armies. So, <laughs> this David flow, my nugget. It's an ancient flow when it comes to the Prester John. We already got the biblical version, you know what I mean? The, 
that the covenant is with David. He is the king of the earth, firstborn, right? That's the biblical flow. <laughs> and even in the genealogy flow, right? We got David the first again, again. Rock with me. You got David the first. Who's the husband of Lady Hannah? <laughs> in 1200, right? Who has his son, Hanan, in 1200. Khan of the Rubadi Gadi Mani, which is Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, because the king of Judah is the Khan of all the tribes. Khan. So David, he has a wife, Hannah. Preston, Preston John, they call Jadaron. He has a wife, <laughs> Anna, Anna son Hanan, twelve hundred eleven ninety five. So these are hard heads that the Preston John Managa is David, and this is what. That this is the importance, you know what I'm saying, of why Genghis Khan is stealing this title and calling himself David later and saying that this is a descendant of David and all this stuff like that. Because this is the same Khan in the 1200 <laughs> with the same wife Hannah and the same uh, son Hannah, who was also to put the icing on the cake for my Khan day. <laughs> to put the icing on the cake for the Khan's Khan day. Is the same as Judah first. Obviously, King of Judah, right? Who also has a wife, Lady Hannah. Come. Circle 1200. Let's go. A Lego. So the David title plays. You'd like. Just getting David in no BC's biblical timeline, man. You're getting David in the Dark Ages, where Genghis is claiming the title, where Presto already has the title as David the First, Judah the First, with different substantiating documents validating, backing that up, man. Primary sources, <laughs> King of India, Superior, descendant of President John. <laughs> And they say here, at last he wrote, was a longer way to hammer the infidel. Infidel means what pagans and in the Quran flow they'll call David Dajjal, right? Some infidel, king of the infidels. <laughs> it gets it gets real sticky over there. A couple books I want you to have, man. I ain't even got this yet. Press the John legend between East and West during the Crusades, entangled Eastern Latin mythical legacies. Ahmed M. A. Shear. Dig on it, man. I'm going to get the hard copy so I can read it on the uh, members, you know, the members only flow, man. You know, make sure you're in the classroom. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we, someone tells me we need to dig on that. We already started digging on this one by I.E. Rachi Woods. Prester John in Europe's discovery of Eastern Asia. But as we've been saying, my naga, where's Asia? So when they talk about some discovery in Eastern Asia, for real, for real, we could ask, what a humble heart, man. <laughs> Where the heck is Asia? For real, for real. I mean, for real, for real. <laughs> I don't see no North America on this Orientis finds fifteen thirty one. So you see we in fifteen hundreds this, fifteen thirties this British Museum, fifteen hundreds. Yeah, I mean ain't no North America. So, you know, dig on these couple drives, man, and you know, again when they talk uh Byzantine when they talk Byzantine, 
You know, it just reminds me of the Mazaka flow when they talk this remaining vigor of the. Wow, <sighs> so this. Um, you know, Mosak. <laughs> this Byzantine flow, the founder of the Cappadocians, early 15th century Cappadocian scholar, wrote an extensive ecclesiastical history that surveyed the developments of the previous century in his homeland, Philostrogius, had grown up in the shadows of the great Cappadocian fathers. Despite their prominence, Philostrogius did not embrace their version of Orthodox theology. He didn't embrace their version of the hijack. Instead, instead, <laughs> he and his family accepted the doctrines of Eunomius, another Cappadocian theologian, whom Basil and Gregory of Nyssa were personally discredited and vilified. So they were at war with each other, vilifying, discrediting each other's work. Nor did Philostrogius remain in Cappadocia since eventually he moved to Constantinople. Let's talk to Constantinople. You think it's a coincidence that Constantinople is Constantinople, man? In his ecclesiastical history, Philostrogius was hence both ecumenical and local. He included many tidbits of odd information. Why is it so odd? Why is it so odd when we talk about Cappadocia? Just know there ain't no cap on my number two pencil. So why is this information so odd about biblical events in the Roman, which is the Reman? Because the Reman is pomegranate. In the Hebrew, the Reman is pomegranate. And you need the pomegranate. Joshua and Caleb need the pomegranate to prove they're in the promised land. So the Ramon connects to the promised land, which is why they call him Roma or Romani. And they stole the Roman title. Charles V became the Holy Roman Empire because he's the one conquering promised land, Kalelus, Cibola, cities of God in America. Man, we're talking present John, Tan, Duke, Tan, Gu, India, Superior. And he was interested in legends about Cappadocia when he mentioned Mazaka. Uh oh, the origin, of, the original name for that city that eventually became Kazaria. So to get to the old school, to get to the odd information, <laughs> the minority report, right? You need to understand that Mazaka ain't the original name and Kazaria ain't the original name. But when you talk Kazar, you are talking Mazaka originally, which means you're talking what? He noted that this name was derived from Moses or, excuse me, Mosak. Why did they take down the Byzantine one year after the Papal Bull? 1452, they took down the Byzantine in 1453. They took it down. It was rolled up on just like the Rus, Russia, just like the Shishia, Tanku, the Alme, and the native flow, right? So the founder of the Cappadocian is Mosak or Moses, my naga. Mosak's name suggests some sort of Shemitic derivation, my naga. They took out Shem in 1453 by the 1452 Papa Bull. In 1492, Columbus sells the ocean blue. And his reputation as the founder of Cappadocia seems to hint at a foundational legend, boss. That means you can't move this foundation of Moses. With the Byzantine flow, you got to understand, connect with the Rus, connect with the Asia Major, India Superior connection. The Khazars, the original Khazars, are Hebrews under Moses. The foundational legend has been switched through a swerving. This foundation is older than the adoption of Greek mythologies. So before you get your Zeus and all that other stuff, you know what I mean? But uh, Poseidons and all that other stuff, all that crap, just like Carameo's dropping, getting that classroom, they stole the story from the Hebrew 
kings and queens turn it into mythos and then did some type of um you know worship it did some type of veneration on it you know what i'm saying turn it into their own mythos mythology but the foundational legend is older than their mythologies of greece and the early Ramon, remember pomegranate empire people outside cappadocia had heard of mosaic too <laughs> even josephus got in on this the jewish historian josephus even tried to fit him into biblical genealogies by equating him with meshach which he put in the josephus or the, excuse me the um uh jpeth line but you know of course we know it's a schematic der derivation so why you put him with jpeth josephus or really uh in Genesis, they put him with JPEF, so you know it ain't really on Josephus for that. But they try to hide him under the JPEF flow. Sons of Noah, though, right? So, although Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor, <laughs> oh, we are intrigued by this prime Optimus Prime first ancestor. He unfortunately remains completely obscure. How and why? Because they done cut the light from entering the slaves. My, they didn't take they didn't take out your sight and your glance because it was too deadly and paralyzing for you to see clearly, for you to have that fiery look, right? Fiery glance, as it says in the Ethiopian flow. That fiery look, that look is given to you. By Big Mama, right? Big Mama gives you that look when you enter the door. You enter that door, you gather, you walk, you enter that door, you get the look. <laughs> you get the breath. So he's fiery looking, now he's got the breath, man. And it's Ethiopian, just like Ethiopian. Predates what? It's the native name. For Ethiopia, Abyssinia, right? <laughs> and the Abyssinia is represented right here, where it says Imperado de los Abyssinios, which means mixed multitude, because Moses was rocking with the fullness of the mixed multitude, leading him into the promised land. Because you got the fire, is the dragon. And the dragon is you. So we get into this hijack by these Ottomans. <laughs> Which you about to get. Remember their flag is just the Islamic situation. And when we talk about the dragon, love to Miss D in the cop color. Awaken there. We understand that they slayed the dragon with the coming together of opposites, black, white, black, white, but black is pale. <laughs> and W-I-G-H-T, white, is demon, wicked. So black is wicked in their dictionary, and white is wicked. <laughs> black is white. <laughs> and the slaying of the dragon, you need this coming together of opposites. You gotta put red versus blue, this versus that, right? GD versus BD, blood versus crib. But the coming together <laughs> really is a reflection of what happens when we come together. <laughs> Except we're not opposites. But when the tribe comes back together again, that's when X marks the spot, right? So that's when mama's waiting at the entrance, right? At the coming together. The dragon, if they call it philosophical quicksilver, we'll get into silver surfer. Man, you surfing away? Is the mysterious substance of unknown origin. If they can't tell you where you're from, how can they tell you, you know, where you're not from? If they can't tell you who you are, how can they tell you who you're not, man? You're unknown to these nights, man. You're the dragon. You're the living spirit that's extracted. And although they say the dragon is, doesn't directly represent the living spirit, it sure is the vessel that the spirit is contained. So it does represent it, but it's not the exact spirit essence itself. It is the guardian. It is the vessel that contains that Ruach. Huh? Whew, 
and they had to come together with your opposites. They had to bring you into something opposite to slay your dragon. They took out the Byzantium. They took out the Byzantium in 1453, boss. We talking Constantinople, right? We talking Mazaka, Kazaria. That's one year after the Papabu, 1452, boss, where they invaded, subdued, and did all this stuff. Took your kingdoms, boss. They took out the Byzantium, boss. Yeah. So that you are now completely obscure. So that they cut you off from being <coughs> a nation again. Philostrogius, in fact, knew so little about the legend that he could not match up the consonants and vowels in order to make sense of the postulated link between the city's name of Masaka and Mosak's name. So he shrugged and invented a makeshift, a what? A makeshift phonetic transfer. What does it mean? They did, they're making up new sounds. They're just making shift up, right? <laughs> so now instead of Mos Mosak, they got Mazaka through a swerving, a curving. They done curved the cons. They done cut the light from entering your minds through a swerving, through a makeshift phonetic transfer where we have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light can enter these Naga's minds. If we could extinguish their capacity to see light, our work would be completed. They would then be on a level with the beast of the field and we should be safe because they don't got no more fiery look. They don't got no more dragon. They don't got no more light. Did you lose your light? Did they slay your dragon, your ability to see clear by cre creating and bringing your opposites on you? Did you lose your glance and your sight? Are you no longer deadly? Are you no longer fierce or violent towards the hijack? Because this man or woman is a dragon. 1828 Dictionary. A fierce or violent person, male or female, as this man or woman is a dragon. Which means this man or woman sees clearly. Did they slay your dragon? And did they slay you? Moses is an intriguing primal ancestor, man. And now he remains obscure. Through a transfer of makeshift phonetics. A swerving, it became Mazaka. Through a swerving, it became Cappadocia. You forgot about Moshe. <laughs> we forgot about the old Hawa, right? Turned into Heya and Yahweh's. We forgot about the ancient Moshe, man. They took out the Byzantine. They took out Cappadocia. Hit the timeline, man. Parallel histories of America. Right. Con, con, video day, fair use in your caboose, take the wheel. Um, all people use it then to make comparisons. We have an obvious circular argument here. What do they need to always bear in mind is how things get there, and how they get there, and how they get there. Particularly in ancient times, I mean, in modern times, we know some extent how things get there. But measuring your argument against that is going to be very difficult. Okay, from say 300 AD or 500 AD, possibly even 1200 AD or later. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not entirely clear that your intention in writing history is the same as the intention of a modern historian, namely to give a faithful uh, chronicle of events. We cannot take this for granted at all. As a matter of fact, it's a fair assumption that many ancient writings would have sort of moralistic purpose. They were much more uh, in keeping with, you know, like Roman history was showing, you know, the grandeur of certain figures and being, giving uplift, uplifting accounts and so forth. This is very, very important because, because the results that we're talking about are, in some cases, are going to just look and seem so preposterous to you that, that you're just, you will be very tempted to just turn your, you know, turn your mind off or turn your back to the whole thing. And what Ellen and I are, are all trying to do is not 
may need to throw out the data. We may need to discard the Mangos interpretation of the data. We may need to discard the interpretations that we have of the data, but you shouldn't throw out the data. In my opinion, the data is incontrovertible. You see on the, the right hand side, this is the Roman Empire from 82 BC to the third century AD. On the left hand side, we have the Roman Empire from the third century to the sixth century AD. And we are writing the Roman emperors in the order in which they occur um, according to the Chronicles, according to the histories, even according to modern history. But to read the diagram, the spaces stay from here to here represent the length of reign of that emperor. So, in other words, here's 41 years of long reign. This diagram is supposed to show a kind of symmetry between a period of time which was a sequence of uh, Roman rulers and then a period of time more than 300 years later in which you have another sequence of Roman, Roman emperors. Now, let's start here with, with Augustus. Okay, he reigns for 41 years and uh, Constantine the Great Augustus reigns for 31 years. He's a big deal, I agree, that's 10 years difference. But follow what happens after here. Uh, Tiberius uh, compared to Constantius II, 23 and 24. When we come to Caligula, it's four years and two years. He, um, Caligula is heir to Julian the Apostate. Uh, then they have Claudius, 13 years, and Valentino, and so forth. Now, so, so you understand the principle behind the figure. It's meant to show the symmetry between lengths of reign of the emperors who are understood to reign more than 300 years apart. Toward the end of the, 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 this period of Roman history, uh, we have a sequence of four emperors who all reigned for less than one year. And they were died or got off by the, you know, the legions or whatever it was. And that's paired by a sequence of rules who all reigned less than one year on the other side. And they're very, very conspicuous. Now, the other thing that's interesting is this period that started in Roman history ends with an invasion by the Goths, where you have Caracalla. Oddly enough, exactly on the other side, you have a second, let's put, put it this way, quote unquote, second invasion of the Goths. Okay, on the left, we have the Roman, the, the Roman Empire from the first century BC to the third century AD, and we have the Holy Roman Empire from the 10th century to the 13th century. In other words, on the left, you... This is a thousand years apart, boss. How can it line up so smooth? One is a reflection of another, and they're making a point. Anatoly Fedomenko, the Russian chronographer, is making a point through astronomical, mathematical, you know what I'm saying, evidence. One is copying the other. Which one, right? Now we're searching. Now we're asking the right questions. And they're saying that after the 900s is the real history. Whether we talk Egypt, Hebrews, or anything else. You got to connect the Dark Ages as the real deal, not the BCs. Here we have largely the same people um, who are uh, that we had on the, on the right hand side, the previous one, but now they're being compared to rulers of the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, uh, occur, uh, basically about a thousand fifty years later, and you see that we have another symmetry, and this is how it's reported. But remember, we have to bracket almost everything of this kind over here. Because we don't know what, what the, the veracity of the Chronicles is, what the intention of the Chronicles was, or even what the people really understood by it. I don't think anybody in any position really to make a hypothesis. You get a million ideas occurring to you when you really look into this. The many people that I talk to, they want to get a hypothesis and they want to go up and run with it, you know, to the exclusion of everything else before they understand anything about really what's going on. And I think that people have no business making hypotheses about this until they really understand the extent and the depth and the weight of what he has done. I mean, like any, I mean, any, like, really nailed down hypothesis. You know what I mean? Obviously, lots of crazy ideas are going to occur to you, but crazy. You know, they occur to me all the time. You know? crazy. And I try to follow them out as much as I can. But, I mean, we are not making hypotheses here because we're really not in a position to. Remember the little pattern up here? Okay, where we have a little block of history here, and then we shift it back and shift it back and so forth. Uh -huh. Fomenko's opinion is the only legitimate history. Now, this doesn't mean that nothing happened before this. The only history that our documents address themselves to um, is from the period of 300 AD up to modern times. Mm. Everything else is a projection of that material, that historical material, back in time due to the errors that scholars made in trying to synchronize relative blocks of history. Remember, there are three ships. And I don't think these were errors. This was done on purpose. That means the BC flow is just a reflection of what happened later. And later he'll say not just 300s, but... 
most of it after 900. So one's 333 years, one is 1,053 years, and the other one is 1,778 years. So I am making it up. 333 years, 1,053 years, 1,778 years. Time shift. So you got to be willing in an unbiased investigation to shift that timeline back a thousand years, 1,800 years if necessary to line it all up. This is how St. Christopher can connect to Christopher Columbus. This is how the dog-headed St. Christopher carrying this Christ child, Esteban Eco, can line up with this uh, Christopher Columbus and this Esteban in the 1400s, 1500s. My Naga, like, they took what's happening in the 1400s and pushed it back to the 200s, 300 ADs. Back, you know what I'm saying? Like, King David in the 1200s, back into the BCs. Egypt, back into the BCs. Yes, he has an account of each one of these and how these could have happened historically to produce those shifts. But his is what we might call one radical interpretation. Now, before you say this guy's out of his mind, what Femenko does, given a pair of duplicates, what Femenko does is says, well, can we establish astronomically which one is valid? So take, for example, uh, Thucydides' Peloponnesian Wars. There are three eclipses mentioned in the Peloponnesian Wars, and they prove they're described with great fullness, there's an, uh, a lunar eclipse, an annual or solar eclipse, and another, another lunar eclipse. Um, you can infer what the path of totality was and, and the whole deal from these, from this, these descriptions. The, the creators of modern chronology, namely Scaliger and Batavius, trying to astronomically solve the problem of those eclipses, were not able to do it without leaving out some of the data provided by Thucydides, who by the way says he was a first a witness of this. So what Fomenko did, he said, let's make no presuppositions about this. Where are the exact astronomical solutions for this triad of eclipses? And they turn out, it turns out to be one in the 11th century AD and one in the 12th century AD, and no others. No others. So what Fomenko does quite regularly is he will appeal to astronomical arguments to try to determine which is the principal one, and, and his, his conclusion, and however crazy they sound, is extraordinarily well argued, mm -hmm. is that the only legitimate history is the modern history from about 300 on, and most of that, by the way, um, is from 900 on. Bang! Ping! Pow! One hundred body bag number one hundred and eighty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty-three. <laughs> Most of it after nine hundreds, cuz. So now you got the eleven hundreds and eleven sixty-five letter press of John, and now you got all this drop, right? Now you got the drop, cuz. Now you got the drop. Yeah. From 300 on, we've got like statuary documents. He most of the things that we think of as historical events really did happen. But the question is when and where, and maybe of course how many times. He thinks well, it didn't happen 10 times, only happened once. And most of that stuff happened after the 900. After the 9. So, Battle of the 13 tribes. Let's get it as we get closer to this burning sands flow right so of course you know just checking out go uh back to the car right back to the tank machine and the Genghis and the, this culmination this battle that's happening between prester and Genghis, also known as on kong prester john again Genghis and wong kong all right they 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 added they added again but they were just together, you know. They they fought together against Jamuka, and then a year later, come Genghis with the turncoat. Battle of the Kala Kalajit Sands was fought between Genghis Khan, then known as Temujin, forces of Takru, Khan of the Carrier, Carrier, the Car of the Cherokee, right? The elites. Deeply suspicious of Temujin's diplomatic overtures, the Guru had convinced their leaders to turn on his vassal. Warned by two herdsmen, Temujin had escaped the planned ambush, but was pursued by a larger force. His Mongol allies came to his aid at the Kala Kalajik Sands, but they were defeated. Following the battle, in which Temujin's 17-year-old son, Olga, died, was severely wounded, and Temujin swore. This Balunsha covenant. He made a covenant against you, Nagas. 
Psalms 83, right? <clears throat> they are confederate against you. They made a covenant against you. He swore an oath against you in 1203. <laughs> That's right after the takeover. The Khan of the Mongol tribe in the future. Genghis Khan and a small group of companions subsequently known as the Balun Natu Tamujin had risen in power in the service of the Karyat Khan Tagru during the late 12th century. So he was serving Tagru. He was serving Prester John. In early 1203, Tagru was convinced by his son Segun that Temujin's proposal of a marriage alliance between his and their family was an attempt to usurp their power. After escaping two successive carrier ambushes, Temujin was cornered and comprehensively defeated at the Battle of the Kale Kajik Sands. And there he made a treaty, man. Man, I ain't gonna stop until I devour, vanquish, subdue all of these Israelites, all of these seeds of David, all of this Judah flow. Sounds like Nebuchadnezzar to me. Sound, and why did he feel like he had a right to it, right? They made a covenant against Israel. They made a covenant. Tagru, man, again, man, go back, man, click the links below. There's a playlist for you. Go back to 131. I know we're in 146, but go back to Preston 131, Battle of the Burning Sands, man. Go get the drop. Go get the drop. We did a whole drop on these Burning Sands, this pivotal point in your story. Did Genghis Khan ever lose a single battle throughout his life? <laughs> hey, man, some people think so. <laughs> it's 1190. Genghis Khan had indeed lost battles. No ruler could win forever, and he was no exception. The most notable loss he suffered was from the Battle of 13 Wings, 1190. Now we got Jamuka playing heavy, rival leader of the Mongol tribes. It was said that he was a sworn brother of Temujin, Genghis Khan, so they were tribed up with Temujin's wife. When Temujin's wife was abducted by the Merkit tribe, Jamuka was one of the leaders who helped him. So he helped Genghis Khan get his wifey back. But, <laughs> however, Temujin and Genghis Khan became more and more powerful. Some of Jamuka's followers switched sides, especially because Temujin rewarded his soldiers with a meritocratic system. Eventually, Jamuka became hostile to Temujin and came to see that Temujin was his rival in conquest. He decided to gather up his army and attack his former brother before he became too powerful. Thus, the two engaged in a war known as the Battle of Thirteen Wings as Temujin divided his forces into 13 squadrons. It was said that Temujin was overconfident with his recent expanded army and thought he could have engaged in direct war with Jamuka, Jamaica, but he failed and much of his forces were defeated by Jamuka's superior fighting force. I told you Jamuka, Jamaica ain't no play play. Fortunately, Temujin planned ahead and retreated to the valley of the Onan or Anya <laughs> River where he could defend in safety. However, Jamuka did something extremely cruel after his victory. He gathered the prisoners of war and mass executed them by cooking. This act of cruelty caused him to lose his reputation among the other Mongol tribes. And ironically, even more of his followers began to switch sides. Man, so then you got the 1204 flow. Temujin was eventually able to defeat Jamuka, who was captured and turned in by his own servants, his own Nagas backdoor to man. A lot of backdoor handling. Temujin killed these servants for betraying their lord and asked if his brother had any request, possibly one in the spirit's life. Jamuka only requested if he could be sentenced to a bloodless execution. One version stated he was hung by his own bowstring. Another said he was bagged and trampled to death by horses. A third theory was that he had his spine broken. We are two great warriors, you and I, but great plains of Mongol only has room for one of us. <laughs> yeah, man, so you got the 1190 flow, Battle of the Thirteen Wings. You got the 1202 flow, Battle of Kotin. 
Jamuk gathered an alliance of tribes, including the Tayakut, Tartars, Merkits, and mostly Genghis' old enemies. Temujin was allied with Torgral Khan, also known as Wan Khan, his foster uncle, sworn brother of Temujin's father. Jamuka was defeated and surrendered to Prester John Wan Khan in 1202. But he wasn't executed because he came back even <laughs> even harder the next year. So, so again, Tagru. Yeah, we're talking Wang Kong was the name given to Tagru by the Gurkin led Jin Dynasty of China. Wang means king or prince, right? Kong Kong. During the 13th century, Tagru was one of the several Asian leaders who was identified with the legend of Presser John, but also King David. Search for Hawa and David, right? King David. Not in the BCs if you're really searching. You gotta, you know what I'm saying, surf the way with the parallel timelines in history. You gotta know that they've shifted your time back. Before Genghis Khan could claim David, Preston was already affiliated with this David. Even here, they call him a brother to John. But we know we're talking Dawi, king of the earth, firstborn, bond. Although the Karyans converted to Nestorius, and now we're talking old king, renowned for wise counsel. Because how can you try to relate Prester with Christianity when there is no credible proof that Wong Kong Prester John himself was a Christian? And Mongolian sources say nothing about his religion. Boss, we're talking Carl, right? We're talking Wang Hong, and we know the, Ho the Han is the Hawa Shia, the Hawa people. Khan of the Kara. The Kara is the Chera, Cherokee, Karaka. He was the blood brother, Andai, the Mongol chief, Yesugi. And Yesugi is Genghis' pops. So he swore to Genghis' his pops, you know what I'm saying, he's going to take care of Genghis. And that's what he did until Genghis turned on him, tried to steal his, you know, daughters and all that, right? Went to war against his whole tribe. This is what's happening. And you got the Battle of the Burning Sands, the Kalakajik Sands. This war was started by Sun Jim, Sun Gung, son of Wang Khan, who was extremely jealous and fearful of Temujin's forces. He and Jamuka eventually talked Wang Kong into a war with Temujin. This was another war where Temujin was almost defeated at one time, surrounded, trapped with only a small force until his reinforcements came. He was still able to defeat them after a close battle by launching a swift, sudden strike while the enemy had their guard down and he and his reinforcements arrived. Wang Kong fled west and was eventually Killed by the naming, so some say friendly fire desecrated his body. We don't know. There ain't nobody. <laughs> While wow, Jamuka escaped again, <laughs> and here it says the Battle of Thirteen Wings. Uh, you know, had the twelve or thirteen tribes allied with Jamuka. So Jamuka's a great place to investigate. Also, in one forty-seven. Then you got twelve oh four battle. You know, this Tayan Kun, where Jamuka continued to plan against Temujin, this time aligned himself with the Namans, right? The same Namans that killed Preston. However, during the battle, the Naman leader, Tayan Khan, showed hesitation upon witnessing the strength of Genghis' army. So now you got the story, man, this popular story of him uh, being intimidated by these extra campfires. Genghis lit all these extra campfires to make it look like he had more of an army. He was accused of cowardice, urged to press on the attack. But during the war, Tayang Khan again showed his fear upon seeing the might of Temujin's army. He attempted to flee, but was subsequently pursued, surrounded on a mountain, injured and killed after attempting to escape from the blockade. There wouldn't be a next time for Jamuka. He was betrayed by his soldiers when trying to flee. He lived and died at the most respected military rival as the most respected military rival of Timujin, much like Pompey was to Caesar. Whoa.
<laughs> and yet the greatest world war <laughs> is you know this all this is included in this world war with Presser John, man. All this is together, man. So who who would Ganga say is the most respect? He went to war with the Tangu. It took twenty years to conquer the Tangu. <laughs> so what would he say, man? Kakor, legendary native kingdom. <laughs> A legendary tribe, right? And this car, all this car talk, you know, again, connects to the Carolina, this car line. And this Francisco reminds me of Esteban a lot. 147, we'll, leave, we'll go in a deeper dive. But this Esteban was captured in 1522, this whole shipwreck situation. Uh, Portuguese military conquered uh, the city in 1522. They captured Esteban. He's known as this first non-native, they say, explorer, invader, <laughs> to make contact with the inhabitants of New Mexico. And he's a nigga with a feather in his head. <laughs> I said, damn. And then you got this whole shipwreck, shipwreck situation. Esteban's boat capsized. Half the men drowned. Half the men drown. And that just reminds me so much of this Kakor flow. Now that we understand that, you know, this is the land of abundant wealth. Now that we understand that the Italian historian Peter Martyr de Anguiera identified the land of Preston John with Kakor. They only gave us two sentences here, but they gave us all this drop on Ethiopia and Mongols. But then when it came to America, they said, uh, I'm going to give you two sentences. <laughs> You figure it out. The land of Preston John is Kakor, according to Peter Martin. Huh? Why? Because it's the land of abundant wealth. Why? Because it's a kingdom of abundant wealth and resources. This Shakur legend influenced the Spanish and the French in their attempts to colonize North America for the next 60 years. Got it. Because the Portuguese were also influenced, searching for Preston John in America after 1645. They all looking, are you? Are you seeking? Are you seeking the code? Are you seeking the creator? Are you seeking Kandawi? And again, with that shipwreck situation, half the people vanished. Remember, Shakur, South Carolina was originally named Shakur. You don't think Tupac Shakur, Alfina Shakur, know about the Shakur and Alfina's from the Carolinas, from North Carolina? You, you think she knows about Tupac Amaro, the Inca flow in Peru, and don't know about the Shakur underneath her roof being from Carolina? Stop it, man. The Shakur is the Shakur. <laughs> and this... It says the expedition of Vasquez de Alion, 1512, 1520, shows the dreadful cruelty of the Spaniards to the Indians. He went to the Bahamas to seize the natives and bring them to the island of Hispaniola to work there in the mines as slaves. A storm drove him on the coast of what is now South Carolina, where he was treated with great kindness by the Indians. While many of these were visiting on board his ships, they were suddenly fastened down under the hatches. And the vessel set sail, so... This slave trade started here. They took Nagas from here to Spain. <laughs> Disaster followed the ships, just like Esteban. One of them was wrecked, so there was two. Half of them, <laughs> half of them vanished, right? Half of them lost, man. So, same thing with Esteban. Half the men drowned. <laughs> and this is all in 1522. Man, we got to dig on this, man. We got to dig on this. The, the Indians on the other boat preferred death to slavery and almost to a man starved themselves. And Dialion himself was paid the penalty of this atrocious cruelty 1525 when he went to settle his new province of Kakor, now South Carolina. The natives imitating his former treachery enticed many of his men from the ships and massacred them. Dialion himself escaped with difficulty only to return to disgrace the Hispaniola. Damn. You don't think Shakur, <laughs> you, know, you, you don't think Alfina Shakur know about this land? 
know about the Shakur legend? You wondering why Preston John's connected with the land of wealth and resources? You think Peter Martyr's just throwing this out there? You think they're giving us two sentences for nothing? <laughs> God, God, we're going to dig on some more of this Shakur. Because <laughs> it's all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. So who's the shaper of worlds, man? Forming the medieval world, Earth, using the imagination of a child in the history of Avalon. John acted as one of his four muses or Moses's. <laughs> and what does it mean, imagination of a child? Uh, what is this evil eye connected with Loki and them, the Defenders and the Avengers? They were tricked into battling each other. What is that? What is that representing the Marvel? We back in the Marvel for the dismount, man. We out of here. Over the fate of Dane Whitman, who was once again in the body of his ancestor, Ebor Garrett, Preston John was able to regain the eye from Prince John and Mordred. And then later he got involved with Cable and Deadpool. <laughs> okay. Due to the Cable's attempt to control the world and Deadpool being falsely accused of murdering a Muslim cleric, he took residence on Providence. He seemed to have altered or added the eye to his stellar rod. Back to the Book of Jasher, right? With the sapphire, blue sapphire staff, right? Where Moses is plucking it out the garden of Red Well after he gets out the dungeon. <laughs> and this same staff was passed all the way back from Adam. We got that before. <laughs> so we see how it's all happening in real time, man. This ain't no play play. I mean, hey, let's let's get it from the top. <laughs> Remember Kang appeared trying to get John to join him. As we settled their battle, John was sent into the past. He attempted to manipulate events in the past, advising a Frankish king to battle Vikings. He was stopped by Thunderstrike or Thor or Zeus, who was investigating a town Kang had reverted to in medieval times. A boat from the Menchnor somehow triggered the eye to teleport John back to Avalon. Now, President John popping up in Africa. Which one, right? While in suspended animation, he's in Africa. How do you go? How you be in suspended animation and be in Africa at the same time? <laughs> John and the seat were later found in Africa by Human Torch. Now we in the Fantastic Four flow. <laughs> I can't make this up. I can't make this up. And yeah, it connects to Richard Lionheart. Connects to Black Knight. Black Knight helping out John, right? Who's the Black Knight? <laughs> Who's Dane? Who's Dan? We're talking L Dad, Dad? <laughs> After the Crusades, John traveled the world until he found the Isle of Avalon. There he gained the evil eye, my nugget. The one with the deadly glance is more than you just uh, knowing who you are. But when you know who you are, it all connects, right? Your life force connects. Your technology reconnects. Your dragon connects. Everything connects. What they call evil eye, I see as the sight, right? The light that they want to take from your eyes. So this evil eye is placed in the care of Preston John until it seemingly exploded. The device actually split into six parts. Sounds like Lord of the Rings and them rings. Sounds like Thanos and them stones. Spread throughout the globe. Become a focal point of the adventure, adventure defender war. So Preston John is the focal point of the entire Avenger series. But they don't mention him. But they'll bring in Kang, right? Because Presta can't be the bad guy. Kane got to be the bad guy. Presta can't be, David can't be the bad guy when Jesus is still the son of David. They need David to remain somewhat pure in order to re retain this title. Because they're still in this title. Gangas is taking the title. C's taking the title. Everybody's taking the title. But they don't want to talk about David. They don't want to talk about Presta John. 
So Preston John carried a new version of the evil eye called his stellar rock. They can't make no Preston Marvel. Because the Avengers got to be the good guys, right? <laughs> right. They can't, you know, they can't make him a bad guy. They can make Genghis Khan or Kang. They can make Kang a bad guy. But they can't make Preston John a bad So he kind of, you know, <laughs> he gets put on a back burner. He gets put on the side while they tell their hijacked story of your, your, you know, your story, your history, right? So the evil eye is made of an unknown metal. Just like the dragon, unknown substance, capable of manipulating matter, right? Again, <laughs> got us think about this mud flood situation. Love to the car, fire and concussive force blast, disintegrating matter. So like the mud flood, we're talking Tartaria, Genghis Khan, Prasajai, and technology, nullifying other energy sources, creating or destroying force fields. What's it got to do with all these worlds beyond the pole? And the firmament. We're going to talk firmament. <laughs> and of course, it has dimensional time travel abilities. Abilities. Man, let's keep thinking, man. It's getting real thinky. I know we've been getting linky <laughs> because it always gets quite thinky, man. <laughs> so. You know, we, we out of here, boss. You know, um, yeah, we're going force fields, man. We got firmament talk to talk about. Let's see, man. Let's get it. Let's get this firmament talk right quick. We're making a beautiful dismount, man. Best dismount of all time. All time. All right. All right. So we dug on the uh, first firmament flow. <laughs> we dug on the first firmament flow. That's when we were digging on, you know, this this type of parallel <laughs> character that you know seemed to connect to this what they call first firmament. And we said, well, what, what, what's the first firmament about? What y'all mean, first firmament? I ain't never really seen it before. First firmament. Try to get back to that drop. I know we we way too linky, man. We way too linky. <laughs> We over linky, right? Y'all let me know if I'm over dropping, man. <laughs> Leave a comment. It's drop over dropping, man. Because <laughs> he's talking first firmaments. When I start talking first firmament, it just feels like I might be <laughs> over dropping. So it's the first firmament, right? Firmament. Yeah, 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 Marvel flow. You know what I'm saying? You know, we talking, man. <laughs> Revving up our engines for the dismount around here, man. I'm on the streets right now, man. I'm making a dismount. I said, I'm finishing this, man. This is my Conde. <laughs> this is my Conde gift to the tribe. You know, just like we just got, man. <laughs> We're taking it back to the top, to the first, man. First firmament drive. Again, they say he's the embodiment of the very first universe to ever exist. He's the creator of what is called these aspirants and this celestials and, you know, all the same biblical war, man. All these renewal cycles and embodiment of this multiverse situation, right? All right, all right, all right. And then we got this 1266 situation. You know, connected with this Cedar Survival flow. 
seat of survival 1966 flow. We took it back to the dragon flow 1266 Opus Magus, right? 1266 where they're eating a Nagus dragon, right? We got all that? We straight? <laughs> Is we straight? So if he's in the seat of survival 700 years, right, that takes us back to, <laughs> he pops up 1966, it takes us back to 1266, and who's eating the dragons other than the same confederacy more and more? Literally eating the dragons against accidents of old age. We're talking life, we're talking fountain of youth type flow. Okay, okay. Dismount season. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, all right. You know, I'll leave y'all with these links with the Marvel flow. This is a great one, man. Avengers 116. And it just, I mean, just, just have some fun, man. <laughs> this is going to, you know, fill in a lot of the gaps. It's going to give you a lot of drop. It's going to connect, you know what I'm saying? A lot of this, I mean... 147, 148, all the way to 50. I see it's being a lot in this uh, Marvel flow. You know what I mean? So I just found, you know, this super link that was really catching us up in case you weren't reading the comic books. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were able to get some drop out of this uh, link right here, for sure, for sure. So make sure you got this. Like I said, Silver Surfer, man. <laughs> Told you we're going to talk Silver Surfer, man. Silver Surfer also plays a role in this flow, man. We got this dimensional flow, man. <laughs> so, you know, hey, ah, man, let's go. Uh, by the way, was Genghis Khan ever depicted as a black man? Yeah, see, Genghis Khan was depicted as a black man. Yeah, 13th century in Kievan Rus. Land of Roos. And this is Genghis Khan. Is the picture getting clear that this Naga and this Naga were kin? <laughs> huh? And that all this infighting was happening with the Mongols and the Great Ones with this Naga, Preston John, versus this Naga, Genghis Khan? Do you see clearly the Mongol invasion of King, Kievan Rus, man? I'm going to leave a link. It's going to bring in some more of the connectivity because, <laughs> hey, at this point, it's a victory lap. It's a victory lap. It's going to bring you more into the Batu Khan flow, the Rus flow, right? The and Rus flow. You know, my point, man. All we're doing is just stamping more validation. List the Tartar Mongol raids against the Rus. Yeah, buddy. The term by which the subjection is commonly designated the Mongol or Tartar yoke suggests terrible op oppression, but in reality, these nomadic invaders from Mongolia. We're not such cruel, oppressive task masters in the first place. They never settled in the country, and they had little direct dealing with the inhabitants. In accordance with the admonitions of Genghis Khan to his children and grandchildren, they retained their pastoral mode of life so that the subject races, agricultures, dwellers in the towns were not disturbed in their ordinary avocations. So, I mean, you put it together. They're brought to Sarai, and they're calling you the Saracens, right? Oh, yeah, they got the picture over there. Hold up. So here has the same picture with the caption this time. Prince Michael of Kirinov Gulf passed between the fires in accordance with ancient Turco-Mongol tradition. Batu Khan ordered him to prostrate himself, bow down before the tablets of Genghis Khan. And they repainted this image. This used to be all melanated people when we first looked at it. 
Then they just switched it somehow to all these the iconic classic images like this Caucasian is now the ruse of Michael, right? Michael Kurnov, who's standing proudly. <laughs> but look, man, it doesn't say Genghis Khan as a black man here, right? You see it missing. But when you click on this <laughs> and look in the fine print, what do you see? Oh. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a as a black man by painting by Russian painter V.S. Smirnov, 1883. Now it says black man. Why didn't it say black man over here? Why would they just take that off? Where, where'd the blackness go here? It looked like they blacking it out, right? Yeah. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man, right? Genghis Khan is a black man, Khan. <laughs> Why were they blacking it out? That's crazy. I'll leave this link here. It has Richard, uh, you know, the Richard Lionheart, King Richard flow, but they call him Richard Plantagenet. Same Earth 616. So that's going to line up with the Prester if you're looking for it. And get some more of the background because we're going to go into the Braveheart flow as we make our way back into the Pick series. Love the tie bands. So I should be waiting. And again, the Dane White Black Knight, all right, it says he possessed the body of his ancestor, Ebor, in order to rescue King Richard. So him and Preston were helping. He was assisted by his teammates, the Defenders. Ah, so the, so the Defenders are really the good guys, <laughs> and the Avengers are really the bad guys. <laughs> remember, it's the Avengers versus Defenders. Who traveled back in time to rescue his spirit? Mordred and Prince John were defeated. This is the evil John. This is um, Richard's brother John. This ain't John, Preston John, but they were defeated thanks to the assistance of Preston John, yet another time traveler. And we ain't talking Kang, right? Because <laughs> Preston John has the evil eye, the deadly glance, right? <laughs> So Preston John, who used the magical evil eye to banish the foes. With King Richard freed, the defenders returned to their own without the with the spirit, or excuse me, while the spirit of Dane Whitman opted to remain in the twelfth century and fight alongside the king. So he said, I'm gonna stay here, keep fighting. They were traveling time and fighting wars. Preston zoomed over here, helped King Richard pop back in 1966, man. <laughs> For real, for real. Dane Whitman, the Black Knight, right? The Black Knight, right? Here you got this Dane Whitman flow, a whole link just for you. We'll get back into it for Dane Whitman. And it said he had, has always been haunted by the curse of the ebony blade. So this Black Knight had an ebony blade. <laughs> God, the Black Knight got an ebony blade. He had some experiment going on with Magneto, man. So now we're talking X-Men. <laughs> the Black Knight severed the thieves' rotors and nearly sent them to their deaths before saving the criminals. At the last moment, fearing for his soul, Dane consulted with Percy again over the fears that the Ebony Blade was becoming too dangerous to will. So this, too, is technology, man. We got some more Archon flow. Magically transported to the well, the Black Knight was initially unaware that it lay on the other dimensional rim of Polamacus, domain of the Avengers for Archon. All right, man. <laughs> so we're going to get more drop on this Ebony Blade. We're going to get more drop on the Black Knight, um, you know, with this, with this Preston John flow also, or maybe this is Richard's brother. They call him John Plantagenet. Right. Oh, yeah, John. So this is the evil John. You know what I'm saying? That's the brother of King Richard. So you can get more on this because he wanted to proclaim himself king. And you know, in real life, all these are melanated. <laughs> all this is happening 12th century flow. 
and he encountered the defenders when they were suddenly thrust back to the 12th century <laughs> during the Crusades. Damn, at the same time as his gang is caught invasion. A plot to abandon King Rich. So, okay, okay. I'll leave this link for you, my noggin. Since we're getting marvelous, since we're getting marvelly for the dismount. Then we're going to get some second address, man. <laughs> Let's go, Dizzle Fetty. Let's go. Allow one. The evil eye has a sort of on button, making it a cumulative power that can be spent by using it. But once it has been used, it is imperative to press the safety button or the device will continue to accumulate power until it explodes with the power of a nuclear bomb. So this evil eye went into overdrive. You got Omega Presser John, man. <laughs> it is Presser John. This is Presser John, man, in the Marvels, man. He got the evil eye. He's beating up King Richard, right? <laughs> Back to the future, going across dimensions. I'll leave it for you, man. We'll get back in it. Yeah, he's in the seat of survival here, man, popping out. This looks like that Mayan flow where it looks like they were sitting in technology. Man. Proficient fighter came can overcome Deadpool in a melee. Preston John can overcome Deadpool in melee, though. He had the advantage in strength and powers. He also had no problem slugging it out with Iron Man and the thing. But the Preston studied what he claims was a true history of the world. <laughs> so this is the revolution, man. Like, right? You study Preston, you get the true history of the world written by the wizards, my nigga. Written by the wizards. Pull up the links, man. That's for you. Hey, I ain't the only one talking Preston John. You know, then you can con connect him with this Crusader flow. Same thing, Magical Sword. You know, where it says formally Preston John. Or excuse me, possibly Preston John. Affiliations, King Richard, right? The same thing, Richard Lionheart. All this drive happening, 12th century. Remember Scalinker Batavius pushing your timeline back, and I'm telling you, it was all happening here, and that's why the Marvels put it right here. But you got to see clear, Khan. <laughs> we got to see clear. Has anyone seen these pictures, man? <laughs> Has anyone seen this, man? So when we talk these worlds behind a pole, you know, when we talk, uh, you know, Legend of the Jews and all this flow, you know what I'm saying? They go into these 310 worlds. And that's why we started reconning about these 310 worlds. It just got me thinking about Flat Drop 101. And when you put in 310 worlds, <laughs> Interesting things start popping up, man, for the dismount. Because it really is all happening when we talk 310 world. Hawaii said in the Jews, when he's he's um, comforting Moshe, like, yo, I created 310 worlds of paradise. But we, we're not taught about this in Christianity, right? <laughs> And what do these 310 worlds have to do with Flat Drop 101? Man, man, it's dope. So 310 worlds. The Chronicles of Jeremiah, or the Hebrew Bible Historiel. You know, all this connects with this 310 world situation. Uh, where we get that out, the legend of the Jews, right? Jews. This legend of, this of the Jews left the Yosef for the Rika. Got me all, all back up in it, man. Because <laughs> it connects so much of this drop, man. <laughs> so much is coming together. 
And I'm glad that we are independent reconners that can come back for the validation. Like, you know, we don't just take one source and run with it. Like, by the time we come back to Wikipedia or by the time we come back to one of these books, you know what I'm saying, that we might have done on in 2017 or 18, like, by the time we get back here, we come back with ammunition, man. We come back with validation. We come back with sources, right? So, land of the Jews, for the dismount. Remember, we got, uh, we get last time the David, the David. Matter of fact, let's, let's see, man. Uh, uh, let's go 500. Page 500. Let's see who we got. So Hawaii tries to comfort Moses concerning his death. You know, Moses like, why do I get to go to the promised land? Hawaii's like, I don't want you being buried by man. <laughs> Come on, man. It's, all, it's, it's me and you, baby. It's me and you. I made you a god to Pharaoh. <laughs> Period, man. Like, yo, check this out. And as in this world I appointed you over the 60 myriads of Israel, so in the future world shall I appoint you over 55 myriads of righteous men, pious men. Thy days, O Moses, will pass when thou art dead, but thy light will not fade. Like we got in Deuteronomy, eyes were never dim, right? Wow, yeah, like we got in Deuteronomy. Oh, what's this 310 worlds about? Oh, uh, yeah, Deuteronomy, man. <laughs> 34, right? Chapter 34. I'm, I'm just getting, I'm just getting it quickly, man. Just for the cut. Fact, give me that uh, JPS flow. Give me that JPS flow. For the dismount. Best dismount of all time. I got it all lined up right here, man. Uh, JPS, let's go. This is my Conde present, man. You know, to you and to myself, man. This is taking damn near a month <laughs> feels like a month of recording and re-recording this drop and just to get here man I, I feel like i ran a marathon and back and i made sure i made this extra meaty because they they jam and knock up so clean on this i'm like i want everything in there if you're gonna make me record this seven times you know five four hour five hour six hour drop not only am I going to get smarter and learn more <laughs> by reading it over and over again, I'm going to make sure everything's in 146, man. You want to tell somebody to come to the press investigation? You want to tell somebody to recon? Start them right here with 146. I promise I put more effort in 146 than any other press <laughs> flow that we've done, man. Deuteronomy 34 for the dismount. Yeah, Moses went to the plains of Moab, up to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, right? We got all this, right? So, then what? So, he dies, right? But, and Moses, verse 7, was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And I said, don't that sound like Preston John and the Marvel going into sus suspended animation? <laughs> now he got the evil eye. But his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated, which means lessened. So his natural force was never lessened or reduced. How do you die if your natural force is not lessened or reduced? How do you die if your eye is never dim? <laughs> make it make sense. Legend of the Jews, right? So... He's telling Moshe, look, man, time will pass or, you know, your days will pass when you are dead, but your light will not fade 
for thou will never have need of light of sun or moon or star. Same thing. Your eyes is not dim. Your natural force never lessen. Nor will thou require raiment or shelter for oil or oil for your head. Or shoes for your feet. For my majesty will shine before you. My radiance will make your face. Now check it. Oh, my son Moses, much has been stored up for thee in the future world, for thou wilt take part in all the delights of paradise where are prepared three, three hundred and ten worlds. This is where I first hearing about this, right? So, uh, where are prepared three hundred and ten worlds which I have created for every righteous man that love me, devote himself to the Torah. Cold Keeper Nagas got 310 worlds. Where else can we find some drop on 310 worlds, right? All right, let's go quickly. <laughs> 310 worlds is putting in here, man. All right, so you got those of Jeremiah. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. All right. I guess it goes into the 310 there. I'm just seeing where, where they mention it. Cornell University got some drop. 310 worlds God made for Jews who look after his, I guess, you know, Torah. You know what I mean? Cole. All right. Uh, Betumuna.com talking about 310 worlds. All these people talking about it. But we didn't know. 310 world to the righteous as a reward. That's in the uh, Olam Haba <laughs> Torah rabbinic. So it seems like this is something they kept secret. <laughs> uh, 310 worlds are everywhere. God will bestow 310 worlds on every Zada or priest or Ka. 310 worlds, which are the recompense of pies. So we're going to get even deeper on this 310. I'm just letting you know we're going in 147, 148, 149, and 150. Yeah, and then they try to put it on Yeshua or Jesus. Now he got something to do with it. The Messiah. Stop it, man. We got Kandawi forever. We got Moshe. Moshe has promised this personally. Where they will inherit 310 worlds and back to the legend of the Jews with the 310 worlds. So we got a lot, of, we got a lot of digging to do. We got a lot of digging to do. We ain't tripping. I'll leave this link here from New African. Shout out to the Khan man, 77. You know, digging more on this alien, Francisco alien flow, South Carolina flow, this John Cesar. Kazar <laughs> wasn't the first enslaved African or North American on North American soil, just on paper. 1526, Lucas Vasquez de Alion, a wealthy sugar planter, brought 100 enslaved Africans to South Carolina. Don't that sound similar to the Esteban flow? And it's always a nigga that they are bringing here to get some drop. We're going to dig more on it, but it goes back into the South Carolina flow. You know what I mean? Just keep these links. Oh, man, we got a bunch of Kokora links that I'll just wait on these <laughs> and, you know, drop them in 147. Uh, this is interesting here for the dismount. We've been talking about the Little Ice Age, <laughs> and here we got them telling on themselves when it comes to this, con you know, uh, colonial colonization shit. It says the role of extreme cold and the failure of the San Miguel de Guadapa, Guadepe colony. So extreme cold was an issue when you're dealing with an ice age, my naga, in America during their colonization. And that's a body bag, another body bag, <laughs> letting us know they definitely dealing with extreme cold. Hey, this could be something, this could be nothing. I want to talk dinosaur, but... Boeing, there's, some, there's something called the Boeing X-20 Dinosaur. <laughs> Dynamic Soar was a United States Air Force 
program to develop a space plane that could be used for a variety. Yo, this thing seems to be some supersonic situation that we don't really hear about today. But in 57, they had this reusable manned space plane uh, that is good for aerial reconnaissance bombing. Where are we talking more lands beyond the poles? Because remember, they're trying to... This is Giannini World's Beyond the Pole time, right? So did this wing boost glider, is this so that they can get to other lands and bombing, space rescue, <laughs> satellite maintenance, right? So we got a res- we got a resource. <laughs> we got to recon this resource of this uh, reconnaissance dinosaur situation. I told you we'll get into some ether flow on the way out the door. My jigger, what they do? Discovery of ether as an anesthetic is credited to both Dr. Crawford, William C. Long, and William T.G. Morris. So their recognition of the contributions to the contentious 1842, right? Long was the first to use ether as a general anesthetic during surgery. So on one end, they're saying the ether don't exist. On the other end, they're using it as a general anesthetic which means that you can get high off the ether. <laughs> and they were getting high off of the ether, man. Ether in the developing world. Ether was first made use of as a general anesthetic. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to drop that on you and keep going. <laughs> Let's talk Tupac. We out of here. Best dismount of all time. A Phoenix Shakur. Born Alice Faye William in North Carolina. Like I said, you don't think she knows about the Kokora? And she's a Shakora? Stop playing. You know, you dig on it. You know what I mean? You know, it's going to bring you all into her knowledge of the Tupac Amaru flow. And again, if she knows about all this Amaru flow, in this North Carolina history, you bet your ass you know about why she is a Shakur. To second address, there's a fitty, let's go. Chapter 13, verse 40. These are the nine tribes that were taken away from their own land into the exile of the king. Exile in the days of King Hoshea, whom Shalemanazar, king of the Assyrians, made captives. He took them across the river, and they were taken into another land. But they formed this plan for themselves that they would leave the multitude of the nation and go back and go to a more distant region where no human beings had lived. So there, that there at least they might keep their statues that they had not kept in their own land. Does this mean, like they try to, you know, the certain Israelite uh, camps try to use this to say that, well, yeah, the tribe of Gad went to America. <laughs> and America was, <laughs> was somewhere that no one's been. Nah, it's not really that simple. <laughs> it doesn't mean you cross the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> to, get, to go into America or now you're first going into America. Now, we've been in America. This is old land, man. <laughs> this is Indian Superior. Stop playing. But we can get more specific about the orientation. Why? Because we got the maps. Let's go. And they went in by the narrow passage of the Euphrates River. For at that time, the Most High performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river until they had crossed over through the region. There was a long way to go, a journey of a year and a half. And that country is called Arzareth. <laughs> So this is the place where no man had lived. They want to try to make it the entire Americas, right? But that ain't true. Oh, that ain't true. Right? North America, South America. <laughs> Zoom in. Here we go again. We got Anion, right? So now they got Anion. This is flipped upside down, obviously. Over here, when we pick up and uh, we flip it right side up again, and you get this type of orientation, right? Straight to Anion, Tendu, Anion, America. Still talking America. Still talking Anion and Covera. And here you're still talking Anion and Covera. Where's Covera?
Pick over here. <laughs> so where's the Euphrates? Where's the Red Sea? Here's Quiver. Multiple witnesses that this is the land of Preston John with the Anion Kingdom and the Quivera, the Kibera or Ivera or Ibaru, Hebaru, Eber, Iberia, right here. And it's spelled the exact same right here. And if you cross the Strait of Anion, or right here, you get Azareth, <laughs> right here. And don't press this land, always got something to do with a unicorn, man. <laughs> Where's the Euphrates? How to Azareth by crossing Anion. How did these tribes that went to a place where no men dwelt at this time, they didn't just go into the Americas. They crossed the Strait of Anion into Tandu, right? Into Arsareth. And this is where they were keeping the code. And this is why the unicorn is being represented. <laughs> right here. Khan Khan. Body bag. How many body bags y'all keep a track? This country is called Arzareth. This country is called Arzareth. We out of here, baby. Hi, Amazon Queens. <laughs> yeah, man. Put it up in Yandex. It's going to take you all over the place, man. I'm just having a good time with it. It's going to take you to Operation High Jump. It's going to take you to all this Antarctica flow, right? <laughs> and did you know, did you know, these secret missions to Antarctica been popping off? I'll leave the link. Research Operation High Jump. They trying to jump over the wall to get to more worlds beyond the poles. But even in the David Rumsey flow, there was no cap on Antarctica's chest bone. No ice. Do you see ice? And this land is surrounding us. It's not just on the bottom of your globe. It surrounds us and it's all mapped out. And outside the wall, come on, man. This is the Preston John investigation after all. It wouldn't be nothing <laughs> without Preston John popping up. <laughs> Grand Ethiopian, Abyssinian, right outside the wall. Where you been, Preston, this whole time? <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. What else we got for the dismount? We talking Antarctica? <laughs> so Operation High Jump, they really trying to get to more Nagas beyond the poles. Maybe they trying to infiltrate the 310 worlds, right? Or 178 worlds, all this stuff we hear. I don't know. Add it up. There's hidden history of the secret past of Antarctica and the ruins of the ancient city found in Antarctica. Kant. <laughs> now, what city would relate to this Amazon, high Amazon flow? <laughs> Khan, drop, take the wheel. 1500s. All these maps are for the 1500s and the internet is deleting them, right? So check it. What does it say right here? We're talking about Antarctica 1500s, right? Let's go. It is not altogether clear if the Amazon High Queens moved from residence to residence in a regular cycle, as did other Amazons or fairy queens or dragon queens by Naga. According to ancient and medieval legends, there were a number of Amazon or fairy queens in different parts of the world who all owed allegiance to the Amazon High Queen. The High Queen is also also had a high seat on Antarctica. <clears throat> Y'all got that? And that's before 1530. <clears throat> the High Queen also had a high seat on Antarctica before 1530. There was another in Africa and another in South America. There were a number of Amazonian Queen residences on Antarctica, including the Elthworth. Ellsworth Mountains, Henderson Pyramid, and Prince Charles Mountains, or Moore Pyramid. So when you recon the Moore Pyramid, all right, look up Moore Pyramid, M-O-O-R-E. You're going to get this, uh, you know, Google Earth picture, but you're going to see 
this pyramid, but they call it a snow-covered mountain. They say, oh, man, that, that's just a snow-covered, it's, it's clearly a pyramid, Cut. but they call it a snow-covered mountain, my naga. So we're getting a purpose for this more pyramid, huh? In Prince Charles Mountains, the Moore period, the area of Antarctica around Prince Charles Mountains was part of the Amazon Queendom. So our queens had a whole setup, and when you really put it together with Prester John, you realize when you talk about David and Solomon, you're talking about the same as Solomon and Sheba. Mm -hmm. Right? Sheba came, she came with a lot of questions. Uh -huh. She came with questions and spices, right? Right? In the scripture, Sheba came with questions and spices, huh? All right, well, you already know. She's getting the spices because she got the whole world on deck, just like David got the whole world on deck. Now, David and Sheba, remember Bathsheba, right? David, Bathsheba, they make Solomon. Solomon marries Sheba, and then they have a, a dynasty, right? So, look, man, look, man. Mm -hmm. These Shebas are a title. The same as we talking about David's, or the same as when we talk about Preston John, we're talking titles. So, we had a title of sisters that was rocking with, you know what I'm saying, Hawa. But they were in the reflection of mama, Shekinah. They were reflecting wisdom. They were reflecting the mama. They were in the image of mama. Then you got the, the bros, right, in the image of Dawi, right, in the image of the creator, Dawi. You know what I mean? So, look, man, look, man. All right? This is why Dawi is the anointed forever, because he carries the image. The image is the frequency. I'm not talking about what they look like. I'm talking about the frequency that they're in, the vibration. And we got our sisters representing mama, and you got our, our bros, our brothers representing pops, man. I'm excited, man. So when you look at Antarctica with no ice cap, it's no cap. We had a kingdom and a queendom, specifically a queendom. The area in Antarctica around these, this Moor pyramid was part of the Amazon queendom of Sunda in the Middle Ages when it was snow free. When it was snow free. When it was snow free, Java Les was north of Sunda on the Kuragulan Plateau, which is now underwater. There's an Amazon city in the mountains. Oh. Man, what do you think Black Panther's about? Oh. They flying into the mountains, the whole, it's a whole high tech city, man. Oh. So was Antarctica ever covered in ice? I don't, you know what I mean? Look, <clears throat> it appears to be a lot of ice there when people go and take their boats there, but maybe that's just the rim of it all. But back in these maps, there was no ice even on the cap, like no ice on the rim. Oh. We're talking about the, the Fuego, right? It says Tierra del Fuego. Oh. So why would it say Tierra del Fuego if it was covered in ice? And we got the evidence in the maps that they are deleting, but I got you in the Dropbox. Hit me up, music at 432thedrop.com. I got you in the Dropbox, my nugget. I got all them oh. screenshots in the Dropbox. We're going to keep it flowing. We're going to keep the water flowing. Yeah. It was an Amazon city Damn. in the mountains on the island of Lokok and Sukok which Tierra or Grand Tierra in the Kuragulan Islands is the remnant. And when you hear that car, that Kur is also that car, like Kara Katai, my naga. So Kara means black, by the way. Let's go. Huh? Hey, man, I love y'all. Keep surfing the wave. If y'all wonder what drop do, if y'all wonder what we do as Drop Nation, man, yeah. we get linky so we can get thinking. Thank <laughs> We get a little linky so we can get a lot thinky. And what kind of uh, Amazon mountain kingdom? Cat, know? when you hear, like, <laughs> it's sometimes playoff, it's like, like you hear playoff Rondo. Shalak, 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 shalak. I'm going to leave this uh, Swan Knight sword link. You know, just stuff I haven't got to yet for you. But, Joe, come on. We got an ancient city found in Antarctica. And we got Amazon High Queens with a high seat in Antarctica. And this is all pre-ice, man. This is all pre-ice, man. Woo! We did it again. We did it again. Managa. We did it again. 310 worlds beyond the pole. Well, I said, well, these paradises can just be more lands beyond the pole. Hawaii said, I created 310 worlds for the righteous, for the pious. <laughs> and we over here fighting over one. <laughs> Just know that, you know, when Hawaii said that you come back together and you seek the creator, you, you know, get back into your covenant, your flow, and then you get your shepherd, you get your Dawi flow. 
you get your lands, you get your sovereign, like your lands include these 310 worlds of paradise, man, where it's all happening. Con up to my cons, man. I appreciate all y'all, man. You surfing the way, you surfing the way with me, and I've been surfing the way with you too. This has been the one hundred and forty-six installment of your Preston John investigation. This is my con day present to you. <laughs> hey, we doing it live, man. We popping off, man, in real time, man. And it's all happening. And this is my favorite one by far. And I, I hope you enjoy it the same as I. Uh, I enjoy listening to it. Doing it, man, it took everything. It took everything. So I made sure I put everything in it, man. Um, you know, you are everything to me. And I appreciate you, Drop Nation. Stay up. Suit up. <laughs> Choose up. Keep surfing the wave until you become the water. Keep the cold and keep the fire burning. Allow. <gasps> wow.